The Hudson River, two years ago. We had classified intelligence that a new type of Metal Gear was scheduled for transport. The whole thing stank, but our noses have been out in the cold too long. This is Snake. Do you read me, Otacon? Loud and clear, Snake. Kept you waiting, huh? I'm at the sneak point. Everything going okay? Mm, stealth camo's busted. Landing impact. We must have overused it. Sorry, but you're gonna have to deal with it. You're not in the military anymore. Right. I didn't plan on relying on this gadget anyway. The private sector's not so bad, is it? Privacy guaranteed? I'm happy as long as no one gives me any more unwanted gifts. You mean that thing with Naomi? And I can't say I miss the chattering nanny. Mei Ling's not so bad. And that reminds me, I have to get in touch with her again about that new Natick flashware. Diverting toys from the SSCEN again? Look, give her a message from me. Someone will find out, sooner or later. She's better off assuming it's sooner and quit while she's safe. Too true. Okay, Snake, let's get to work. You know how the technical specs of Metal Gear were sold on the black market after Shadow Moses? All Ocelot's doing. Exactly. And now every state, group, and dot-com has its own version of Metal Gear. Not exactly a classified weapon for today's nuclear powers. This new one seems to have been designed to wipe the floor with all the other models. The only consistent description is that it's an amphibious, anti-Metal Gear vehicle. That explains why this one is under Marine Corps jurisdiction. We need to get a fix on who they are. Judging by their transport, aren't they some kind of military commandos? Not necessarily. It could be the KA-62, the civil model. Look, Snake, all we need is the photographic evidence of Metal Gear. As long as we have those, we can put it online and blow the whole thing wide open. So no pyrotechnics, okay? All right. I'll do my best. This isn't like Shadow Moses. Reach me if anything happens. The frequency's 141.12. How can I check in and save my progress? I'll do it. There's a frequency set aside for it. 140.96. Sorry, but no Mei Ling this time. Call me on the codec when you want to save. Got it. I'll be waiting just past the Verrazano Bridge. You need to be off that ship by then. I'll be in touch. Snake, it looks like that door can't be opened from the deck. You can infiltrate the ship through other doors. I see a lifeboat. That's a fully enclosed fire-resistant model, equipped with its own oxygen pump. Those have a water-based cooling system and self-contained air supply on board. This means that even if the boat is sealed, there would still be air available for the crew and engine operation. It automatically rights itself if it's overturned, and can withstand contact with fire for a significant period of time. But you won't be able to use that lifeboat. It's too noticeable, for one thing, and it just doesn't have the kind of speed we need. It looks like that part of the railing flares out. Once you take out someone, drag the body there and throw it over. It's a bad idea to leave the body around. You wouldn't want to alert the enemy of your presence. <coughs> Seasick, Snake? <clears throat> I don't get see. <clears throat> oh, well. It'll be better once you're off the deck. You could also try taking some pentazamine. <clears throat> pentazamine doesn't work for seasickness. At least Naomi didn't say any. <clears throat> Trust me. And it's not like you have anything to lose. Otacon, I took the pentazamine and you're right. The seasickness is gone. Wow, really? What do you mean, really? You said... Drugs are mostly about placebo effect. If you believe it's effective, it is. You're more naive than I thought. <sighs> Snake, switch to first-person view and look at the upper decks. See the sentries? Take them out in first-person view before they see you. Snake, you need to get to the bridge on the top level of the infrastructure. First, find a door that leads into the tanker's interior and infiltrate the ship. When the photos are in, we'll put them online and blow this whole thing wide open on the web. Don't you think that the authorities will just shut us down? Probably, but it won't matter. There'll be mirror sites spawning within minutes after those images go up. We won't even have to ask. People will be grabbing the pictures. There's no way anyone can stop it. Information has a life of its own. And as long as it lasts, it'll keep existing, even if it has to change its form or location. Life? Yeah. The desire of people to learn. The demand for data. That's called idle curiosity in my book. Everyone's got some of that. And sometimes it can pave the way for truth. That's what I believe. According to intelligence, this new model was designed to combat all the clone models of Metal Gear floating around in the world. 
Ocelot sold the Metal Gear specs to anyone with hard cash after he survived Shadow Moses. And raked in enough money to buy a decent-sized country in the process. But was that... was money really Ocelot's end objective? You think he had a deeper plan? I do. Nothing definite, but acquiring a large sum of money is always a good starting point for another project. Hmm. Anyway, every country that paid off Ocelot is racing to produce its own bipedal tank, one that can launch the so-called invisible nuclear warhead. If the whole world has a Metal Gear, the military dominance of the U.S. will disappear. In a world where Metal Gear has become commonplace, the only way to regain the upper hand is to possess a weapon even more powerful than Metal Gear. And that means a new Metal Gear. Exactly. The arms race must go on. The Metal Gear that the tanker is transporting is being developed under Marine Corps jurisdiction. But I've also heard a rumor that the Navy is working on its own Metal Gear. Any more info on the Navy's model? I tried to hack some out, but security was too tight. There's a lot of money being allocated, that's for sure. But every one of my investigations takes me to one name, then hits a brick wall. The name is The Patriots. Who are they? I wish I knew. I have no idea if this is an individual or an organization even. But once we expose the presence of this Marine Corps Metal Gear to the world, maybe that will shake the Patriots out of the tree. This mission is partly about that too. Snake, go through that door into the ship's interior. Push the action button down in front of the door and wait until the door opens before letting go. If you need to open the door faster, hit the action button repeatedly while you turn the handle. Make sure you keep doing it until the doors open. See those lockers? That's a good place to hide yourself if you're in a pinch. Push the action button near the locker to open the door. Walk into it for a quick concealment. Push the action button once more to get out of the locker. You can see out from the slit in the door. Make sure you check the area using first-person view before you go out. You can also hide enemies you've knocked out in the locker. Just open the locker, then drag the body to the locker. If you open the locker, you can use the door as a cover during an exchange of gunfire. But, of course, this is a pretty flimsy door. There are limits to how many bullets it can withstand. Don't count on it too much, okay? This reminds me of when we first met. I was the one inside the locker that time. We're equal now, huh? Not unless I wet my pants. That's a low blow, Snake. Snake, those pipes you see along the wall and ceiling are steam conduits. They're thin enough to penetrate with gunfire. Don't touch the steam. One of those blasts from the hole will burn your skin off. You may be able to use it as a trap of some sort, though. Snake, watch out for the floor there. It's wet from the rain. You'll leave tracks if you just walk on it. If someone finds your prints, they may decide to raise alarm. Crawl instead and you won't leave any traces. What do you think you're doing, Snake? You don't have enough to keep you busy. Try to remember the mission if you can. Snake, that door is probably busted. Try the other ones. Snake, the holds are straight ahead, but right now you need to get to the bridge, on top of the superstructure. Go up. Snake, that door is probably busted. Right now you need to get to the bridge, on top of the superstructure. Go up. Look at the TV over there. It's showing the hold. So that's... The new Metal Gear. Why are they broadcasting this? They probably want to keep a record of this exercise, and maybe give a little presentation. Presentation? That ship's been transmitting a live video feed via military satellite uplink for a while now. So there's some brass out there smacking their lips over this little home movie. I've been trying to pinpoint the receiving location, but I haven't had much luck. There's a heavy-duty firewall in the way. I'll try some more, though. Wherever it is, it must be a warm, dry office with hot coffee on tap. Far cry from that tanker, huh? That's what happens when the battlefield has a revolution in military affairs. Snake, how long are you gonna stand around watching TV? Get back to the mission! That must be the crew lounge. The tanker's crewmen would relax here when they're off shift. There's a lot of stuff there. Make sure you don't move it around too much. Someone may notice that it's been tampered with. Leave no traces. That's common sense when infiltrating a target, right? The hallway is pretty narrow, but there is that alcove to the side. If you're about to run into someone, you can always hide in there and let them pass. Snake, that door opens out onto the deck. You still have to get to the bridge to find out where this transport is headed. Go up. Snake, there's a surveillance camera in place. Once you're in its field of view, an alarm will go off. 
You can't afford to be seen. Wait for the camera to point the other way, then run past it. There's also a blind spot right beneath the camera. Use it to buy some time. You can also use the chaff grenade to set up some electronic interference. The camera will be ineffective for a while. There's a blind spot right beneath the camera. Use it to buy some time. That must be the mess hall. It's pretty small considering the size of the ship. I guess modern tankers are so automated that you only need a crew of about 20. That's not a lot to feed. There's a lot of things there, but make sure you don't disturb anything and leave traces. The enemy might notice. Snake, that's the pantry where they keep the food supplies. Huh, lots of cardboard boxes. You could probably use one to blend in and avoid being discovered. So he was about to have dinner. And got a bullet in the head instead. Poor bastard. Snake, wait! Don't move! What? Look at the walls on both sides of the hall. I see something. Infrared sensors? I see it. Some kind of device on both sides of the hall. Infrared sensors? Right. And they're linked to... Let me guess. Semtex. Exactly. Plastic explosives. So this is what they were talking about. Looks like it. If you trip the sensors... I'll be sleeping with the fishes, along with this entire ship. That sounds about right. Hmm. There aren't that many infrared beams. Maybe you can get past those without setting off the explosives. If you need to see exactly where the beams are, you can use the usual method. There's a fire extinguisher over there. Break it open and try scattering some of the extinguishing chemicals. There's a bag of extinguisher compounds for fires. Maybe you can shoot the bag and scatter some of the chemicals. If you trigger the sensor, the explosives will detonate. Don't ever make contact with the beams. This is very important. The plastic explosive is probably Semtex. It was developed in the former Czechoslovakia, as easy to use as C4 and just as powerful. The composition is a mix of RDX and PETN, with a detonation velocity of over 26,000 feet per second, with temperatures reaching up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It was probably the explosive used in the Pan Am 103 bombing over Lockerbie in 1988. If this much Semtex goes off at the same time, the tanker will disappear in two seconds flat. Make sure it doesn't go off, then. Don't trip the sensor. Don't touch the Semtex. Are they planning to take Metal Gear and then sink the ship? It doesn't look like you can open that locker. It must be locked or something. Try another one if you really need to use a locker. Snake, you need to get to the bridge on top of the superstructure. Get back inside the ship and head upstairs. There are stairs in the north block that will take you up. Head north for now. Snake, in some locations, the lighting makes your shadow longer and more noticeable. The enemy might spot your shadow, so you want to watch out. Turns and corners are especially dangerous, but the same holds for the enemy. If you spot someone's shadow ahead, you can avoid unnecessary risks. Snake, go to the bridge first and find out where this ship is headed. The bridge is on the top level. Go up. Snake, did you find out where that ship is headed? Yeah, I'm looking at it. 35 degrees longitude, latitude around 58. More than 500 miles off the coast of the Bermudas, out in the middle of the Atlantic. So the prototype is ready for solo testing. It's basically combat worthy. That area is outside the Second Fleet's operational range, too. It must be a standalone Marine Corps project, which means this prototype Metal Gear must be designed for independent deployment without any naval assistance. Anyway, analysis can wait till later. Snake, you need to go down to the holds and locate the actual metal. <laughs> This is the bridge, but it's not just a place where you steer the ship. In a modern tanker, navigational, engine control, communication, and all other major operational functions are consolidated in the bridge. The ship is autopiloted via a global positioning satellite system. This is a precision instrument we're talking about here, so it's probably best to leave it alone. So that's the KA-60 Kasatka, a multi-purpose military helicopter built by Kamov, the Russian aerospace firm. It adapts to a variety of missions, troop and weapons transport, medevac, target marking for attack choppers, even all weather surveillance missions. It uses Fenestron-type tail rotors. That's what makes the distinct rotor sound that you picked up. It is a Russian helicopter, but we can't be sure that the hijackers are Russian military. 
After all, Kamov did make a civilian version, the Ka-62. And there's also the Ka-64, the export model. There's something about that soldier who was standing outside the infrastructure. I think you should check it out. Use the hatch on the port side of the infrastructure to get out onto the navigational deck. That's where you need to go. Snake, are you trying to run away? I don't think she'll let you. You have to stand your ground here. Don't tell me you're getting discouraged. You're supposed to be great under pressure, remember? She's almost done. Hang in there. Snake, you're not the only one with a gun. If you don't take cover, you'll get hurt. Hide behind something. She may be hiding too, but you have a clear shot whenever she decides to attack. Use the first-person view attack. Snake, if you go any further out, you'll be completely exposed to the enemy. Are you suicidal or something? Get back! Snake, she's shooting from concealment. You should use the first-person view attack. Push the R1 button to change to first-person view. Then use the weapon button to raise the gun, and you can attack from that viewpoint. Push the L2 and R2 buttons while in first-person view to strafe left and right. Push the L2 and R2 buttons at the same time to stretch up on your toes while still in first-person view. These moves can be useful. Snake, use the corner view to watch for a chance to attack while hidden. Push the R2 or L2 button while in corner view to take quick looks out. You can also move the right stick while in corner view to survey other directions. If you have a weapon selected, push the weapon button while in corner view to jump out from concealment and aim your weapon. Your best opportunity will be when she tries to attack. Shoot before she does. If you use a first-person view attack, you should be able to strike from between containers. You'll have an element of surprise on your side. Snake, she has grenades. You can't stay in one place. Keep moving around and you'll be safer. Who is she anyway? That scout knife had Spetsnaz written all over it, but... Spetsnaz? That's the special ops of the Soviet GRU. So she must be Russian? Who knows? All I'm sure of is that she shoots like a commando. Be careful. Snake, don't let her figure out your current position. Stay hidden behind objects while you move and keep her in the dark. She'll lower her guard at some point. That's your opportunity. Snake, she's shooting at you from behind the tarpaulin. She can see you, but the tarp's completely blocking your view. You haven't got a prayer like this. Do something about that tarp. Snake, get rid of that light. You can't see anything with that glare. Shoot it out or you're a sitting duck. Otacon, the ship appears to be under their control. The men have Russian gear, but I haven't been able to find out anything else about their origin. I know who they are. You do? We've ID'd the old man. Who is he? Sergei Gerlukovich. Gerlukovich? One of Ocelot's allies? Yeah, the Gru Colonel. He's the one Ocelot was supposed to meet up with after Shadow Moses. They're after Metal Gear. Everything's changed. This is not going to be as simple as we thought. Y you could say that. I saw a surveillance remote just now. It looked like the Cypher. A Marine Cypher T? No, Army. First the Marines, then the Russians, now the army? You're right. This isn't going to be simple. Snake, there's something I have to tell you. What? We didn't dig up this info about the new Metal Gear on our own. Not like usual. How did you find out then? It was a tip. An anonymous tip. Anonymous? You've never trusted those. Why would you start now? I, uh... I have a younger sister. A stepsister. We have different parents. I only knew her for two years. You've never mentioned her before. So? The sender of the tip was E.E. E.E.? -E. E -E? Her name is Emma, but I always call her E.E. -E. Emma? Emmerich? Yeah, it just caught my eye, you know. I, I figured it was a coincidence, but I couldn't get it out of my mind. There's really no one out there who knows about her. When was the last time you saw her? Over ten years ago. You think it's a trap to lure us out here? I don't know. After I got the tip, I did break into the Pentagon system to get confirmation. Okay. Watch your back, Snake. Maybe I screwed up. I've got a light-equipped USP. I can take them on now. There's no ammo, but it takes a 9mm, just like the Marine's M9. I'll find those somewhere around here. Don't raise too much racket with that thing. I hear you. She's not dead, is she? No, just knocked out. Good. Looks like a little angel, doesn't she? What's gotten into you? N nothing. 
Sleeping Beauty may have been awakened by Prince Charming's kiss, but you better not try it here. I'm with you. Besides, I've had enough of tomboys. What are you doing? How could you shoot someone who's unconscious? What are you, some kind of a monster? Snake, I know you're into high places, but do you think maybe you can head down into the hold sometime this year? You're here to take those photos of Metal Gear, remember? The cipher's what it looks like, a flying surveillance saucer. It's an unmanned aerial vehicle used for ground and ocean surveillance, and it also assists in communication. It can take off and land vertically, and uses a ducted airstream from its rotors and the surrounding shroud to fly. The one you saw was the type used by the Army, if I recall. But I can't see the Army officially cooperating with a top-secret Marine Corps project. No, which means that there's someone besides us and the Russians that are interested in the new Metal Gear prototype. Cyphers can stay airborne for about three hours, so there should be an integrated mobile ground station controlling its flight pattern and output nearby. It's got to be on land. I'll bet you anything it's disguised as a regular truck or something, driving along Riverside. Let me check it out. Good call. Didn't think Gerlukovich was involved, of all people. Ocelot's former CO, and a man with a private army of ex-Russian military and GRU soldiers. I don't like it. And Liquid was planning to team up with that bunch at Shadow Moses. All he managed to do back then was to provide a toy or two. Looks like he's had enough of sponsoring insurrections. So this time, he's out here himself. I guess he's after Metal Gear? History repeats itself. Metal Gear has enough strategic clout to upset the balance of military power overnight. He must be dreaming of Mother Russia's return to glory. Like you said, history repeats itself. Some people never change. Maybe it's the world that doesn't or won't change. Maybe, but we're fighting to upset the status quo too, aren't we? Didn't think Gerlukovich was involved, of all people. So who was that Olga person? Don't know. I'm guessing she's Gerlukovich's daughter. She said nomads. Didn't she, you know, look a little like Meryl? I didn't notice. Snake, I owe you an apology. The reason I didn't mention my sister was, well, because... Otacon, have I ever told you who gave me this bandana? No, but what's that got to do with this? It means you don't have to explain. Okay. Thanks, Snake. Hey, Snake, you found a handgun. Uh, it's a decent one. USP. That gun can take out the infrared sensors you just saw. The USP fires real bullets, not the knockout rounds the M9 uses. You know that, right? The USP isn't equipped with a suppressor, either. If you fire it when there are enemies nearby, they'll probably hear it. Keep that in mind. Having the USP will make combat easier, but being undetected is still the best way to go, okay? Snake, Metal Gear is in the holds below the tanker's deck. Go down. That USP of yours should let you take out the infrared booby traps. There's no way into the holds except past those sensors. Take out the trap and head further down. Okay, now, infiltrate the holds and get those photographs of the new Metal Gear. Head downstairs. That's the engine room. You can see the tanker's engine in the middle there. The engine noise is pretty loud, but that means the enemy's hearing will be hampered too. The reason the ship's drive section is in the aft area is so that more oil tanks can be fitted into the middle part. A shortened propeller axle is another benefit. The simplification of the drive structure means a greater emphasis can be placed on hull strength. Snake, that shadow, it's... It's him, no doubt about it. But Raven was, you know, out in Shadow Moses. I know. Maybe it's the last of his nine lives. Or maybe his maker decided to give him another chance. You're not serious, are you? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Either way, we'll find out soon enough. Snake, watch your step, okay? Snake, is that Shadow? Who is that? I'll check it out. Watch yourself, Snake. Snake, if you fall from there, even you won't make it. You can't fall, no matter what, okay? Snake, there should be a door into the holds in the northwest section of the engine room. Head west. Snake, the engine room is full of solid structures. You could probably use them to get away when the enemy's chasing you. Use the hanging mode wisely. Snake, there's another set of infrared sensors in place. If you touch that, the explosives will detonate and that ship will be pulverized. 
I'm not in the mood to go sleep with the fishes, but there are too many sensors. Looks like I'll have to find another way. No need to worry. There's a way through. Take a close look. Do you see the thing with blinking green lights right next to the explosives? That's the control unit for the sensors. Destroy that, and the sensors stop functioning. You can't get in close enough to touch it, so you'll have to shoot it out. But your M9's knockout rounds won't work. Find a gun somewhere. But the M9's knockout rounds won't work. The USP you picked up should do the trick. Use that gun. The actual explosive device is the one with a blinking orange light on it. Don't even think about shooting that. Any significant impact will set off the detonators, which is not good. Just aim for the green lights and take out the control unit. Looks like there are several control units. Unless you take out all of them, you won't be able to get through. Once you've destroyed a control unit, the IR beam should shut off. If the beam is intact, that means there's a control unit you haven't managed to take out. You need to destroy every single control unit. Use the first-person view attack to target and destroy only the control unit. You should be able to target the partly concealed unit by climbing on top of objects, crawling, or stretching. Aim carefully and take out just the control unit from the infrared sensors. Use the first-person view for accuracy. The control unit is the one with the green light. Snake, the Metal Gear prototype is in the holds. You took out the infrared sensor trap just now. Go through that section to reach the holds. That door probably can't be opened. Try heading north. That door probably can't be opened. Head east. Snake, looks like that door was locked from outside. You have nowhere to go but ahead. Head south. Doesn't look as though you can open that door. Just keep heading south. Snake, the Metal Gear prototype is down in the holds. That corridor wraps around the holds. There are several doors into the holds from the corridor, but it looks like most of them are locked. But I think the farthest door isn't locked yet. You can get into the holds from the door at the end of that corridor. Head north. You can get into the holds from the door at the end of that corridor. Head east. You can get into the holds from the door at the end of that corridor. Head south. Looks like they plan to stop you from getting through. You've got no choice but to fight back. Use the first-person attack mode. Snake, you can take cover behind objects. Get down and fight back from a safer spot. Shoot out the lights to darken the corridor. The enemy will have a harder time finding you. Snake, use the flashlight in dark places like this. Your USP is equipped with a flashlight. All you have to do is select the gun and aim it with the weapon button, and the light will go on. Not that I need to tell you this, but the light will turn you into a better target if there are enemies nearby. Be careful. Snake, the enemy is wearing night vision goggles. Don't count on darkness for cover. I don't think they're going to let you into the hold so easily. I'll have to stand my ground and fight. I can try a jump out shot from corner view. Good idea. Snake, they've got grenades. If you see an incoming one, just get the hell out of there. Snake, the enemy's serious about not letting you through. You have no choice but to take all of them out. Start firing. Snake, are you in yet? Have you made it to the holds? It's taking longer than I expected. We've already passed the Verrazano Bridge. All right, we'll use another recovery point. They may be planning to change course. What? The exits to the deck are all sealed. What are they planning? If they get Metal Gear, we're going right off the fringe. Okay, Snake, let's go over this one more time. Use this camera to get photographic evidence of the Metal Gear prototype. Now do your thing and take pictures that speak louder than the government's plausible denials. We need four shots. Metal Gear from the front, front right, and front left, and a close-up of the Marine Corps marking. Marking? There should be a Marine's insignia on the body of Metal Gear. Just let someone try explaining away a clear shot of that. All right. There's actually one little thing. Just spit it out. I'm used to things going wrong. It looks like someone's monitoring our transmission. Who? I don't have a clue. All they're doing is watching. It would creep me out less if they tried to interfere with our communications. Could it have something to do with that cipher we saw? Maybe. I've switched the encryption protocol for our burst transmission for now. 
What I want to do is use a different method for sending these photos, just in case. Instead of using the codec? Exactly. There's a workstation in the southeast corner of the block where Metal Gear is housed. I've made arrangements so that you can send the pictures from the machine. Arrangements? I hitched a ride on Link 16 into U.S. military's proprietary network, managed to get into that workstation, and overwrote a part of the system software so I could remote install a little app I wrote. Why bother with anything that complicated? No, it's pretty simple, really. Look, all you have to do is stand in front of the machine and push the action button. The app will automatically launch and download the image data from the camera, split the files, and encrypt them individually. The data packets can then masquerade as... Okay, okay. So all I have to do is push the action button in front of the computer once I have the pictures, right? Well, sure, if you put it that way. And one more thing. The Commandant's already begun his speech. But you need to get the pictures before he's done talking. Otherwise, they'll spot you, okay? How much time do I have? I hacked into his personal files and took a look at the text of that speech. I'd say you have seven more minutes. Longer if he throws in a joke or two. A seven-minute time limit, huh? Remember, Snake, just the photos, okay? With these kinds of odds, I won't be making any sudden moves. But that doesn't mean we can just let Metal Gear be hijacked. Okay, okay, but first the photos. All right, we'll deal with the rest when we get there. Stay low. Snake, face the ladder and push the action button to grab onto the ladder. Push the action button again at the top or the foot of the ladder to let go. Remember, while you're going up or down a ladder, you won't be able to use any weapons. Snake, you see that projector there? See what comes up if you turn it onto the screen in front of you. I'm guessing there isn't enough space for all the Marines in that farthest hold where Metal Gear is. So, they're broadcasting the live proceedings. Why risk broadcasting in the first place? Don't cut across in front of the projector, or the enemy may spot your shadow. Crawl across if you need to move in front of the projector. There are two projectors in that cargo hold. It looks like the feed is being switched back and forth between them. The Marines would naturally be looking towards the projector that's currently in use, which means that when the switch takes place, they'll change the direction of their focus, too. Be on the lookout. If they see you, it's all over. Snake, you can't walk on that floor without causing a racket. You'll be in trouble if someone hears you. To move more quietly, try crawling. Or walk slower by pushing the left stick a little bit at a time. If someone notices something and starts walking towards you, take him out quickly or get out of there. It really would be suicide to take on that many Marines. You can't afford to be discovered. Trust me on this one. Snake. Look at that hatch over there. It probably connects to a below-deck network of ducts. Face the hatch and push the action button to open it. I think it's an entrance into the ducts. There's just enough room for you to crawl in. It could be safer for you down there than above deck, but don't let that relax you. Snake, that door is locked from the other side. There's no way back now. Keep moving. Snake, they'll find you if you make any loud noises, even inside that duct. There's no way you can take on that many of them. Don't even think about firing a gun, okay? Please? Oh, so he was broadcasting all this stuff. Snake, you can use that pole to get down to the level below. Face the pole and push the action button to grab a hold of the pole. But once you slide down, you won't be able to go back up. Make sure you're finished with this floor before going down. Snake, you're not going to be able to climb back up that thing. You should forget about going up to that level. Snake, that workstation is the transfer point between the tanker's intranet and the outside world. Use it to send those pictures over. All you have to do is face the computer and push the action button, and the photos will be sent. Hope you took a good one. That workstation is hooked up to the greater military network. The speech in the holds is being relayed out through that machine. We'll be making use of it, too. I managed to get in through an Army IC router in Ohio. All I had to do from there was use the Link 16 to remotely install a few drivers and an application onto that workstation, so your camera can talk to their computer now. Hey, even military networks use products based on commercial technology. Nothing too unfamiliar there. Besides, I cut myself a back door when I still had access. I had a lot of access privileges when we were developing Rex. Hey, are you listening? Oh, um, yeah. Really? Anyway, the program will compress, encrypt, and packetize the photo's image data. 
I used Bayton for encryption, by the way. And the beauty of it is, the packets are disguised to look like the Tadil J message format. Get it? It's the standard tactical digital information link message format, and the packets will be sent out cloaked by their own speech broadcast. <laughs> Tell me that isn't brilliant. Mm. Want me to go over it again? N no. Once was enough. Snake, use the camera to take photos of the new Metal Gear prototype. The camera's pretty easy to use. Zoom in with the circle button, out with the X button, and record an image with the square button. Look at the item window to check the camera's instructions again. But don't forget that you need the memory card PS2 to record a photo image. Make sure the memory card PS2 is in the memory card slot. Once you've got the photos, use the workstation in the southeast end of that room to send them over to me. But if they aren't what we need, I'm going to have to ask you to take another set. Snake, the tanker's holds are divided into three separate blocks, and Metal Gear is in the farthest hold. You need to head north. You know the number you're up against. If you're spotted, there's no winning that fight. You have to stay out of their sight, okay? Snake, take those pictures before the Commandant finishes his speech. It's the only chance we've got. As soon as he finishes up, the Marines will go back to their posts. That's way too many pairs of eyes watching out for Metal Gear. There's no way they'll let an intruder with a camera slip past. Do what you have to before that happens. We're just about out of time. Hurry! You absolutely can't let anyone see you in there. There are too many Marines in there to handle, even for you. If they see you, you're dead. Caution's the key word here. The Marine Corps' defining character is that of an emergency response team in crisis situations. But the Army's been steadily enlarging its own crisis response capabilities, building on the strength of their medium brigade. Analysis is that the Marine Corps sees this as an infringement on their own domain and is more than a little alarmed. We both know that Metal Gear Rex was being developed for deployment by the Army, so it does make sense that the Marines are trying to compete with their own version of Metal Gear. So the Commandant says the Navy is leaning on them, huh? I'm sure the Navy isn't happy about the new Metal Gear prototype being developed. From what I can tell, the new model can make an approach, launch an attack, and execute takeoffs from the ocean without any support. If the weapon makes it past the testing stage, it could render aircraft carriers, battleships, even submarines obsolete. It's a matter of life or death for the Navy as an organization. And if it's true that the Navy has its own Metal Gear in the works, that's another reason for them to get nervous. You heard the Commandant mention the NMD, the National Missile Defense Program. It was conceptualized late last century as a defense network to detect and engage enemy ICBMs launched at the continental United States. But at the same time, it came under fire for contributing to nuclear proliferation. The merving of ballistic missiles and the increase in weapon lethality were some of the byproducts of these defense R&Ds. There was a lot of opposition from the international community, on the grounds that the program violated the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. Russia and China were especially vocal in their criticism. Program deployment is a ways off in any case. The military hasn't been able to come up with a good technology to discriminate between actual targets and decoys. There are also other tech issues that have to be addressed. Okay, we're finally there. So, this is the new Metal Gear. Yep and we're gonna show the whole world its baby pictures. Okay, take out the digital camera. I want you to take a picture of the new Metal Gear. But don't forget, to save the pictures, you need a memory card PS2. When you take pictures, don't forget to insert the memory card PS2 into the memory card slot. You know, the camera has been an essential part of warfare for a while now. I heard that the photo core of the US Army has been around for a hundred years. Get the prototype on camera. We need four images, one from the front right, the front, and the front left, and a close-up of the Marines marking on the prototype. You need the memory card PS2 to record those images, so make sure you have one ready. Once you have the photos, use the workstation in the southeast end of the area to transmit them over to me. Send me something I can use. Okay, we're done with the image from the right. Three left to go, one each from the front left and front, and a close-up of the Marines lettering. Good luck. The picture from the left is perfect. There's three left to go, one each from the front right and front, and a close-up of the Marines lettering. Have fun. The front shot works. Three more and we're done. Take a picture from the front right, 
and front left side, and a close-up of the Marines' lettering. We're good on the image of the lettering. Three left to go, one each from the front right, front left, and the front of Metal Gear. I have the photos from the right and left. We still need two, one from the front, and a close-up of the Marines' lettering. The photos from the right and front are good to go. We need two more, one from the front left, and a close-up of the Marines' lettering. Be careful. We can use the photos of the right and the insignia, but we're still missing one from the front left and the front. The photos from the left and the one of the lettering are great. The two we need are the ones from the front right and the front. Good luck. The photos from the left and the front are good to go. We have two left, one from the front right and a close-up of the Marines lettering. We already have the pictures from the front and the one of the lettering. Take two shots of Metal Gear from the front right and the front left. Send it over as soon as you can. The photos from the right, front, and left are ready to go up. The only one we need is a close-up of the Marines lettering. We're almost there. The photos from the right and the left and the one of the lettering look good. The only one we need is of Metal Gear from the front. Good luck. We're okay on the photos from the right, front, and the one of the lettering. The only one we want is of Metal Gear from the front left. I know you can do it. I have the photos from the left, front, and the one of the lettering. The only one we still don't have is of Metal Gear from the front right. That's the last one. Why are you turning around? Metal Gear is in the farthest hold, I told you. The Commandant is almost done with his speech. We're just about out of time. Hurry! I'll explain how to use the camera. That digital camera you have was specially made to take pictures of the prototype Metal Gear. When a picture is taken, the screen data is first stored in the camera's internal memory. Then it's automatically processed through various algorithms to protect against tampering. Each picture is electronically stamped and distinctively encrypted. So in the off chance that someone alters the data during transmission, we'll know immediately. Oh, there's a limit to the internal memory's capacity. If the memory becomes full, overwrite the pictures you don't need anymore. When you're ready to take a shot, Use the L1 and R1 buttons to move the cursor at the bottom of the screen to the left or right. When you're ready to take a shot, use the L1 and R1 buttons to scroll left or right among the picture previews at the bottom of the screen. Send the pictures to me when you're done. Press the action button when you're in front of the workstation southeast from there, and the pictures will be sent to me. Get some good shots. So, any codec moments from you, Snake? Okay, I'm receiving the images. Looks like I have your photos now. Let's take a look. Huh? You haven't taken a single photo. There's no point in using this terminal if you don't have anything to send. Hey, you don't have the memory card PS2 in the memory card slot. You need to take the memory card PS2 that you recorded the photos on and put it in the memory card slot. Okay, first up. The first image is... The first one I'm seeing is, what's next? And the next one is, the next ones. Okay, what am I seeing now? Next up is, the next image is, the last one is, okay, the last one's coming up. So, what's the last one gonna be? Okay, that's good. The shot from the right is in the bag. You're a pretty good photographer. We can definitely use this left shot. Okay, this works. It's a great front view. This is great. The Marines lettering shows up really well. Oh, I don't think we can use this. Sorry, but this doesn't work. I hate to ask, but can you try again? It's almost right, but not quite. We can't use this. I'm sorry. You need to take another one. Huh, it needs to be a little more clear. What we need is top-notch quality here. You're too close. We need something that shows Metal Gear as a whole. I think you're too close to the target. Let's pull back and get the whole thing in the frame. I can't tell what this is. The camera's too close to the object. You need to pull back and take another one. You're too far away. Get in closer and try again. No one will be able to tell what this is because it's too far away. What we need is a closer look. This isn't close enough. You need to take another one from a shorter range. We already have a good photo from the right. We have the shot from the right covered already. You didn't need to take another one. We don't need another one from the left. We can use the left shot you took earlier. 
You don't need to take another one. We don't need a shot from the front. You took one already. The other photo of the front works. You don't need to take another one. You already took a good one of the side lettering. We only need one good shot of the lettering. What is this? Snake, this isn't a game we're playing here. Snake, get serious, will you? We need those pictures. You're on a mission here, remember? This is not what we came for. I can't believe you're clowning around at a time like this, really. Hey, this is the Marine Commandant. Are you a fan or something? The Commandant again. Look, if you like him so much, I'll print this out and make a panel out of it. Put it over your bed or something. Will you please stop sending me pictures of the Commandant? So, uh, this explains a lot. Not that there's anything wrong with keeping it to yourself. I mean, you know, it's your life and everything. But you're going to have to take those Metal Gear photos now. More of these? Is that all you think about? Hey, what you like is your business. Just get those Metal Gear pictures. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> this rules. But we can't use it. Get the shots we need. Oh, this is a... What? Nothing. It's nothing. But this isn't a photo of Metal Gear anyway. Sorry, but you're going to have to go back and shoot another set. I'll just make a backup of this one. Hmm, isn't this that soldier on the deck, Olga? I can't believe you took a picture of her, all things considered. Yeah, don't send me creepy stuff like this. What if I get possessed or something? Yeah, another spooky photo? I told you to stop, didn't I? I need to go get some holy water or something. Stop it, okay? Are you trying to freak me out? Okay, now we have all the photos. Snake, the speech is about to wind up. We'll have to give up on the front view. We'll have to give up on the picture from the right. We'll have to give up on the picture from the left. We'll have to give up on the close-up of the Marines lettering. Forget the photos and get out of there now. Why are you turning around? Metal Gear is in the farthest hold, I told you. The Commandant is almost done with his speech. We're just about out of time. Hurry! Do you want to save, Snake? Time to save? Oh, you need to save? Just a second. Oh, Snake, you want to save? Need to save, right, Snake? Are you all right, Snake? I'm ready to save whenever you are. Snake, thank God. I can do a quick save if you need. Snake, do you need to save? Okay, see you, Snake. Hang in there. Oh, you're not going to save. Well, okay, just let me know when you need to. Okay, Snake, stay out of trouble. Look, Snake, this frequency is for saving only, remember? Hang in there, Snake. Let me know as soon as you need to save, okay? And don't let them get you. Don't give up. Snake, you've got to stay alive. Hey, there's no memory card PS2 in the memory card slot. Saving can't be done unless you have a memory card PS2 ready. You need to set the memory card PS2 in the memory card slot. Oh, no. Snake, there wasn't enough space left on the memory card PS2 to save the game. Excuse me, but... You can't save unless you format, you know. I'm really sorry, Snake. There was an error and I couldn't save. There's no memory card PS2 in the memory card slot. I can't save unless you have a memory card PS2 ready. Set the memory card PS2 in the memory card slot now. Snake, there wasn't enough space left on the memory card PS2. I couldn't save the game. Look, there's no way to save unless you format the memory card PS2. Snake, there was an error and I couldn't save. Snake, you of course know the saying, one for all, all for one. What is this all of a sudden? Oh, I figured you'd need a lot of motivation, so I came prepared. It's from the Three Musketeers. The book, not the candy bar. Anyway, it means that if you go up against everyone by yourself, they'll gang up on you too, I think. Since you're on your own on that ship, you need to take this to heart and avoid confrontations. How was that? Just like the old days, huh? Almost reminds me of Mei Ling. But you sure you got it right? Of course. And I'll teach you a lot more of these. You can count on it. Great. Okay. There's a saying that goes, Even a bird on high dies a glutton's death, as do the fish of the deeps. The lesson is, uh, don't be greedy. The fish that belonged to a family called the deeps died from overfeeding, 
And so did a bird that got high on something. Probably fermented fruit. Okay, if you say so. I do, Snake. Don't take unnecessary risks just because you're greedy for more items. Remember the deep family's fish. <sighs> Another Chinese proverb. Those who look to the heavens prosper. Those who defy it are no more. Do you know this one? The meaning here is, hold on a sec, that you can only survive as long as you're a part of the natural order of things. You remember pre-ripped jeans? Manufacturers thought that just because people loved old, broken-in jeans, they would want to buy new jeans that looked old. So they purposefully... What do jeans have to do with nature and order? Denim should fray and rip on its own, naturally, right? Some designers tried to go against that, and no one bought them. The earnings report from that fiscal year is enough of a proof. Earnings? Hey, Snake, what's hardest won, most easily lost? It's time, get it? Amazing how relevant these Chinese proverbs still are. Once the moment's gone, it's gone. Except for daylight savings time, of course. That extra hour to do anything you like with every autumn. Gotta love it. Then again, you lose an hour every spring, so I guess the proverbs are right. Wow, they thought of everything. Did they even have daylight savings back then? Of course not. They knew how to save time. We're the ones that need to be tricked into it. Yeah, but you said... The moment never returns, Snake. Let's not waste it on idle questions. Okay. The Chinese have a saying. Those who are lost never question a path, and a drowning man doubts not the shallows. And it means means that you need to make use of other people's help. Otherwise, you could be in trouble. If you're lost, you don't even know whether a road you come across is a right one. And uh, what's the difference between shallow and deep if you've already drowned, right? Anyway, the point is that help is always a good thing to accept. So make good use of the codec. Look, this stuff seems nothing like what Mei Ling used to talk about. Hey, she couldn't do better herself. <sighs> Acquaintances agree, friends argue. That's a straightforward one. The better friends you are, the more openly you can disagree with each other. So feel free to present a counterpoint if you don't agree with what I'm saying. Argue away. Sure, all right. Not a promising start. Okay, forget what I said. Just go along with my advice. Do you know the saying, one forgets the hurt once the wound is healed? And that, of course, means, um... Oh, where'd I put that piece of paper? Did you say something? No, nothing. Uh, so, uh, forgetting the pain when the wound's healed means, um, th th that you have to get better fast. Yeah, that's it. So stock up on those rations and bandages. Is that really all it means? Hey, I'm the expert here. Snake, have you heard this one? Evil is human nature, and his entire being, falseness. The concept of so-called original sin. The idea that you're born bad, so you can't help doing bad things. Hold on. I thought the idea of original sin was that you had to work even harder at being good because you were born evil. Uh, well, yeah, that too. Very good, Snake. <sighs> you know the story about Achilles and Paris? The moral here is, uh, well, something about his heel. Anyway, even the great and virtually immortal hero Achilles was finally done in by Paris. Talk about a dangerous city. So don't get complacent. The mission can turn around and get you. Wasn't Paris a person? What? Paris. I thought he was a... Snake, there's a time and a place for conspiracy theories. Please, I'm trying to concentrate here. Huh? Ah, uh, sorry. Do you know the saying, those who walk a hundred leagues think not that their journey is half ended until the 90th league? That means... What does it mean? Okay. It means that if you're planning to walk that far, you better damn well know how to do simple arithmetic. Study. Stay in school. This seems to be getting more and more random. Correction. It's becoming more deep. Trust me. Okay. A frog in a well knows not of the great ocean. Hey, I don't like this one at all. Trapping a little frog in a well? That sucks. That's really cruel. Of course, it's not going to see the big blue sea. The lack of sunlight alone will kill it pretty quick. Sure, locking someone up is a good way to make sure they don't see what you don't want them to. But this is a terrible saying. I don't like it at all. Poor little froggy. I really think you've got this one wrong.
The Chinese have a proverb that goes, scholars hold in esteem knowledge, not acts. You see, they just sit around thinking instead of actually doing something, which doesn't make them too useful. Action is what matters, I think. Look, what I heard from Mei Ling was that... Snake, have you noticed that you bring her up a lot? Huh? Th that isn't the... Here we go again. What am I going to do with you? Like I was saying... You and your hyperactive libido. It's a good thing one of us can keep all the details straight. <sighs> this is my favorite Chinese saying. Better to be first among roosters than last among bulls. Of course, the meaning's clear. If you have to choose between being a chicken or a cow, pick the chicken. Cows are always being messed with by aliens. Cattle mutilations are up, you know. Why go looking for trouble, right? If an enemy spots you, you'll be in more trouble than a cow on a UFO. You stay out of their sight. Why would aliens be in an old Chinese proverb? Everyone knows they've been visiting us for thousands of years. News to me. Snake, do you know the Chinese proverb, care avoids air? Air is thought to be a kung word, meaning what? There's some linguists who think that this accounts for an almost universal utterance of the syllable er when people are at a loss for words. A kind of vestigial, hey, ah, what a crock. What did you do with that little cheat sheet I made you? Er. Uh, oh, there it is. <gasps> hey! Er, uh, that's really, uh. How could you do that? You know how busy I am and you. It's not what you think. Oh? So what am I thinking? What's going on over there? Oh, hi, Snake. Do you know the Otacon's been. Er, uh, Mei Ling, we're in the middle of a mission and everything, so can we, you know. Hmm. Fine. Sure. And Snake, the real meaning of care avoids air is that if you're cautious, you can avoid making serious mistakes. Even if you've gotten used to the mission, watch what you do. Good luck. Yeah, Snake, good luck. You, I'm not done with. <laughs> Let's discuss this, shall we? Uh... What happened to Mei Ling? He, she got mad and went offline. What did you do? Nothing. Now don't we need to get back to the mission? So much to do, so little time. <sighs> what you're wielding right now is a converted Beretta M92F, designed to fire tranquilizer rounds. A direct hit will knock the target unconscious. Think of those rounds as tiny syringes. The impact of the round causes the mixing of two chemicals in the shell. The resulting gas compresses a tiny piston and injects the tranquilizer in the bullet's tip into the target's skin. The tranquilizer's effects are felt at different times depending on where the bullet lands. A head or a heart shot will take effect immediately, but a round that hits somewhere like feet or hands will take a while. Use the first-person view attack for maximum accuracy. The gun is fitted with a suppressor, so there's no need to worry about alerting the enemy with the noise. But since it is a tranquilizer gun, the M9 has its limitations. All it can do is knock the enemy unconscious. Keep that in mind. Snake, that handgun of yours is a USP. The USP comes in a variety of calibers, from a 9mm to a 45. Yours is a 9mm, with 15 rounds per magazine. It's also equipped with a flashlight for nighttime shooting. In the dark, select the USP and aim to turn on the light. Unlike the M9, the USP isn't suppressor equipped. The gunshots may bring enemy reinforcements running, so be careful. Hey, you have a chaff grenade. You can use that to interfere with enemy radio communications and electronic devices for a short time. The chaff grenade is a weapon that disperses aluminum foil or metal-coated glass and plastic fibers to confuse the enemy radar. What you have is a portable application of the chaff launchers built into fighter planes. When detonated, the grenade releases tiny chaff pieces as well as miniaturized active jammers using a small amount of explosives. The grenade can't create full-scale chaff corridors or chaff clouds, but will form a radar cross-section area large enough for single personnel use. This weapon is for electronic interference only, though. It has no effect on enemy personnel. The stun grenade in your equipment is for incapacitating enemies without killing them. Stun grenades are non-lethal weapons that knock out enemy personnel with an intense flash of light and a burst of sound. Once the grenade is airborne, a timed detonator ejects an internal cartridge using a small amount of explosives. The cartridge then explodes and releases a flash rated at over a million candle power with an accompanying bang of over 200 decibels. 
The combinations of the flash and the bang temporarily overwhelms human sensory perceptions. There are no projectiles released, so it can only knock out enemies, not wound them. Keep that in mind. I see you have the grenade equipped. It's an anti-personnel frag grenade. Throw it at the enemy and the blast and fragments will take the enemy out. Watch out. Pushing the weapon button will pull out the pin. Release the weapon button to toss it. The throwing distance depends on how hard you push the weapon button. After pulling the pin, you'll have five seconds until the grenade explodes. Get familiar with changing the timing and throwing distance of the grenade before it goes off. I see you have the M4 equipped. It's a standard issue assault carbine for SOCOM troops. Like the M16A2, it uses 5.56 mm cartridges and can hold 30 per magazine. It features a flat top upper receiver and a detachable carrying handle, and it can be configured to the specifications of the special forces. Snake, you have an empty magazine in your hand. Why are you still carrying that around? Select the magazine and throw it using the weapon button. The noise will draw enemy soldiers toward wherever the magazine lands. How strong you push the button determines how large a swing you take. Take aim using first-person view and try to land it where it will lure the enemy away. So, you've got rations now. These are military food supplies and allow you to recover some life with use. If it is equipped in advance, the ration will automatically be used and life will be regained when you receive damage. You can select it in the window and push the confirmation button to use the item on the spot. Rations were designed to be carried and eaten on the field. They're all about functionality and calories. They use special freeze-drying methods developed by the NROC. They're compact, portable, and last for weeks. You've picked up gel bandages, I see. When you're bleeding, select the bandage as an equipment to stop the blood. The bandage is a type of alginate dressing. It's a highly absorbent pad that gels blood and other fluids on contact. It releases calcium ions during absorption, hence the coagulating effect. You have pentazamine in your inventory. If you need to take some, select it in the item window and push the enter button. Pentazamine is a mild tranquilizer used to treat clinical depression, obsessive compulsive behavior, and anxiety. It belongs to the benzodiazepinate family, and along with its antidepressant and anti-anxiety qualities, it suppresses convulsions. Take it when you have a tough shot ahead with a sniper rifle, and you need to minimize shakiness. But I guess you don't have one of those yet. Well, you can also try some if you're feeling really seasick. Snake, are you smoking? You really should quit. First of all, it turns you into an instant target in the dark. As for what it means to your health, I won't even go there. Remember what Naomi said about lung cancer rates? Everyone knows that it's a dangerous substance. So's war, and I've done that all my life. Well, you can screw up your own body if you like, but think about other people, okay? This is the new kind that has almost no secondhand smoke. It won't bother anyone. Oh, really? Didn't I see you toss the butt off the bridge? Littering, polluting. <sighs> you have a long way to go, my friend. Using the old cardboard box trick, huh? Looks good on you, Snake. Camouflage is the best way to slip past enemy surveillance. But cardboard is just paper when it comes down to it. It won't withstand any serious assault for long. Don't rely on the trick too many times, either, and I recommend you keep it dry. You're using the anti-personnel sensor, I see. It measures the electromagnetic fields and heartbeat of life forms and converts the data into vibrations. If an enemy draws near, it will vibrate. The stronger the vibration, the closer the enemy is. But remember, when using the anti-personnel sensor, you'll only be able to feel the vibrations coming from the sensor. Snake, the equipment you've got there is a pair of earplugs. You usually have reduced hearing for a while after setting off a stun grenade, but not if you have those on. But you won't hear too well as long as you have them on either. Use them only with stun grenades. Good, you have a pair of binoculars. You'll be able to use them to survey enemy territory from a distance. They come with a zoom function and autofocus and have all the durability of military equipment. You won't have to worry about breakage with these. You have the thermal goggles equipped, huh? They provide night vision by using variances in heat distribution to create an image. It uses a two-dimensional solid-state projection system to create high-res images at 60 FPS in real time. By using the thermal goggles, you can take a look at the enemy's neck to see if they have dog tags or not. If it's about waist high, you'll be able to climb up or over things with the action button. Keep that in mind. Change to first-person view with a weapon selected. 
Once you aim your weapon with the weapon button, you're ready to attack in first-person view. Using the first-person attack allows you to shoot high or low. You can aim for the enemy's head or even feet. The L2 and R2 buttons let you strafe during first-person attacks. You can crouch, too, with the crawl button. Once you've mastered all the moves, you'll be able to do things like jump out from concealment, fire at a target, and then drop out of the enemy's view again. You can aim the handgun with the weapon button, then lower it without firing if you let go of the button slowly. It saves ammunition, and besides, it could be useful after you've disarmed an enemy at gunpoint. You can aim a weapon with the weapon button, then lower it without using it if you let go of the button slowly. Bodies can be moved to another location by dragging. First, make sure no weapon is selected. Then push the weapon button near the body to grab it. As long as you have a hold on the body, you'll be able to drag it. Let go of the weapon button when you're done. It's a bad idea to leave enemies where they've fallen. Hide the bodies to make sure no one sees them. Push the L2 or R2 button while in corner view to move your head and take a quick look in that direction. You'll be able to see farther in corner view, but there's a greater chance of being discovered. Keep that in mind. Move the right stick while in corner view to look in that direction. The difference between this and using left step and right step buttons is that you won't be exposing yourself to possible enemy fire. At the same time, because you're staying in the same position, your range of vision is more limited. If you have a weapon selected while in corner view, push the weapon button to jump out of concealment and aim your weapon. You can use this while you're standing or crouching. It should help during gunfights. When you need to arm yourself with a weapon, push down on the R2 button to enter the weapon mode. You see those weapon icons? Select the one you want by moving the left analog stick up and down and matching up the icon to the lower right spot. If you have several weapons of the same type, they'll be displayed in a row. Select the one you want by moving the left analog stick right and left and placing the icon to the far right spot. Then let go of the R2 button to arm yourself with the weapon. If you need to know the finer points of using each of the weapons, just take a look at the guidance window. If it's items, like rations, that you need to select, just follow the same procedure, but with the L2 button. Snake, when I have something urgent to tell you, I'll raise you on the codec. When you see the call sign, hit the select button to receive, all right? Snake, once you get close enough for close quarters combat, forget the weapons. Push the punch button to take a swing. Punching is an effective, noiseless way to take out enemies. Hit the punch button repeatedly to unleash combo attacks and pummel the enemy. You can also use the first-person view. Of course, the biggest favor you can do yourself is to avoid getting in melee situations altogether. As long as you have no weapon selected, you can throw an enemy with the weapon button and the left stick. Just get in close and hit those controls at the same time. They'll be down on the ground afterwards, and you may even be able to knock them unconscious. The other attack option when you're unarmed is the chokehold. Move in close to the enemy from behind and push the weapon button without moving the left stick. Hit the weapon button repeatedly to break the enemy's neck. Keep it pushed down if you want to move around and drag him away with you. Remember, you can only do this from the back. You can't perform a chokehold while facing someone. Be careful. Snake, push the crawl button to crouch down. You'll definitely need it when you're taking cover behind low objects. Use the left analog stick while you're crouching to crawl in that direction. Push the crawl button again to stand up. Crawling is your best bet when you need to move silently or get under something. You can fire a handgun from prone position. It's a good stealth attack. The handgun's effects vary depending on where you manage to land a shot. Aim for the head for the highest degree of damage. Use the first person view to take aim. Aim the gun and push the L1 button to automatically lock onto the target. You can use this feature from first person view or from top view as well. If you go with jump out shots, you can wait behind cover for the right time to get in a shot. Select your gun and flatten yourself against an object. Then switch to corner view. Hit the attack button to pop out and catch the enemy off guard. Let go of the attack button to get back behind cover. Wait for a lull in the enemy fire to strike. Snake, what if you run out of ammunition during an exchange of fire? It leaves you suddenly vulnerable, doesn't it? That wouldn't happen with tactical reload. So change the magazine before it becomes empty. That way you would never run out when you're actually facing the enemy. Exactly. To perform a tactical reload, unequip the gun, then equip it again. The gun should now be loaded with a fresh magazine. 
Use the Quick Change button, the R2 button, for this one. Select the grenade when you take a peek. You can then use the Weapon button to throw the grenade while taking cover behind objects. Push the Action button near a scalable railing to hang off the other side. This is called hanging. You can use it to move around, hide, and even maneuver around an enemy's back. You can move the left stick or use the L2 and R2 buttons to move left and right while hanging. When you're ready to pull yourself up, just push the action button again. A grip gauge appears below the life gauge during hanging. The grip gauge indicates how tightly you're holding on and steadily decreases as long as you're in hanging mode. When the grip gauge goes to zero, you won't be able to hold on anymore. You need to hoist yourself up before you fall off. Push the crawl button while hanging to jump down straight below. If the ground is too far below, you'll lose some life. In some places, you won't make it at all. Be careful of that. Congrats, Snake. Looks like those pull-ups were worth it. Your grip strength is up. After pushing the crawl button in hanging mode and falling, if you see a good handhold, try pushing the action button. If you hit it just right, you should be able to grab on. It won't matter if your direction's off a little bit. Experiment with it. When you're springing up from hanging mode with the action button, you can use the momentum to knee someone. If you see an enemy walking near the railings, give it a try. Snake, if you sustain damage from enemy attacks, it could increase your chances of capture. The blood stains would lead them right to you, and that's another reason you should stay away from trouble as much as possible. Snake, are you bleeding? If your life gauge is down to the point where it's red, the bleeding won't stop. As long as you're bleeding, your life gauge will keep dropping gradually. Besides that, the blood stains could put the enemy on your trail. The only way to stop the bleeding for good is to let your body recover until the life gauge is green. Rations are the best way to do that. Try to crouch down or assume crawl position and stay still while you're bleeding. Your life will recover bit by bit. I'd recommend that you stay in hiding until the bleeding stops, if possible. You can also use the gel bandage to prevent further blood loss, but this is an emergency measure only. If you deselect it as your current equipment, you're back to square one. Keep that in mind. Snake, the M9's anesthetic rounds have different effects depending on where it hits. If you manage to land them on the head or the heart area, the enemy will go down immediately. If it's hands or feet, it may take a while for the anesthetic to take effect. Try using the first-person view to aim with higher accuracy. Push the crawl button as you're running to go into a tumble and a forward roll. Make good use of it, maybe when you need to move from cover to cover quickly. If you tilt the left stick at a smaller angle, you'll be able to walk more slowly and stealthily. Speed isn't everything. Try moving over noisy surfaces this way. Snake, don't just take out enemies and leave them there. That's a bad idea. Finding their dead friends on the ground will probably make sentries raise an alarm. Once you've dealt with someone, put the body somewhere out of sight. I recommend you hide the enemy's body as soon as you've taken them down. The tranquilized and unconscious enemies will wake up sooner or later. As for soldiers you've killed, the body will become too stiff to move in a short while. Keep that in mind. You can also hide the enemy's body in a locker. All you have to do is open the locker and drag the body there. The handgun ammunition and other live rounds have different effects depending on where the bullet hits. If you hit the hand, the enemy won't be able to use it, and a round to the leg and feet will take away their mobility. If you manage to land them on the head or the heart area, the enemy will go down immediately. Destroy the radio on their right hip to the back to prevent the enemy from calling for backup. Use the first-person view when you need to aim accurately. Don't break things if you can help it. Any sign of infiltration will put the enemy on a lookout. Exercise caution. Even if you've successfully thrown the enemy off your trail, don't ever relax your guard once you've been spotted. They'll be looking for you, and security will be tighter. Don't underestimate what you're up against. Snake, get yourself out of sight now. Enemy search parties are on the way. It's a clearing. These aren't sentries you're dealing with. They're searching for you, and they know you don't want to be found. You can't make some feeble attempt at concealment. Make sure you're completely hidden in some place they wouldn't think of searching. If you're spotted and it comes down to an exchange of gunfire, don't stand out in the open. Find cover ASAP. Strafe and stretch up from your concealed position to get a good shot on target while in first-person view. But if they come at you in droves, even you won't be able to fend them off. You need to avoid discovery at all costs. As soon as you're spotted by an enemy soldier, he'll call for backup on his radio. 
the search party that's going to show up as a result is a tough bunch. For one thing, they have better equipment, like body armor. But the main thing is that they're highly trained in search and destroy types of activities. They'll come as a team and attack as a team. Don't try to take them straight on. If you're spotted, you need to stop the sentry from calling for backup. Take him down before he has the chance to use the radio. You can also break out the chaff grenade and interfere with the message transmission to prevent any alerts from being issued. If you take out the radio, the sentry will have no way of calling for help. Radios are worn behind the right hip. You should be able to target it in first-person view. If he does manage to call for backup, get yourself in deep hiding before they arrive. The reinforcements are all wearing body armor. It'll take several shots before the rounds do any damage to the protected regions of the body. But only a single headshot is needed. Aim well while attacking in first-person view. You'll be less likely to be spotted in the dark, but this won't work during a clearing, so I recommend you try something else. You can hold someone at gunpoint by getting behind his back with your gun ready. What you choose to do with a hostage making no resistance after that is up to you. Move the left stick toward a wall and keep it there to flatten yourself against the wall. Push the punch button while in that position to knock on the wall and create a diversion. If you plan carefully, you'll be able to lure sentries away from their posts. When you're flattened against a surface behind a corner, you're in corner view. You'll be able to survey the area without exposing yourself. The corner view lets you take a look ahead with the L2 and R2 buttons. Or you can jump out with your weapon ready. Take advantage of all the action. Use crawl to get under desks and other objects. Once you're in enclosed space, you'll be in intrusion view. In intrusion view, you move forward with the left analog stick up, back with down, and left or right with the corresponding directions. Use the first person view button to take a look around or aim with precision. But if someone catches sight of you while you hide, you could be attacked. It's no guarantee against a clearing either. Entering intrusion state doesn't mean you're absolutely safe. Keep that in mind. Whenever you see an item box, you should acquire it. Take a closer look to see what the item is. When you take out an enemy, move his body out of the way and check for an item box. Don't leave it behind. When you take out an enemy, an item box may appear. Don't leave it behind. Snake, don't let the enemy spot you. Once you've been discovered by a sentry, he'll call in reinforcements and there will be an attack. Even you're no match for that level of organized assault. They have better weapons too, remember? We aren't terrorists, okay? Avoid unnecessary confrontations and go for total stealth, all right? Snake, they're waiting to ambush you on top of the stairs. There's no way you can make it up while being sniped from above. You can't get up those stairs until you've shaken the enemy from your trail. Get out of there for now. If you get lucky, you could seize an item from someone after you hold them up. There's some items you can only acquire from holdups. If you've got the time, try it out. Put your thermal goggles on and look at the enemy's neck area. You should be able to see if he has dog tags on. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I see. Could be. I understand. Yep. Right. That makes sense. All right. Gotcha. That's right. No doubt about it. I'll get right on it. Yeah. Really? Huh? I don't know. Hmm? You sure? I don't believe it. No. What? Can't be. I don't think so. That can't be right. What? No way. You gotta be joking. Not in a million years. Ugh. How do you know that? You do it. You gotta be kidding. You lied to me. That doesn't sound right. I don't believe it. What are you talking about? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Ah, I've just about had enough. Forget it. No way. What a big head. Who do you think you are? You were watching? You too? Shut it. Are you sure? You selfish. What's with this guy? You make it sound easy. You seem to know everything. I'm the hero of this game. Hey, I'm the main character. The hero of this game is me. Mm, I'm feeling kind of funky. 
Lali Lule Lo. Lali Lule Lo. Lali Lule Lo! This is Snake. I'm now inside strut A of shell one. How are things? We're in luck. Looks like there are no sentries posted here. What's the visibility? The lights on the plant's struts are functioning. I won't have to use the IR goggles. Any problems? There was a brand new hole cut through the oil fence. There's someone else besides me that wanted to get in badly. That's not possible. What about SEAL Team 10? They landed on the roof of the big shell as planned. And by the way, Snake, we're changing your code name for all following communication. What's wrong with Snake? Just a precaution. You are now designated Raiden. All right, Raiden. You've already covered infiltration in VR training. I've completed 300 missions in VR. I feel like some kind of legendary mercenary. Okay, we'll skip that part. This will be your first sneaking mission. The arms will naturally have to be procured on site. Make sure nobody sees you. If you need to, contact me by codec. The frequency is 140.85. When you want to use the codec, push the select button. When we need to reach you, contact you, the codec will beep. When you hear that noise, press the select button. The codec's receiver directly stimulates the small bones of your ear. No one but you will be able to hear it. All right. I'll contact you if anything changes. First, make your way to the upper section of the big shell. How do I get up to the next level? There's an elevator at the far end of that area. Use that. Sounds good. Your new sneaking suit uses electrofiber technology, a byproduct of fiber optics research. The hatch with a circular handle will open into the elevator area. Locate the hatch first. Copy that. Moving on to main mission objectives. You're currently using artificial blood primed with nanomachines. What did you do with my own blood? It's being kept in cold storage. It will be circulated back into your body when you return. Look at all these bugs. The seawater is polluted with crude oil, and yet they can still survive. It's an altered bug that can resolve crude oil. Altered? Yes, through genetic engineering. It was created in the lab to combat frequent oil spills. It doesn't exist naturally. The bug is genetically altered with DNA from a bacteria called Pseudomonas, which can decompose crude oil. It has an enzyme in its body that can break up oil, and was modified so it instinctively consumes any crude oil that it absorbs. One of the reasons the big shell has little oil pollution is because of this bug. It also helps in reducing costs and the number of spill maintenance workers. It's a form of bioremediation. It's for the most part innocuous, so no need to be worried. Those bugs have ravenous appetites. Be careful that they don't end up eating your rations. Shake your equipment to protect the items from sea lice. Raiden, the sea lice are getting fat on your rations. Shake the equipment window to get rid of the bugs. Raiden, over there is the submarine for deep sea dives. It is apparently used in repairing submerged areas of the big shell and for studying deep sea ecosystems and changes in water quality. It can dive to depths of around 500 meters at a maximum speed of roughly three knots. In addition to its normal water-resistant lighting, it is also outfitted with lighting resistant to muddy water. I doubt that you'll get it to work, though. That submarine is not operational. It doesn't pose any threat. Forget about it and return to your duties. Colonel, there's a gym suit. Hmm, looks like a high barometric pressure diving suit. By maintaining barometric pressure within the suit, it should allow its wearer to carry out work at sea depths of as much as 300 meters. But it doesn't look even remotely usable. It's a very old model. Yeah, and it's rusted all over. It doesn't even look like it's been used. Raiden, that diving suit doesn't look like it works. Forget about it and return to your duties. Raiden, I don't think that door will open. Find another route to the other side. Look down near your feet. See that duct? Ducts can be crawled into. Raiden, that skull suit of yours is designed to minimize drag when you're underwater. Try feeling the suit's skin. Sort of sandpapery. What you're feeling is a series of microscopic grooves. 
This water-repelling scale structure cancels out the force of the currents. The suit cuts drag by a full 10%. You'll be swimming like a fish. The technology is extrapolated from the structure of shark skin. The concavity of the skin surface is designed to cut down on air drag on dry land as well. Same idea as the surface of golf balls, but improved upon. Sounds good. I think I'm ready for the Olympics. Raiden, you should be used to the controls by now. Proceed with your mission. The clock is ticking. Get on the elevator on the far side of this area and get to the upper section of the big shell. Raiden, that door is watertight. Yeah, I know how to open it. We covered it in VR training. True. Proceed with caution. Turn the handle to open the door. Face the door and press down on the action button and the handle will turn. Punch the action button repeatedly if you need to turn it faster. Colonel, I've sighted an enemy sentry. AN-94 and a Makarov. Those grenades, all his equipment, is Russian-made. Must be a Gerlukovich man. Gerlukovich? A Russian private army that was in line to work with the Shadow Moses Takeover Group four years ago. What's their stake in this one? They must have made a deal, an arrangement with the terrorists. They become a band of mercenaries, an army without a country. Raiden, you won't be able to use any of the enemy's equipment. Why not? You should know that all active weapons are equipped with a personal identification system. The owner enters their required user ID information during the weapon registration or at the start of a mission. If anyone other than the registered user tries to fire the weapon, the ID system will not authorize the action. But these are black market Russian weapons. How can they be equipped with identification functionality? They must have been customized by the terrorists themselves. These are professionals we're dealing with, and they certainly won't let their own equipment be used against them. I'm guessing it's the same for the Navy SEALs gear? Right. How am I supposed to procure weapons then? Find the ones that haven't yet been individualized. Everything you find in the item box is clean. You should know this from your VR training. Okay, I know those. Items in the item box are yours to use at will. They will be your supply source with regards to weaponry and gear. Colonel, I remember this place. Of course you do. This is level one from the VR missions. You're right. I see it now. You may not have field experience, but you've been trained in the hyper-reality of simulated combat. Don't give in to fear. Just do as you were trained and everything will be all right. Colonel, there's definitely another intruder in here besides me. That's not a possibility. Not a team. Looks like a solo job. One man. We may not know who he is, but he managed to take care of every sentry in the area. They're all out cold. Whoever he is, he's got some skills. We need to get an ID. But for now, you can take advantage of the situation and get to work. There's a terminal in front of the elevator. A node. Did you say nerd? Not nerd. Node. Oh. Use the node to gain access to the Big Shell's facilities network. Then what? Pull up the map of the structure. That'll let you activate the Soliton radar. The Soliton radar? True. That radar came in useful during VR training. A radar system uses biological magnetic fields as input. These estimated enemy positions are projected onto a map according to reference points collected via GPS signals and field personnel reports. We need to get to the map through the Big Shell's node to put this data processing to practical use. The node unit is about three feet high, should be colored blue. Each area has at least one. How do I gain access? Just push the action button in front of the node. The nanomachines in your body will take care of the security clearance and allow you access to the node. Complete the procedure before those sentries gain consciousness. If they spot you, you won't be able to gain access for a while. Stay on guard. Got it. Hmm, the elevator seems to be stopped on the upper floor. You will have to wait for it to come down. You see the node to the east? Access it for now. Raiden, first get to the upper section of the big shell. Take the elevator in the north end of the area. To get to the elevator area, go through the connecting passageway to the north. The passage is behind a watertight hatch. It should look like a door with a circular handle. Raiden, the elevator is at the extreme north end. Take the elevator to the upper section of the big shell.
Before you head for the upper section of the big shell, log into the node. The node is at the far end of that area, to the east of the elevator. Colonel, that figure just now. I don't know. Who do you think it was? It wasn't a seal, that's for certain. Keep your eyes open. Good work, Raiden. The radar should be functioning now? Remember your VR training sessions. The tool is exactly the same one. It maps the terrain as well as the position of enemy personnel. Let me explain about your Soliton radar system. The bright dot in the middle is you, Raiden. The red dots are your enemies, and the blue cone shape represents their field of vision. Your radar isn't affected by the weather, but if you're discovered by an enemy, you won't be able to use it. It gets jammed easily, I'm afraid. It's all made from currently existing technology. You won't be able to use it in an area with strong harmonic resonance, so be careful. The Big Shell's layout map should now be available after touching the Start button. How do I save the mission data? I've set aside a proprietary frequency for saves, and an analyst to work on the data too. Jack, is everything all right? What are you doing here? Jack, can you hear me? Rose, you're not supposed to be involved. What's going on? Jack, I'm a part of this mission. Colonel, what the hell is going on? Raiden, meet the mission analyst. She'll be overseeing the data saving and support. Why her? The Foxhound analyst that was supposed to take part in this mission was in an accident. Rosemary was brought in as a replacement. An accident? And according to the files, she knows you better than anybody else. Rose may be in the service, but an intelligence analyst is no field officer. Not to worry. She has our technical staff at her disposal. She's never been a part of a field mission. This is insane. I have my own reasons for selecting her for this mission, soldier. Colonel, I fail to see... I know your VR training performance in and out, but sometimes that's not enough. You're familiar with the Shadow Moses incident? You know I covered it in VR. If there's a crucial tactical detail that case taught us, it was the power of the operative's will to survive. I was trained to fight. My personal feelings have no place in a mission. We've learned that it doesn't work that way. And on the field, you need all the help you can get. Jack, you're stuck with me whether you like it or not. Rose. You need someone to watch your back. But I have conditions that need to be met, Colonel. What is it? I'll perform my duties and save that mission data, but I'm aware that technically I'm not part of the mission control team. After all, I'm just a normal girl who's worried about Jack. But that means, Colonel, that I am not required to follow your orders outside of my immediate duties. Jack is not simply a field personnel for me to track. His safety comes first to me, not the mission. And because of that, I will be monitoring and keeping a record of every communication you have with him, Colonel. Given the circumstances, you're free to do what you see fit. Hey, I prefer this to being kept in the dark waiting. I'd like to make a request, if I may. Of course. His handle is Raiden. For the duration of the mission, could you call him that? Yes, sir. All right, Raiden. Let me know when you're ready to turn in a save. The proprietary save frequency is 140.96. I just switched frequencies. Jack? What? Do you know what day it is tomorrow? April 30th. Is there something special about it? Isn't there? I can't remember. I'm sorry. Oh, well. I'll keep trying till I hear the answer. I'm gonna let you go now, Jack. Take care. Nodes are the terminals of the Operation Support Computer Network for the Big Shell. Of course, only Big Shell staff can gain access, with their job description determining their system authority and access. I installed a program in your nanomachines that automatically enters the passcode for unrestricted access. Press the Action button in front of the node to activate it. Use the node by pressing the Action button in front of the terminal. Raiden, the enemy sentry is regaining consciousness. Be careful, Jack. Find somewhere to hide until the elevator arrives. You must stay out of sight. Raiden, the elevator is on its way down. It will be a few more minutes before it gets there, however. Wait until the elevator is here, but find some cover in the meantime. Make sure you're out of the enemy's sight. Waiting isn't my strong point. I know. You always left that job for me, didn't you? Raiden, is remembering priorities also not your strong point? Just go into hiding until the elevator arrives. Raiden, the elevator is there. 
get on quickly and get to the upper part of the big shell. Ryden, take the elevator to the upper section of the big shell. The elevator is on its way down to the deep sea dock where you are. It should arrive within a few minutes. Hang on. Ryden, the elevator is inactive during alert mode. Get out of there for now and shake off the enemy's pursuit. Ryden, you have no weapons and not a chance in hell against them in a confrontation. Get out of there and head south. Retreat down the corridor. Jack, get out of there, please. There's some cover back in the south area. Get yourself over there right now. Sneaking missions are covert by nature, Ryden. Stay out of the enemy's sight. Don't randomly strike out at enemy personnel. Observe them first. They may be pros, but they're also human. Humans always make mistakes. When that happens, hit them hard. Ryden, the elevator won't move when enemy soldiers are in it. Draw enemies out of the elevator. Colonel, I'm on the roof. There are no sentries, but it would only take one to spot me in this light. You never had daylight VR training, after all. Stay extra sharp until you can find a node to log in from. What about the commandos? SEAL Team 10 has landed on Struts B and C. And the President? Seems he was spotted on Strut B. Strut B? First, get to a node. Log into the network. Got it. I see a lot of birds over there. If you scare the birds into flight, however, there is a possibility that the enemy will detect your presence. Keep that point in mind. Ryden, do you actually enjoy abusing helpless animals? I don't believe this. I had no idea you were that kind of a monster. I don't understand you, Ryden. If you're satisfied, get back to the mission. Ryden, the elevator's gone down. There's no need for you to return to the deep sea dock. Proceed with the mission. Ryden, look at that wire fence. You may be able to crawl through it. Crouch down using the crawl button, then push the left stick in the direction you want to move. Push the crawl button again to stand up. You can use weapons even while crawling. This is different from VR training, so you keep that in mind. According to the SEAL Team 10's communications, the President was sighted on Strut B. Ryden, head for Strut B. It's to the northwest of Strut A, your current location. Cross the connecting bridge between Strut A and B. You can get to the connecting bridge from the first floor. Get down from the roof to the first floor. Colonel, don't you think it's strange that the fence is missing this spot right here? Yes, I do. You don't think that he got away? It's possible. Be on the alert. Roger that. That area is caked with seagull droppings. You'll slip if you run over it. Be careful. The tanker accident two years ago released crude oil containing massive quantities of endocrine disruptors. The fish that absorbed them were then eaten by seagulls, which further concentrated the endocrine disruptors in their bodies. What sort of outcome this will lead to is still currently under review and is yet unclear. It just goes to show that finishing the cleanup of ocean oil spills does not mean that environmental restoration efforts end there as well. Colonel, do you think the terrorist ringleader is really Solid Snake? Yes, I do. But during the Shadow Moses incident, Snake was a... A hero? Yeah. Certainly. You went through VR training, but it is not as if the simulation is faithful to every fact. It changes people. You too, Colonel? Ryden. Focus on the task at hand. Solid Snake is the terrorist kingpin. He is an opponent you can't underestimate. Understood? That tanker accident that happened over there two years ago. The tanker sank and... I know. I went through it in VR training. The tanker didn't sink because of Snake, though. Raiden, VR training does not exactly simulate everything with absolute fidelity. What do you mean? Okay, listen. Here are the facts. Known terrorist Solid Snake sank that tanker loaded with crude oil, the end result being severe environmental pollution in Manhattan Bay. Put any misperceptions of Snake as some kind of hero behind you. He is a terrorist, and that's that. Raiden, SEAL Team 10 is in. Do we really have no line of communication with the SEALs? They don't know a thing about us. You know we work in the dark, and this mission is no exception. Only a few people know about your presence here. <sighs> There's no need for concern. This operation is under Pentagon's direct command, and the NSDD came from the Vice President and the Secretary of Defense. 
Your mission may be top secret, but it's gone through the usual channels. Colonel, I've located the node, but it's under heavy surveillance. I can't get in any closer. Distract them. Try making some noise to draw their attention away. How? Flatten yourself against a wall and hit the punch button. Got it. Raiden, I see you found a weapon. Why are there weapons here of all places? The big shell is supposed to be just a facility for marine filtration, right? The terrorists probably brought it in with them. Dunno. Looks like it's been here from before them. What are you saying? Raiden, there is no time for armchair theories. Concentrate on the task at hand. Roger that. Raiden, that door is locked. You most likely won't be able to get through. Find another way in. Raiden, that door is controlled by the facility's security system. Unless you have a security card, you won't be able to open the door. Okay, you have the card. You can open the door if you equip the card. However, the door won't open if the card's security level is lower than the door's level. Be careful. The node for strut A is in the center of this floor. Lure the enemies away so you can access the node. Try knocking on the wall a few times. Got one, I see. Don't leave him lying around. Hide the body as soon as possible. When his comrades come back from the roof, you don't want him being found. If they do find him, they'll be on the alert and things can get difficult. When you take a hostile down, hide the body where a patrol is unlikely to come around. The enemies check in with each other on a regular basis. If a man fails to respond, reinforcements are sent in to check out a potential situation. If they find their comrade unconscious or worse, they'll go into high alert. Make sure you hide the body securely out of sight to avoid this. There's a door on the northwest end of this floor. You can get onto the connecting bridge between struts A and B through there. Cross the AB connecting bridge to strut B. The node is on the first floor of strut A. Don't forget to log in. Understood? On the northwest end of the first floor of strut A, there's a door that leads to the AB connecting bridge. Cross the bridge to get to strut B. Hurry. Ride and watch out. There are sentries posted on the connecting bridge. They will spot you if you continue on course. Any recommendations? Use the hanging mode. Hanging? Face any waist-high railing and push the action button to clear the railing and hang over the side. Once there, you can move sideways while keeping out of enemy sight. All right. I'm giving it a try. Don't forget the grip gauge. It will keep decreasing during a hanging maneuver, and once it runs out, you will fall. Copy that. Wait a second. I just intercepted new intelligence on the operation being executed by SEAL Team 10. Intercepted? As I said before, they need to be kept in the dark about our presence. So we just listen in. I'm patching it through. This is Alpha Zero. We have the President. Is he safe? He is safe. What about the package? Tell the guys upstairs that we've secured the package. Easy money. Good work. Your retrieval is on the way. Come on home. Roger that. Holy! Alpha Zero, report. Damn it! Cover the president! Come in, Alpha Zero. This is Alpha Zero. We're under attack. This is crazy! Is that... Alpha Zero, respond. All Alpha, respond. Raiden, the president's life is in danger. Head to strut B now. Raiden, didn't you hear what the SEAL said? The President is in trouble. Head for strut B. Go northwest of the AB connecting bridge you're on to get to strut B. Move. Strut B is to the northwest of strut A. First, make your way to strut A on the double. The President's life is at stake here. Colonel. Huh. They could only be members of SEAL Team 10. How strange. There were signs that there was a gunfight, but no trace of the other shooter. What does it mean? It means that SEAL Team 10 was taken out before they did any damage. That's hard to believe. SEALs are the Navy's best of the best. Hmm. The bullet holes seem to suggest they panicked and fired wildly all around them. What the heck happened? Who knows? It's clear, though, that the President's life is in serious danger. Raiden, hurry! Roger that. Raiden. The President should be somewhere in Strut B where you are now. His life is in danger. Hurry! What about the President? Looks like they took him somewhere else. I see. You said there was a survivor from SEAL Team 10. 
Yeah. Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin. Has he seen your face? What? This is a top secret mission. No one can know that we're involved. It's a little too late for that. Raiden, SEAL Team 10 has engaged someone on the BC Connecting Bridge. The President is most likely there as well. The conflict is just to the north of your current location, at the center of the BC Connecting Bridge. There isn't a second to lose. Head directly to the scene. The BC Connecting Bridge is on the north side of Strut B. The President is in danger. Go now. Don't forget to log into the node in Strut B. The node for Strut B is on the south side of the Transformer Room. It's to the west of where you found the Navy Captain. I see you've acquired a gun. Pliskin gave it to me. Don't trust that man. But the gun itself seems all right. However, it's not equipped with a suppressor. If you fire it, the noise will be loud enough to alert any enemy personnel within hearing distance to your presence. Infiltration is the art of making your presence invisible. Try not to end up in a situation where you need to rely on firepower. Combat must be avoided unless absolutely necessary. Raiden, forget about that guy. I think you should just let him sleep. Return to your duties. Head for the BC Connecting Bridge. Be quick about it. Raiden, what reason could you have to shoot someone while they are sleeping? I can't believe you. And he was on our side, right? I strongly disapprove. Hurry up and return to your duties. A Navy captain and the president. Unbelievable. Raiden, get to the president. Head for the BC Connecting Bridge. Colonel, who are Dead Cell? They are pretty much what that guy Pliskin described them as. A special forces unit? The brainchild of the former president? Chances are someday we'll find ourselves in a gunfight with them. The thought leaves me uneasy. You have experience combating Foxhound during VR training, right? You'll be fine. Don't be apprehensive. Jack, don't run unnecessary risks, okay? Yeah, I don't want to, but... I know. Is there anything I can do? Yeah. Could you check for any data on them for me? Okay, I'll do it. Good luck. That's a transformer board over there. You can open and close the door by pushing the action button when you're in front of the door. Raiden, don't dwell on what Pliskin said. The VR training you underwent is the best training program there is. There is no reason to be apprehensive. Be confident. Do you understand? Colonel, you hear that? The SEAL Team 10 and the President are under attack. Dead Cell? No confirmation of that, but probably. Jack. I... I... This is not time to hesitate. Raiden, go! He's asleep? How much longer is this guy gonna sleep? Wish I were that relaxed. He's still sleeping. Liquid! Huh? Good morning, Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin. Did you sleep well? Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm good. Feeling much better. While I was sleeping just now, did you... Um... Forget it. Jack, are you okay? Rosemary. Jack, tell me you're okay. I'm all right. It was a close one, though. Oh, good. <sighs> I didn't think it would be this tough. Hey. It's the helplessness of it, you know? Just watching with no power to help you. It's like having a ringside seat at a boxing match, but much worse because it's someone I love and the stakes are... Rosemary, maybe this was a miscalculation on my part. Selecting her wasn't the wisest choice. No, no. I apologize for the outburst. I'm all right. I will see this through with you. Rose? We fight together, okay? You have nowhere to run. Neither do I. Rosemary, you're not obligated to continue. You know that. I'm all right, sir. Hmm. Raiden, how about you? I'm good. Then the mission goes on. But Rosemary, there's one thing you need to understand. Sir? His name is Raiden. Got it? Yes, sir. I understand. Colonel, SEAL Team 10's Bravo team was wiped out. I see. What happened to the cargo choppers? Both of them are at the bottom of the harbor. Looks like your new hosts have a Harrier, too. A Harrier? What is this? Calm down. It just means they anticipated the attack. What? Besides, since the SEALs drew their fire, your infiltration went off without a hitch. On top of that, 
We know their defensive capabilities. Are you saying this was all a feint? Raiden, get a hold of yourself. The entire mission is in your hands now. Do you understand? But... There's no time for questions. They could decide to retaliate for that failed assault. You mean the hostages? They could be in danger, yes. But we need to consider the possibility that they'll blow the whole shell. If that toxic spell does take place, it'll devastate not only the harbor, but poison the coastline for generations. <sighs> Raiden, we've had to adjust the mission objectives. The priority is now on removing those C4s that the terrorists wired over the big shell. The President can wait, but this can't. Colonel, you know I'm no bomb disposal expert. That's not a problem. The Bravo team brought an explosives pro in with them. He was supposed to stand by on Strut C according to their mission plan. You should find him there. Is this according to Simulation 2? What are you talking about? Get to Strut C and find him. Understood. But I need to ask you something before I go. Make it quick. Who are they? Dead Cell, I mean. They couldn't hit her no matter how hard they tried. And that vampire, too. It's... it's like... It's like being in a nightmare you can't wake up from. Jack, snap out of it. And you, Rose. I can't believe you're on this mission. I keep thinking I'll wake up. Raiden, this is real. And that's why you won't wake up. But nothing seems real. I've made up my mind to stay with you. Whether this is real or a bad dream, I'll keep watching you till it's over. Thank you, Rose. And I won't let you be just a dream. Are you two done? Raiden, you're needed on Strut C. Raiden, you can see the core of Shell 1 to the east. The connecting bridge, though, has been completely destroyed. There's no way to get to the core from where you are. You'll have to use the EF connecting bridge on the opposite side. It's possible the terrorists will attempt to destroy the big shell in retaliation for the SEAL strike. Defuse the bombs before they make that move. Go to Strut C and locate the bomb disposal expert. Take the BC connecting bridge on the north side of Strut B to get to C. Colonel, do the terrorists have a Harrier? Yes, an AV-8B Harrier II designed for the Marines. It is a VSTOL attack aircraft outfitted with a 25mm gun, air-to-air -air missiles, and anti-ground rockets. It's not something you want to try to take on in a SEAL helicopter. Yeah, even more so if unprotected. Colonel, where do they get such a weapon? I don't know. Are they really just run-of-the-mill terrorists? Relax, Raiden. Right now, just think about your mission at hand. Do you understand? Pliskin, SEAL Team 10's Bravo team's been wiped out. Is that right? Is that all you have to say? I thought they were your comrades. Yeah, too bad. Too bad? Did you know they were used as a decoy to support my infiltration? No, but it doesn't surprise me. Man, you are cold. They were your friends. What do you want me to say? That you killed them? Or do you want me to say it wasn't your fault? Oh, I just... Listen, kid, I don't have time to wet nurse you or provide you with a shoulder to cry on. You got a problem with your conscience, you take care of it. Don't bother me. Pliskin, you seemed pretty focused on the Navy captain. Something catch your eye? Yeah. Remember the handcuffs were cut? There was something on the other end of that. Do you know what it was? Well, I... No. Forget it. What do you mean, forget it? Just what I said. Forget it. I... Talk to you later, kid. Hey, Pliskin, were you really a SEAL? That's what I told you. But... But what? I... Nothing. Listen, kid. You're on a mission. Thinking about anything else can get you killed. The bomb disposal expert is somewhere in Strut C where you currently are. Locate him and request his assistance. Raiden, I doubt that the bomb disposal instructor would be in there. Look someplace else. Raiden, what are you looking at? Oh, I see. Rosemary. What? Could you excuse him for a moment? Huh? You know, so he can... Ah, oh, I get it. Uh... Jack, um, let me know when you're done, okay? Mm-hmm. Raiden, I didn't know you had such weird interests. Not that uh, there's anything wrong with that, though. Just that, well, it's a little weird. Jack, I think that's a little weird. Mm. I can't believe you, Jack. Do you know what that place is? Uh, I just thought maybe the bomb disposal instructor might be in there. Why would he be in there? Well, uh, you never know. He's AWOL, and... Even AWOL, a normal guy, wouldn't go into a woman's bathroom. 
You're the only one I know who would. You're like really strange. Rosemary, settle down. But... It's all right. Righten. Rosemary is right. You should probably look someplace else. I can really sympathize with you there, though. What, sir? Uh, nothing. Ryden, that's that. Return to your duties. Mm-hmm. You guys are unbelievable. A Ryden? Jack, give it a rest. I can't bear watching you do that. I disapprove. Return to your duties. That's what I feel like saying, but I'm beginning to feel like putting you in charge was not such a good idea. Ryden, I'm at a loss for words. I'm afraid to ask. Do you do that in my room, too? Ryden, that's long enough. Hurry up and get back to your duties, if you've seen enough. Jack, in retrospect, I'm really glad that I took this assignment. Huh? It's given me a chance to see you for who you really are. Goodbye. Ryden, what are you doing there? With that? I don't believe it. What are you thinking? And during your duties? I highly disapprove. Even though every one of us is scrambling to do our best to support you, this? And what exactly are you going to do? Drool over pictures of voluptuous girls? Exactly. At least use a picture of me instead. Why? why? I mean... I completely disapprove. Glad to hear Stillman is safe. Assist him in any way possible to clear the C-4 from the structure. Colonel, you know I've never been trained in bomb disposal. It's all right. The man you're working with is the best in the field. All you have to do is follow his directions. You will, of course, keep your identity and mission objectives to yourself. Is it true that an engineer came in with Stillman? I wasn't informed of that. It's probably something the SEALs decided on their own. Hmm. There are more important issues at hand, Ryden. The enemy may retaliate for the failed assault. Get those C-4s neutralized now. Colonel, I'm not qualified for bomb disposal. Jack, it's me. Rose? You can do this. Trust me. You haven't had bomb disposal training per se in VR, but you're more than capable of handling C-4. This is a little different from using C-4. You're up for this. You know that. How about it, kid? Are the results in yet? Stillman is safe as long as he's in there. You worry about defusing those C-4s instead. The connecting bridge to Shell 2 is on the other side of that door. It's inaccessible unless you have a level 3 card. For now, concentrate on neutralizing the C-4s on Shell 1. We'll have to trust that man to take care of Shell 2. The sensor you receive from Stillman visualizes the C-4s detected odor on the radar screen. This means that the radar must be enabled in order for you to take advantage of the sensor. Ryden, log into the node first. Strut A's node is in the north block of the first floor. Strut B's node is to the south of the transformer room. Strut C's node is to the northwest in the corner of the mess hall. Strut D's node is in the east block of the lower section. Strut E's node is in the northeast corner of the first floor. Strut F's node is in a small room in the southwest block of B1. Make doubly sure you stay out of the enemy sight. If the radar goes offline, the sensor is useless. The C4s will become invisible to you again. Ryden, Stillman is an authority on bomb disposal. You need all the advice he can give. His frequency should be 140.25. Ryden, leave the odorless C4 on Strut H to Stillman. Your job is to dispose of the C4s left on Shell 1. Locate every last one. Ryden, I trust that you don't actually believe what that guy Pliskin told you, right? I believe him. There's something about him, like, like an iron will. Enough to trust. Ryden. Hmm. He's not included in the simulation. Don't trust him, ever. You got it? Roger that. Ryden, watch your back. That's a cipher. A type of UAV. If it spots you, it will alert enemy personnel. Exercise extreme caution. But you can use chaff to set up an interference field. That'll knock its sensors offline for a while. Try to locate some chaff. You can also destroy the engine or the camera. Some of the UAVs may be armed. Be careful. Colonel, do you really think they'll blow up the big shell? It's highly possible. We'll have to listen to their demands in full. They are pros. They won't hesitate to take the upper hand if they see an opening. Do you plan on meeting their demands? Absolutely not. Uh. 
You're the only person I can depend on. You must remove the explosives quickly. If the big shell explodes, massive quantities of chlorinated chemicals used in killing marine bacteria will go up in flames along with the crude oil. If that happens, expect a large amount of harmful chemical substances, including dioxins, to be released into the atmosphere. Dioxins are common nomenclature for polychlorinated dibenzodioxin and polychlorinated dibenzofuran. They are organic chloride compounds that are highly acute and toxic and are powerful chemicals that can cause cancer, genetic disorders, and birth defects. On top of that, they do not decompose easily nor dissolve in water, making it easy for them to accumulate within the bodies of living organisms. The environmental impact on the bay and coastal area ecosystem would be unfathomable. Environmental restoration would likely require several generations. That is why we cannot allow them to blow up the big shell. Raiden, you must disarm the C4. Raiden, how is Pliskin doing? Looks like he's doing fine. Stillman said it too. There's something strange about that guy. Don't let your guard down. Understood? Raiden, you can disarm the C4 with the coolant spray. The distance of the spray differs depending on how hard you press the weapon button. When trying to disarm a far-off C4, press the weapon button down hard. Raiden, there seem to be no more C4s in that area. Move on to another area. Raiden, there are Claymore mines planted there for sure. The risk of proceeding is too great. Acquire a mine detector first. Acquire a mine detector. Look on B1 of Strut E like that man just suggested. Acquire a mine detector. Look on the first floor of Strut E like that man just suggested. Acquire a mine detector. Look on Strut F like that man just suggested. Select the mine detector and the mines will show up on the radar. Avoid the mines altogether or pass over them and pick them up while crawling. Make sure you're not spotted by patrols on the second floor of Strut E. The mine detector interfaces with the radar to pinpoint the location of the mines. The first step is to enable the radar. Log into the node in Strut E or F. Pliskin, there are landmines in this area. There should be a mine detector on floor B1 of Strut E. There should be a mine detector on the first floor of Strut E. There should be a mine detector in Strut F. How do you know? Use your head. They can't see those Claymore mines either, even if they did the planting, so they need to keep a mine detector handy. I wouldn't have thought of that. You're right. I don't think they taught you this in all that VR training, but intuition counts for something in battle. Use your wits and senses to detect the danger. Got it? Raiden, at your feet, there's a hatch for pipe or gauge maintenance. Face the hatch and push the action button to open it. There may be something you can use, so check the inside thoroughly. I don't see a lot of adequate cover in that area. There's some cargo on those conveyor belts. That's about it. Good thinking. Raiden, take cover behind the cargo on the conveyor belt. Match your movement to the belts. You won't survive a fall into the sea from that height. Stay away from the edge. Raiden, that's a Harrier too you see over there. That's what shot down the seal chopper? That's right. Unfortunately, the weapons you have at the moment aren't up to the task of neutralizing this plane. Leave it alone for now. Be careful. There are Claymore mines around there. Who is this? Stealth equipped Claymore mines, invisible to the naked eye. Use the mine detector. Identify yourself. Just call me Deep Throat. Deep Throat? You mean from Shadow Moses? Mr. X, then. Mr. X now, is it? Why would it matter if I called you Deep Throat? Never mind about that. Why did you contact me? Let's just say I'm one of your fans. Colonel, someone calling himself Mr. X just contacted me. Do you know anything about it? No, and whoever it was, it wasn't a burst transmission. The transmission was sent from within the big shell. He called himself Deep Throat at first. Do you think... I caught that part too, but the possibility of it being true is none. Gray Fox was the one who used that alias in Shadow Moses, and he's dead. Is it an enemy trap? Could be. Exercise extreme caution. I saw a female soldier. Russian. Must be Olga Gerlukovich. How do you know? Unlike you, I've been briefed. She's not a dead cell? 
No, she commands a Russian private army. They must be the ones patrolling the big shell. That's right. She's led the group ever since her old man, Colonel Gerlukovich, died. Watch yourself with her. She's a tough one. This is Raiden. The C4 found in Strut A has been frozen and disposed of. Explosives were planted in the pump room on the first floor. Raiden reporting. The C4 in Strut B has been disposed of. The wall containing the transformer panel was set to blow. Raiden here. I took care of the C4 in Strut C. The ceiling of the women's bathroom was set to blow. This is Raiden. Disposal of the C4 in Strut D is complete. Explosives were planted on the maintenance hatch. Raiden reporting. All C4 in Strut E has been frozen and disposed of. The baggage moving on the conveyor belt was set to go off. Raiden here. The C4 reported on the roof of Strut E has been taken care of. Explosives were planted on the Harrier 2 stationed on the roof. The back of an enemy soldier was laced with explosives. This is Raiden. I just finished disposing of the C4 in Strut F. Found explosives on B1. <sighs> That's not like him. Anything wrong? Maybe. Pliskin's reported other locations, too, and none of them are effective demolition points. What do you mean? It means that they wouldn't be the best places to choose if you wanted to destroy this place. Are you saying they don't plan on blowing the shell up? It certainly seems that way. So far, we haven't seen anything but a waste of good explosives. Unless, of course, we're missing something. A trap? He couldn't have overlooked the fact that I would be called into this. There's something going on. This is all wrong. This is something only an amateur would do. What do you mean? All the bombs that have been found so far don't appear to be in the right kind of locations. And the quantity of explosives isn't sufficient either. Even Fat Man can make mistakes, right? No, there's something else going on here. Get a move on with the disposal, right? I've got a bad feeling about this. Do you think it's a trap? I don't know, but I'm going to tell Pliskin to watch his back, too. Just hurry. Good work. Only one more left to go. This is Pliskin. Do you read me, Pete? I'm here. What's up? Raiden, you need to hear this, too. I'm listening. I checked out the bottom of Strut H for you, Pete. Wait, what's this about? I asked Pliskin to look around. Knowing Fat Man, I can't shake the feeling that all the bombs so far were just wrong. So did you find anything? Yeah, a hell of a lot of C4s packed into the bottom of the strut. Pete called it right. I knew he had the real thing up his sleeve. So all the other ones were dummies? No, they're a threat, all right. But the detonation wouldn't be enough to destroy the entire shell. But the C4s Pliskin found would inflict serious structural damage. That's not the bad news, either. These are sensor-proof. What? New model, I guess. The ionization sensor can't detect them. The whole thing is sealed tight to prevent vapor leak, and there's no trace of that cologne signature. Pete, looks like he fooled you. Yes. But you managed to find the thing anyway. It was sheer luck. Bombs that are invisible to the sensor? Any ideas, Pete? Are there more out there? I'll go see for myself. You can't move fast enough. He's right. I can try the spray from a distance. Hold on. There's something not right about this one. I can feel it. Well, Pete, should I come back and get you? No, there's no need. Raiden, you have one left to go, correct? Right, except for those scentless ones. How about you, Pliskin? I have two left, not counting this one. Okay, it'll have to be me. I have the level four card that'll get me into Shell 2 in any case. You'll never make it. With that bad leg of yours, they'll spot you for sure. That won't happen. I, I can walk just fine. I can even run. What do you mean? That bomb, five years ago, I messed up. Even with all my experience, I lost it. And a church was lost in the explosion. All those kids playing nearby, too. These past five years, I've lived a lie. Lied? Yes, lied. I didn't lose my leg in the explosion. Uh, so many dead. All because of my mistake. All I could think about was hiding from the crime, shielding myself from the public outcry. I wanted people to be sorry for me, for my weakness. <sighs> I faked being a victim myself because I couldn't bear to face the families of the real victims. This is no prosthetic. I can keep my footing on catwalks and hike over deserts. I lived my life so well I haven't even answered to myself for my sins. It was supposed to be a shield. 
and has become a shroud instead. I've killed my soul by playing the victim. Instead of protecting me, it's made my life even more hellish. What good can that do the victims? I know. I'm a coward. Hey, Pete. God forgive me. I can walk with my own two feet, and I need them to stop Fat Man. His crimes are also mine. One of omission and arrogance. No one should teach the skills I taught him without a clear conscience. This is the only way I can defuse my own sins. I get you, Pete. That one's all yours. You got it, Raiden? I understand. Pete, I've taken care of guards in struts G and H of Shell 2. I wouldn't recommend you go into any of the other struts. I owe you one. I'll get back to freezing the baby bombs, then. You do that too, Raiden. I'm on it. I'll have the radio with me if you need to get in touch. Just don't ask for Peg Leg Peter. He's gone for good. I have the last C4 frozen. There's nothing showing up on the sensor now. Good work, Raiden. You're way ahead of me, kid. I still have one to go. How's your bomb, Peter? It's a bomb, all right. Sealed C4, and in huge quantities. You think there's another one in Shell 1? For sure. Somewhere at the bottom of Strut A. Why are you so certain? If this bottom section of the strut is demolished, Shell 2 will be well on its way to destruction. You mean that Shell 2 will actually sink? Not immediately. There'll still be five struts left. But if Shell 1 loses a strut at the same time, it'll be a very different story. The big shell's structural integrity depends on a very exact balance. If both shells lose a strut each, the whole structure will tear itself apart under its own weight. What do we do? I have a sensor that can locate even those scentless C4s. It makes combined use of a neutron scintillator and a hydrogen bomb detector. You brought that stuff with you? Of course. I made the calibrations while I was in the pantry. Does it work? I just tested it, and it definitely responds. But the best I can do is a sound beacon, not the radar. Sound? The shorter the interval between beacons, the closer the target. I get you. There's another one in that pantry I was in. You can go back and get it. It's all yours, Raiden. I'm going to study it some more and see if the freezing process will work. Don't touch the other one until I say so. Okay. I'll stand by until you radio in. Raiden, go pick up the new sensor Stillman told you about. The one that can detect odorless C4s. Head for the kitchen off Strut C's mess hall. That's the room Stillman was hiding in, and he's left the sensor there for you. Peter, I have sensor B. Good. Head to the bottom of strut A. How's your invisible bomb? I'm looking at it, but I'm keeping my distance. How's Pliskin doing? A few more minutes. I just got to the last strut, but there are a few enemy sentries I have to take care of. Does it look bad, Peter? Maybe. It's an odd one. The detonator hasn't been activated. What? But the sensors are live, which means... This is Pliskin. I've located the last C4. Is that it? I'm about to freeze it. Then... Wait! Pliskin! Damn! That was it! What's going on? The detonator just woke up. It's counting down! What happened? The big ones were rigged to be activated when all the baby C4s went offline. Righton, the one in Shell 1 should be counting down too. Hurry! What's the remaining time? 200 seconds. 200 seconds? 300 seconds. 300 seconds? 400 seconds. 400 seconds? Raiden, move! Get to the bottom of strut A now! Raiden, get to the bottom of strut A ASAP. Engaging the enemy would waste valuable time. Avoid detection at all costs. Raiden, get a move on. Use the elevator on the roof to get down to the bottom of strut A. Raiden, Bliskin, listen carefully. What is it? I fell for it. Fell for what? Fat man has my number. A proximity trigger. Microwave. M microwave With a seven-foot range. It's not a technique I taught him. Neither was that multi-bomb booby trap. Looks like he's far surpassed me as far as explosives technique goes. As for the rest... Pete, get the hell out of there! There's less than 30 seconds left. It's too late. No! Pliskin, get away from Strut H as fast as you can. Pete! Right! Keep your distance. Use the spray from as far away as possible. Me? You can do it. I know that. I'm not so sure. But I am. 
do it. I know you can. Raiden, there's a C4 somewhere on the bottom of Strut A where you are. Select Sensor B and get to work. There's nothing here. Nothing here either. Colonel, the sensor's picking up something. It must be somewhere nearby. We're running out of time. Locate the bomb as quickly as you can. Raiden, look at the underside of that submersible. That's a C4. Freeze it down right now. Colonel, Stillman is dead. I know. Pull yourself together, Raiden. I can't. I can't do this alone. Jack, are you listening? All right, calm down. Stillman is dead. There are no more explosive specialists. You're fine. I won't let you die. Rose. All right, then. Is Sensor B equipped? Yes. See if it responds or not. Jack, no matter what, you have to bring an end to this crisis. Okay. Colonel, how far reaching was the explosion? We are currently surveying minute details. How about Pliskin? I don't know. I hope he's okay. Raiden, if you have enough time to worry about that guy, then get back to bomb disposal. Do you understand? If the C-4 explodes and the big shell is destroyed, the damage to the environment will be catastrophic. Raiden, disarm all of those C-4 charges. Raiden, stay on your toes. The unscented C-4 charges are still out there. You probably missed the ones at the bottom of Strut A. Head for the bottom of Strut A. Colonel, I've neutralized the bomb. Good work, Raiden. It was a great loss for everyone. Yes, it was. Colonel, any damage report on the explosion? Seems that the duct for diverting the contaminated seawater was destroyed, and the central section of Shell 2 is flooding. The explosions ignited the oil slick on the surface. What about the toxins? The chemicals stayed in containment. There's no immediate danger. Is the big shell stable? Shell 1 was unaffected. The price was high, but the threat of the bomb is over for now. What's the next objective? Rescue the President. Get back to the upper level. Roger that. Raiden, the terrorists have retaliated for our bomb neutralization. What? A hostage has been killed, shot in the head. They shot one of them on the roof, just to make sure we caught it. One of our satellites caught it clear as day. Damn. They announced they would kill one every hour from now on. What are my orders? What should I do? Stay with your mission objective. Rescue the President. What about the other hostages? President Johnson is your first priority. Priority my butt! They're all in danger! Jack, be reasonable. I know what you're feeling, but you can't save them all. No, not by myself. Are you expecting that Pliskin to come through? Well... Looks like he's turned his radio off, too. I can't complete this mission by myself. That man was not included in the simulation. He is not a factor in this mission. What do you mean by that, Colonel? Your mission must remain a solo effort. What about the SEALs? No second attempt? They haven't even gotten to planning that. All we can do is wait. In the meantime, you're our only hope. I understand. Raiden, go and rescue the President. You can start off by getting to the upper level of Strut A. Raiden, all the bombs have been defused. The President's safe return is now top priority. First, take the elevator to the upper section of Strut A. What is she, a witch? For some reason, I can't hit her. I don't understand. She's obviously impervious to attack. What are my options? Disengage her and get out. The elevator is still upstairs. My retreat's been cut off. Hang on until the elevator comes down again. Your weapons can't hurt her, and you need to stay alive. Use whatever cover you can find and invade her. Fortune's railgun packs some power. A direct hit will kill you. Do not present her with a target under any condition. Stay behind cover. Don't even think about attempting melee combat. Keep your distance and evade her attacks. Just buy some time until the elevator arrives. Raiden, it's no use. That door is jammed shut with rubble. There's no way out. You're going to have to manage. Raiden, Fat Man just contacted us directly. Fat Man called us? Yes. Looks like he placed a bomb on the heliport. He specifically asked for you, Raiden. What? He's killed off Peter. Now he's after you. Why me? How should I know? Look, this is really not a good time for this. The countdown's already begun, Raiden. Great. 
How much time do I have left? I'll show you the count. 200 seconds remaining. 300 seconds remaining. 400 seconds remaining. 500 seconds remaining. So he's planning on taking this place out. It looks like he has a different agenda from that of Dead Cell. What about backup? None. There's no time. Which type of explosives is it? He didn't say. Colonel, what about Fat Man's bomb? It's counting down. I'm running out of time myself over here. Jack, the elevator started moving down. It should be there soon. Please, just hang on until it does. Raiden, the elevator should be down there any moment. Just stay out of her reach until then. The clock is ticking, Raiden. Get to the heliport on the roof of Strut E. Raiden, Rose did a bit of research on Fortune's weapon. The big rifle that she carries appears to be a personal rail gun. Rail gun? Yes, an electromagnetic gun that fires bullets with magnetic force. As a movable conductor, it uses plasma electrons to boost acceleration capabilities. The kinetic energy of the ammunition is approximately 10 megajoules. Incidentally, that of a 140 millimeter smooth bore gun ammunition is 20 megajoules. I can't believe something like that even exists. It's not available, though. What she has is only a prototype. That thing sure doesn't sound like a prototype. Problems with the rail plasma and inner rail electromagnetic release have yet to be solved. Evaluations exist that criticize it as unacceptable as a field weapon because of the high risk of accidental discharge. But hers doesn't? Most likely, probably because she's lucky. Unbelievable. Either way, it's a weapon that she alone can wield, that's for sure. Yeah, and a weapon that's uncontrollable, too. Be very careful, Jack. Raiden, I expect your encounter with Fatman will involve combat. There isn't a lot of time, but if you're not happy with your equipment, now is the time to get everything ready. Raiden, there should be a C-4 planted somewhere on the heliport. Located ASAP. If it detonates, we're finished. Fat Man will plant the C4s, then activate the timer. Once the timer is online, the countdown begins. Detonation takes place at the zero count. If that happens, the mission fails. When you see him push the timer button, use the coolant spray to freeze the C4 before the countdown ends. Once he plants a C4, get to it and freeze it down before he can detonate it. Raiden, do you see those blinking lights on Fat Man's bombs? The lights go from blinking green to yellow to red over time. They finish up as rapidly blinking red. Look at the lights and diffuse the bombs according to the degree of urgency. The countdown timer will tell you how long you have until the C4s detonate. When the count goes to zero, the C4 will blow and we will be finished. Diffuse the bombs before that can happen. Raiden, Fat Man's activated the C4's timer. It will explode when the count reaches zero. Freeze it down now! Raiden, as you can see, Fat Man is wearing a blast suit. A blast suit? It's protective clothing worn for bomb disposal work. Gunfire can't really penetrate that thing either. You can do very little damage through the suit. Use the first person view to go for the head. The suit will protect him completely from your shots. Use the first person view to go for the head. There's a long lag between the time he falls down to the point where he manages to get up. His guard will be completely down. Push the advantage and go for a headshot. The blast suit can't protect him from the impact of the shot itself. A series of rapid fire will knock him off balance and create an opportunity for attack. Use it. You can also anticipate Fat Man's course and plant a claymore in his path. Raiden, you're completely defenseless while hanging. If he manages to knock you off that ledge, you wouldn't survive the fall. Keep that in mind. Bombs are not the only weapons Fat Man has. He's also carrying a machine pistol, and he'll use it if you offer yourself up as a target. Stay hidden. Fat Man moves around on inline skates. Shoot at the skates and you may be able to stop him. Go to first person view and aim for his feet. Fat Man is wearing a bomb blast suit. It is worn when disarming explosives and protects its wearer from the blast, heat, and shards. Essentially, it resembles a bulletproof vest made out of special material. The front of the head and body are guarded by a laminated ballistic insert. The back, too, is guarded with a protector to ease the impact on the spine from a fall after a blast. Attacks to his torso will likely have little effect. 
At first, it might look to be cumbersome, but in fact, it is made to be extremely flexible so as not to hinder bomb disposal. One could even do apparatus gymnastics, like the pommel horse or parallel bars in it. The problem is that it is poorly ventilated, and having it on for long periods of time runs the risk of leaving its wearer mildly overheated. However, the suit is equipped with a cooling system like a spacesuit, in which the coolant is run through inner suit tubes. He will not likely overheat in the suit. With those configurations, however, the total weight of the suit should exceed 50 kilograms. That's too heavy for skating around. An impact might easily make him lose his balance, and he'll fall down. Shooting a part of the suit with a gun will do minimal damage at best. Aim for exposed areas of his head. If he falls down, when he tries to get up, is your best chance. Fat Man carries a Glock 18, a fully automatic version of the Glock 17 pistol. It can fire 29 mm bullets per second. Getting caught in its line of fire is extremely dangerous. Weren't machine pistols originally used for VIP security assignments, though, in order to stop terrorists? Correct. As portable weapons with major firepower. That he would have such a gun and use it with only one hand. Don't forget, he's a member of Dead Cell. Mm. What's more, he walks around wearing that suit. He must have a lot of faith in his own strength. Don't engage him in a firefight from the front. Attack him when he reloads. Raiden, Fat Man may be dead, but don't relax just yet. There are still bombs set by him remaining. Dispose of all the bombs. Colonel, where's that bomb? We have no information on that. Sweep the area. Hurry, Jack. The bomb has to be somewhere on the heliport. Use whatever means necessary to locate it. Raiden, have you located the bomb yet? No, not yet. Hurry, Jack. We don't have a lot of time left. He wouldn't have had the time to find a good hiding place. It must be somewhere near him. Take a closer look. Raiden, the bomb? Nothing yet. Where is that damn thing? We're running out of time. Have you checked under Fat Man's body? What? Of course not. It can't be there. You don't know that. Okay, what evidence do you have that it's there? Just a hunch, all right? Look, Rose, I know what I'm doing, and this is my life on the line. You don't have any experience in this type of work, so just... <sighs> Raiden, don't turn down a good suggestion when you hear one. Check it out. Raiden, let's get back to the task of rescuing the president. Head to the core of Shell One and investigate the area. Jack. Uh, what? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All right, all right. The bomb was where you guessed it would be. You were right, and you saved my butt. As long as you realize that. I was pretty surprised, though. I never expected to find it where I did. <laughs> you must think I'm pretty clueless, huh? Of course not. And I have a pretty healthy respect for the woman's intuition thing now. That is such a sexist thing to say, you know that? Come on, don't be mad. I apologized already. <laughs> don't sweat it. I'm just messing with you. I want you to recognize that I can help you through this thing and that I care about you. Rose? Hang in there, okay? Good work, Raiden. Looks like all the bombs are neutralized. One of their main leverages is now gone. That leaves. Colonel, Fat Man didn't seem to know about the ransom demands. Intentionally kept in the dark, I'd say. He seemed to be coming from a very different place from the other terrorists. Hmm. Raiden, a lot of hostages, our president included, are still in danger. Keep your mind focused on protecting them. <sighs> what are my orders? Rescue the president. We have no idea where he is. You haven't been in the Central Core yet. I suggest you start there. Wait, I have another call. Want me to take it? No, I'll go offline. Best to keep our presence unknown. How you doing, kid? Pliskin, is everything all right? Could be better. Looks like I was out cold for a while. How did you manage to stay alive? Had a little help from a friend. Friend? What about the bomb? Diffused. And Fat Man, too. That's good news. How Shell, too? It's a mess. The bomb crippled H Strut. What about the toxins? The what? If the big shell blows up, the explosion is expected to produce massive amounts of toxins. Never heard anything about that. Huh? Well, looks like there's not much danger of that in any case. But the central core is starting to flood. It won't last much longer. Well, what about the president and the other hostages? They weren't in Shell 2. They must be in Shell 1. We need to get the hostages out of here now. It's too far from Manhattan for a swim. What about the lifeboats? 
There doesn't seem to be any. Doesn't make sense. So a chopper is our only extraction? Right. And it comes with a passenger limit. Intel has it that there are about 30 hostages. It'd take more than a single trip. We'll have to come back. Can you pilot a chopper? No, but I brought a gearhead with me. He's a good guy. I'll introduce you later. Pliskin, I'm on the heliport right now, but I don't see their Harrier. It's out somewhere. We better move now, then. Our chances with a Harrier after us are close to nothing. Do you know where the President is? No, that one's all yours. The President is at the top of our rescue list. These are our orders, Lieutenant J.G. Your orders, not mine. What? See you later. This is safer, I think. Safe from what? Eavesdropping, of course. All right. Why did you contact me? I've been ordered to give you backup, including the relaying of necessary intel. Ordered by whom? Why won't you identify yourself? There is no need for you to know. I'll decide whether I need to know. You are not yet trusted to make such decisions. <sighs> I'll tell you something you do need to know instead. The current location of the President. What? Or rather, the person who knows the current location of the President. Who is it? A Secret Service agent named Ames, currently being held with other hostages. Secret Service, huh? The head of the President's security detail, Ames has been fitted with the same type of VIP nanomachine system as the President. If you are within range, you should be able to communicate. Why are you telling me this? Do I need to repeat myself? There's no reason for me to believe any of this. You understand that? Of course, but you also have no choice but to believe. <sighs> Do you have any other leads? Where are those hostages? <laughs> I suggest you hurry. They have a nuke on their side. The nuke? They have a nuclear weapon with them? You didn't find their continuing presence here unusual? Even with the President as hostage, this is an island, and they have no visible means of escape. Even if they do have a nuke, the warhead is no good without an access code. The security lockout can't be bypassed. They don't need to. They have the code. Why did they have to bring the football along? To a decontamination plant of all places. But they did have to. Because, after all, the big shell is the farthest thing from a cleanup plant there is. What? Dead Cell didn't have to bring a nuke along with them. It was right here to begin with. Nothing in this affair is what it seems. A cover-up? But why? For what? For Metal Gear that is housed here. Colonel, who was that man just now? He's not one of ours. No, we have no one like that in our unit. He said that the Big Shell was housing a new model of Metal Gear. First I've heard of it. Colonel, what are you not telling me? I've been completely open with you, Raiden. I've told you everything. Is that everything you know, or everything I need to know? Snap out of it, Raiden. <sighs> I'll have the Metal Gear rumor looked into. You need to make contact with this Ames. So you believe that, Ninja? Since we have no leads on the President's current location, we have no other alternatives. Right now, collect as much data as you can, including anything on Metal Gear. Are those my orders? Yes, they are. Disguise yourself as an enemy soldier and infiltrate the Shell One Corps. Understood. Raiden, make contact with Ames and find out where the President is. Our information indicates that Ames is being held in the B-1 level of Shell 1's core. Head for the core of Shell 1. Ames is most likely being held with other hostages. Sure, but I don't even know what Ames looks like. Use the directional microphone to distinguish Ames from the other hostages. It's the only way. According to our information, Ames has a pacemaker. This should make his cardiac pattern fairly distinct. Use the directional microphone to locate it. You have the directional microphone. According to our information, Ames has a pacemaker. This should make his cardiac pattern fairly distinct. Use the directional microphone to locate it. Isn't the directional microphone supposed to be somewhere in the core of Shell 1? Shell 1's core has extremely tight security. Impersonate an enemy personnel to infiltrate the section. For a proper disguise, select the enemy field uniform you receive from the ninja. This will allow you to blend in but you still need one more thing. It will look suspicious if you're not carrying the standard equipment. All personnel in the Corps are equipped with AK-74Us. Select your own AK when you're in disguise. Find yourself an AK. 
You have a level 2 card in your possession. Go and search the warehouse in strut F. Pliskin, do you read me? What's up, Raiden? I just ran into a guy decked out like a, a ninja. A ninja? Yeah. Do you know anything about this? No. Can you trust that costumed freak? I don't know. But the colonel told me to follow the guy's instructions. And like a good soldier, you'll do it, right? I'll let you in on a little secret, kid. The ninja that was publicized in the Shadow Moses incident no longer exists. The guy you met has no connection whatsoever with the incident. And how do you know that? Because I do. Huh? Just be careful who you trust, okay? Pliskin, do you know anything about a Secret Service agent named Ames? Ames? You've heard of him? Uh, no. Listen. If you know anything... No, I got the name mixed up with someone else. Forget it. Colonel, Pliskin wasn't killed. You look happy, Jack. Yeah. Raiden, don't trust him. What? Don't you think it's suspicious that he alone came out unscathed? Things don't add up. Hmm. Raiden, don't put any faith in that guy. You will carry out your mission alone. Do you understand? Raiden, make contact with Ames. Colonel. Should I really believe what he says? The fact is that there is no other option, unfortunately for us. I'll understand once I go to see him then, right? Colonel, the story's about a metal gear within the big shell? That is still being looked into. Sorry, Jack. And stories that the big shell is just a cover. Well, every record I've looked through only ever has it as a legitimate offshore decontamination facility. On paper, it's clean. So you're saying that we have no choice but to talk to Ames or whoever else? Raiden, the corridor is too narrow. You'll have absolutely no cover, and there are multiple surveillance cameras in place. None of the usual infiltration methods will fly in this situation. Disguise yourself as a terrorist instead, and don't forget to select the AK. I see an elevator over there. You'll be able to travel from floor to floor now. Push the action button in front of the panel you see next to the elevator. The elevator should arrive in a few minutes. The enemies will stop all elevators during an alert mode to prevent intruders, in other words, you, from moving out of the area. Which means that you'll need to shake off pursuit before getting on the elevator. Remember that. That elevator is a cut above the usual. Do you see that strange-looking surveillance camera above the panel? Yeah. It's not responding when I enter its field of vision. What is it? The camera apparently goes online only when someone activates the panel. In other words, it's there to check on the person trying to use the elevator. If you're not disguised as a terrorist, you'll be spotted as soon as you call the elevator. That elevator is designed to conduct a camera check whenever someone activates the panel. Disguise yourself as one of the enemy's own whenever you need to use that elevator. Push the action button in front of the panel to activate it. If you intend to use the elevator, Raiden, refrain from using chaff on that floor. Elevators on that floor are designed to conduct a camera check whenever someone activates the panel. Interfering with the camera would prevent that check system from functioning, and as a result, you'll stay locked out of the elevator. You'll have to disguise yourself and activate the panel if you need to use the elevator. Select the enemy's field uniform. Raiden, that's the biometrics-enabled door that the ninja was talking about. The security system consists of a retinal scanner. You'll have to bring one of the enemy personnel to the scanner to get through that door. Raiden, if you need to get past the biometric security system, you need to bring one of the enemies to the retinal scanner. How do I do that? Put an enemy sentry in a chokehold, then drag him over to the retinal scanner. Come up behind an enemy without any weapon selected, then press the weapon button to put him in a chokehold. If you preemptively destroy the enemy's radio before you take him to the scanner, you can prevent him from calling for help in case he manages to get away. The sentries carry their radio behind their right hip. Use the first-person view to take it out. Raiden, the retinal scanner does not work on anything but living and open eyes. Don't knock the man out, either. Be careful. Retinal scanners are taken offline in alert mode. If you are spotted, you need to shake off pursuit completely first. Raiden, I don't need to remind you that the retinal scanner checks every input against a database of the enemy's own men. As if your own retinal pattern will do any good. You really need to bring a terrorist over to the scanner. So you need to take a live one to the retinal scanner? Why don't you put one in a chokehold and drag him over to the sensor? Colonel, 
What's this door? I don't know. It's huge. What the hell is it? It's not in our intel. Raiden, we have no way at the moment to open that door. Leave it alone and proceed with the mission. Understood? Hmm, there's a desk that stands out. It's awfully customized. What kind of dork brings all this stuff to work? Must be a super freak. Even the most successful disguise can't protect you if you decide to blow your own cover by attacking the enemy. Do not engage the enemy while you are in disguise. Raiden, don't act in any way that will excite the enemy's suspicion. A perfect disguise can be ruined by a single odd behavior. Be careful. If you make physical contact with the enemy while in disguise, the disguise will be deselected. Keep that in mind. That uniform's probably not even close to your size. Yeah, to tell you the truth, it feels pretty tight. It's probably a better fit for Rosemary here than you. Excuse me? A, a colonel? Just an observation. Let's get back to the mission, shall we? That was inappropriate. That enemy field uniform seems to be much too small for you. Any vigorous activity could force the uniform to be deselected. Be cautious. Looks like there's a lot of stuff laying about. Make sure not to scatter it around. The enemy will increase their security if they discover anything out of place. Don't worry. I'm used to cleaning things up. Rose's room is... Jack, don't say any more. Fine. Oh, uh, anyway. The key element of covert operations is not to leave anything behind. Understand? What's that bird? Parrot, isn't it? Probably a large budgie. Parakeets get used to humans easily and are talkative, so they are real playful and fun. Hurts when they bite, though, and keeping their cage clean is quite a task. Having one isn't all fun and games. You sure know a lot about parakeets. I had my own once. I didn't know that. I never mentioned it? No. This is the first time. Really? Yeah. There's probably a lot of other things that I don't know about you yet. Yeah, actually, well, there's a lot more. Rose? Jack? What? After this mission is over, let's talk about lots of things. Yeah, let's. Good luck. That area is the hall. Looks like there's going to be a presidential welcome reception. You mean we're going to come flying in and crash that party? Raiden, make contact with Ames and obtain information about the president. You're in the Shell 1 core now. Ames is being held on B-1. Head for B-1. You're on B-1 of the Shell 1 core now. Ames is being held in the hall. To get in the hall, you'll have to get through a door protected by a retinal scanner security system. Raiden, get past the retinal scanner and infiltrate the hall. Raiden. Your disguise can't fool the enemy when they're in alert mode. Don't even think about using the disguise during alert mode. Focus on escaping from them. Raiden, one of those hostages in there is Ames. The only thing we know is that Ames wears a pacemaker. His heartbeat should sound different from other people's, so use the directional microphone to locate him. Once you recognize Ames by his heartbeat, keep the microphone pointed toward him. Then push the action button and call out to him. If it really is Ames, he should respond in some way. What if it's the wrong person? The guards may get suspicious and come running instead. Security could get tighter, too. Try to be sure before you take the risk. Don't call out to a hostage with the action button until you're fairly sure that it's Ames. If you do make a mistake, switch the microphone for an AK and get out of there before a guard gets suspicious. You don't have a directional microphone, however. Find one first. The microphone is the only hope of identifying Ames among all the other hostages. The directional microphone should be somewhere in the core of Shell 1. Have you searched B2 of the core? Once you have the directional microphone selected, the screen will switch to first-person view. Point the microphone toward the hostages with the left stick. This is how you listen to the hostages' heartbeats. Listen carefully to pick up the sound of the pacemaker. When you're sure that you have aims, keep the microphone pointed in the same direction, then push the action button to call his name. Don't randomly call out to people. You'll only draw unwelcome attention to yourself. Another thing, whenever you have the directional microphone selected, you won't be able to move. If the enemy see you with the directional microphone, they'll naturally be suspicious. I suggest you wait until the guards are out of sight before selecting the directional microphone. If someone does get suspicious, switch the directional microphone for the AK immediately. It's all over if you're caught in the act. 
Raiden, retain your cover at all costs inside that conference hall. There's only one way in and out of the area. If you're discovered inside, they'll cut off your retreat and call in the reinforcements. You won't make it out of the room. The mission will be over if you're discovered. Don your disguise and look for aims while deflecting the enemy's suspicion. Raiden, it looks like the guards in charge of the hostages are in regular contact with other terrorists. Even a temporary measure against a guard will disrupt communications and alert the enemy to your presence. Refrain from knocking any guards out inside this area. I shouldn't have to tell you this, Raiden, but for the record, you are forbidden to harm any of the hostages. You wouldn't do a thing like that anyway, right? The guards are keeping watch over the hostages. If something happens to even one of them, they'll realize that an intruder is in the room. That place is a death trap if you're unmasked and surrounded. Do not, I repeat, do not harm the hostages in any way. Raiden, you appear to be enjoying yourself slapping around defenseless hostages. I can't believe you. I didn't think you were the kind of person to do such a thing. Good thing you saw him for what he really was, huh, Rosemary? Yeah, I don't know this person anymore. Goodbye. Raiden, what are you doing? You forget yourself. I can't believe you. What's wrong with you? I highly disapprove. Uh, well, um, I'm just... What do you mean, I'm just? Rosemary, you're right. One shouldn't stoop to vulgar levels just because they've set foot on the battlefield. But I can sympathize with you there. You what? Ah, uh, nothing. How twisted, the both of you. Jack, what the hell are you doing? You are sick, you know? Rosemary. Colonel, was I wrong in what I did? Perhaps. There are certain things that a person can and can't do. Yeah, maybe you're right. Do you understand? Yes. Come out of this thing alive, both for yourself and so as not to waste your training. No need to tell me that, Colonel. Right. And I recommend you not throw away that picture. Colonel? What? Uh, you're not joking. Huh. I I are you? Continue your duties. Understood. Uh, yes, sir. The guards in charge of the hostages are in regular contact with other terrorists. If regular contact is cut off, that means they would discover your presence. There's no way you can survive if you are surrounded by the enemy in that area. Do not destroy enemy radios or use your chaff to interfere with their regular contact. Got it? Are you on? Right here. Do you really know where the president is? Almost certainly. He was moved to the first floor of Shell 2's core section. The first floor, the core of Shell 2. Is he still there? I don't know. I can't get a response. You don't think he's been like the other hostages? Hmm? A hostage was killed in retaliation after the SEAL-10 disaster, remember? What are you talking about? Hmm. Regardless of what they do to other hostages, they won't touch the president. What makes you so sure? The case. You mean the nuclear button they took? Right. And the case won't do a thing by itself. That case may be the single most advanced example of a weapons failsafe system. The password is nothing less than the physiological data of the U.S. president. Physiological data? The president's own vital signs, heartbeat, brainwave pattern, blood pressure and so on, are constantly monitored and relayed by his internal nanomachines. This information, along with the DNA pattern, serve as a biometric password, unbreakable even by the latest parallel processor supercomputers. The password entry itself cannot be performed unless brainwave patterns and heartbeats fall within normal parameters, rendering chemical and other forms of coercion impractical. In other words, the login must be made of the president's own free will. As a failsafe, the input must also be reconfirmed hourly, even after the initial login. If a valid confirmation is not forthcoming, the system will automatically cancel the login. And that's why they can't harm the president. At least until the bird flies. Is there really a new model of Metal Gear here? Absolutely. The black case serves as the launched key to Metal Gear as well. Why would they hide Metal Gear in an offshore plant? <sighs> Haven't they told you anything? <sighs> the entire thing was planned. The oil spill, the tanker accident that caused it, everything. The big shell was built specifically for the development of a new Metal Gear model. The inspection tour was to check its progress. What's going on around here? Wait. Anyway, what did you manage to catch? They said password input was complete. I thought so. 
You said the password entry into the black case had to be made by the president willingly. That's right. So this means the president is cooperating with them. It would have to be, yes. Why? Probably tired of being a puppet, but it wasn't a smart move to betray us. A puppet? We're running out of time. They will fire a nuke. You know what you need to do before then. Fire the nuke? But it's nowhere close to the ransom deadline. Ransom? Thirty billion dollars in cash. What are you babbling about? The nuclear strike is not a threat. It's been the objective all along. They plan to slaughter millions of people. No, a high-altitude detonation. You've heard of the Compton effect? Total disruption of electronic equipment caused by EMMA pulse. Textbook answer. Well, when an average nuclear warhead goes off within the atmosphere, the result is an electromagnetic pulse of up to 50 billion megawatts. The EMMA field can reach tens of thousands of volts per meter, and most electronic equipment will be toast in an instant. If one of the key movers of world economy stops functioning, it could mean the beginning of a global depression. But that isn't their aim. What they plan to do is liberate Manhattan, pull it offline and turn it into some kind of a republic. Hence, Sons of Liberty, I suppose. Sons of Liberty? Damn! Ocelot is coming. I'm going offline. Raiden, put on the enemy's uniform. Ocelot is headed your way. Don't forget to select the AK as well. Colonel, Ames is dead. Looked like a heart attack. Hmm, that's unfortunate. However, we do at least know where the President is. So there really is a new type of Metal Gear in this place? Apparently. We're still looking into it. I've also been told that the nuclear strike was what the terrorists were after from the start, not the 30 billion dollars. Cry. It was a cover-up all along. Colonel, what are you keeping from me? I am not keeping back anything. It's not as though I'm told all the facts either. I'm pulling in all the favors I can to look into all this. Just be a little patient. Our priority should be with the President right now. We can take it that they've completed the password entry and are preparing Metal Gear for nuclear strike. Get to the President as soon as possible. But the President is cooperating with them. According to Ames, yes. But it's also true that they're about to get rid of the President. There's something else going on here, and the President may be able to tell you what it is when you see him in person. Ah. Once they get the confirmation for nuclear launch, they'll do it. You need to rescue the President before then. Jack, I agree with the Colonel. You need to protect the President for now. All right. The retinal scanner appears to be broken. You won't be able to get through to the conference hall anymore. Keep going. Raiden, this is not good. Enemies in Shell 1 are systematically searching for you. It looks like they've tightened security considerably. Watch yourself. Get out of Shell 1. According to Ames, the President is on the first floor of Shell 2's core. Cross the connecting bridge from the north side of Strut D to get to Shell 2. That's where you need to go. Looks like you've lost your balaclava, Raiden. You'll no longer be able to impersonate enemy personnel. Colonel. Apparently, Ames didn't even know that the hostages were killed in retaliation for SEAL Team 10's incursion. Yeah, the hostages were probably in a different room. Hmm. Raiden, focus on your duties. For right now, concentrate on rescuing the President. Head for the first floor of Shell 2's core. Colonel, I saw the terrorist leader. Is that Solid Snake? Yes, he's the terrorist who sunk the tanker two years ago. Hmm. Raiden, do you think he's some kind of hero? You heard him, right? Solid Snake is a terrorist. You must fight him. Do you understand? Raiden, rescue the President. Head for the first floor of the Shell 2 Corps. Colonel, is the President one of them? Ames said that the President entered the code with his own free will. But you heard how they are planning to get rid of the President, right? Yeah. They are going their separate ways? No. First off, the President is not necessarily extra baggage for the terrorists. Hmm. If you have your doubts, you should address them when you meet him. Roger that. Colonel, the outer heaven that Snake mentioned? Ah, yes. It is a despotic military state, built by a guy called Big Boss, the greatest soldier in history, and Snake's father, genetically speaking. He tried to restart it? I don't know, but word has it that his brother Liquid Snake hoped for an outer heaven also. It might have had some special significance for the two brothers. 
If they caused a nuclear explosion over Manhattan, there would be serious repercussions. Blast energy from a high-altitude nuclear detonation is released mostly as gamma rays. This would emit a strong electromagnetic pulse through a secondary reaction within the ambient atmosphere. The pulse itself would last for a mere 500 nanoseconds, but in terms of power emitted, it would instantaneously release 500 billion megawatts. This electromagnetic pulse would cause a high voltage surge through antennas and cable frying all circuits. Scalar waves from a nuclear explosion have a higher degree of penetration than normal electromagnetic waves. Civilian electromagnetic protection devices would be useless. The area affected would likely range over several thousand kilometers. All electronic devices within New York would probably be rendered completely useless. If something like this happened, panic on a worldwide scale would be unavoidable. The feasibility of using an EMP blast from a nuclear weapon as an attack has been researched for decades. The Starfish Project, carried out on Johnston Island in the South Pacific in 1962, is one example. Wasn't that to study the effects of high-altitude nuclear detonation on radios and radars? Ostensibly, yes. Electromagnetic weapon development had already begun prior to that since the time of Project Argus. Now they're trying to use it for real? Aimed at the heart of our nation. We can't let them detonate the core. Hurry, Raiden. That ninja helped me again. Do you have any information on him? Sorry, I've looked around, but nothing. I don't know what he wants, but he is trying to help you, that much is certain. Don't let your guard down, though. Raiden, can you hear me? Pliskin, where have you been? Checking around. I'm in Strut H right now. How's the situation over there? We have a lead on the President's location. Where is he? Shell 2 Core, the first floor. I'm cut off from the core where I am. It's a mess here. All right, I'm on my way to Shell 2 right now. There are IR sensors in place on the connecting bridge between shells 1 and 2. If you break the beams, the Semtex will go off. Yeah, I heard them talking about that. Target the control units and destroy them. Make sure you don't shoot the Semtex. What do the control units look like? Take a look with your binoculars. Raiden, I found us a ride. I'm all ears. One of the enemy's Kasatkas. Is it in good shape? Full tank. I'm heading for shell 1 now. What about that Harrier? It's not on the heliport here. Good. I'll set this one down there, then. Can you cover the hostages? They're being held on level B1 in the core. Pliskin, you didn't happen to find any other places where hostages were being held, did you? No, nothing like that. Okay. How many hostages are there? There's a few short of 30. One dead and several wounded. The Kasatka's cargo area will hold 13 max. What about the other Kasatka? I sabotaged it. It can't come after us if it can't get off the ground. Oh. We'll have to make two trips. Can you fly a Kasatka? I have a pilot who's flown the civilian model, the Ka-62 in VR. There's not a whole lot of difference between the military Ka-60 and the civilian model. Cleared for takeoff. Raiden, let me introduce you to my partner, Otacon. Otacon? Hey, Raiden. Nice to meet you. Intruders! Over here! Damn! Raiden, I'll talk to you later. Colonel, I need some answers from you. Who exactly is Pliskin and his partner? I know what you're thinking. It keeps coming back to Shadow Moses. And now this Otacon. A.K.A. Hal Emmerich, Ph.D., a Shadow Moses survivor. Rose? Snake and Otacon both became fugitives after Shadow Moses, wanted for acts of terrorism. An anti-Metal Gear organization. They sabotaged and destroyed countless Metal Gear units throughout the world. And were responsible for the incident two years ago that necessitated the construction of the Big Shell. Snake and his partner aren't terrorists. Jack, why are you defending them? I look back on what I've done here so far, and things like training and sense of duty alone won't get you through a sneaking mission like this. Jack, are you okay? You need something higher. I can't think of the right word, but it has to be pure will, backed up by by courage, or ideals, or, or something like that. I'd stake my life on it. The solid snake that saved Shadow Moses couldn't turn into a terrorist. Maybe that's true. But they went down with that tanker two years ago. We even recovered Snake's body. And the DNA test results on the body say it's him. Jack, I know what you're saying, but Snake is dead. He can't be here. Not even as this Dr. Hal Emmerich. But that also means that he can't be the terrorist leader behind this thing. 
Don't try to shoot out control units with a handgun when the distance is too great. The weapon doesn't have that kind of range. Use the sniper rifle. Use the PSG-1 to take out those control units. I saw a PSG-1 in the storage room on strut F. There should be one left, so go and grab it. In order to get to Shell 2, you'll have to disable the IR sensors on the connecting bridge between Shells 1 and 2. Use your PSG-1 to take out the IR sensors control units. Head to the connecting bridge between Shells 1 and 2. Looks like some of those control units can't be reached except with a handgun. If you can't take out a control unit with the sniper rifle, just try the handgun instead. If some pipe or a storage tank gets between you and the control unit, find another vantage point. There will always be a spot that gives you a clear shot. Raiden, you didn't get all the control units. You weren't thorough enough. Wait, there were a lot of birds around there, right? There may be control units hidden behind the birds. Fire a few shots around them and get the birds to move. I remember seeing a flag there. It kept whipping in different directions as the wind changed. Take a careful look behind the flag, and you should see a control unit. You could shoot the control unit through the flag, but I wouldn't recommend it. There's a hunk of Semtex next to the control unit. If you accidentally shoot the Semtex, it's all over. Wait until the wind changes and you can see the control unit, then shoot. I had some trouble with ciphers flying around the area. Take a good look at the airborne cipher. You can see the control unit for the IR sensor. The control unit is right above Cypher's camera. Avoid shooting the camera at all costs. Looks like if a Cypher is shot down, the resulting signal will trigger an explosion. The whole bridge would blow. Target only the control unit on the upper part of the Cypher. Aim for the blinking light. The control units aren't all necessarily on the Shell 2 side. Try looking around more. Use first-person view to investigate the Shell 1 and Strut D sides. There should be control units above the door. Take those out, too. The stuff used in that trap is Semtex. It's a plastic explosive like C4. Developed in former Czechoslovakia, the stuff was called the Terrorist C4 back in the Cold War days. Made from RDX and PETN, Semtex is easy to handle and very powerful. The stuff can devastate an area. Whatever you do, don't get caught in its explosion. Watch out, Raiden. There are IR sensor traps in that location. Infrared sensors? Right. A booby trap connected to plastic explosives. Crossing an IR beam will trigger the detonation of a critical amount of Semtex. You will be killed. Make no mistake about it. Avoid contact with the beams at all cost. There are too many beams in place for you to get past the sensor undetected. What should I do? You'll have to take the sensor itself offline. Take out the control unit on the sensor. You should be able to see a unit with a blinking green light next to the explosives. That's the control unit. With the control unit destroyed, the IR sensor will cease to function. Shoot out the control unit. The tranquilizer gun won't do the job. Whatever you do, don't touch the Semtex. Assume that there's another detonator that responds to shock. Take out only the control unit with the green light. Go to first-person view and aim with as much precision as you can. Once you take out every control unit, the IR beams will disappear. If you still see an intact beam, that means you've left a control unit untouched. Take every control unit offline. Not all control units are in a highly visible spot. Use the first-person view to take a good look. Push the R2 and L2 buttons simultaneously in first-person view to stretch up on your toes. You can also crouch down and crawl by using the crawl button. Change your vantage point and conduct a thorough search. Use your skills and you should be able to deal with control units in hard-to-reach spots. Infrared is usually invisible to the naked eye. There should, however, be a way to make it visible. You could experiment with what you have. Blow some cigarette smoke on the likely spot to see if there are any IR beams. Select the cigarettes near an IR sensor. Raiden, watch out for the birds. If one of them manages to fly through an IR beam, the Semtex will detonate. Don't startle them. Do something about the birds before you get close to the flock. How about using the tranquilizer gun to knock them out? Raiden, there's a gun cipher flying over there. Those aren't the normal cipher UAVs. These are armed. Watch out. Gun ciphers can be put out of commission temporarily. 
use the chaff to interfere with their electronic sensors. You can shoot gun ciphers down if you target the fan section or its gun. Aim in first-person view. Raiden, what you see there is a booby trap consisting of an infrared sensor and Semtex. The Semtex will detonate if the IR beam from the sensor is disturbed. Whatever you do, don't touch the IR beam. But there's no way to get through there without crossing the beam. Neutralize all the control units for the IR sensor. Those control units and the distance are obviously out of handgun range. What do I do then? Use the sniper rifle to take them out. Those control units in the distance are obviously out of handgun range. Look for a sniper rifle. Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin would know this kind of thing, wouldn't he? Didn't he say that there was a PSG-1 in the Strut F warehouse? Use the PSG-1 sniper rifle to shoot out control units that are farther away. The PSG-1's controls have been slightly modified from what you learned in the VR training. Note the differences. The PSG-1 scope is equipped with a zoom function. Zoom in for a precise strike and zoom out when you need a wider field of view. Learn to make good use of the function. The PSG-1 can be aimed from upright, crouch, and prone positions. The different heights of these stances will help you get a bead on targets concealed behind objects. Remember, shoot from a stable position to prevent shakes. The IR sensor cannot be taken offline until all the control units are destroyed. If the sensor is still live, it means there are control units you haven't touched somewhere. Raiden, you haven't destroyed all the control units yet. Use the first-person view or the sniper scope to look around. Raiden, the Semtex is equipped with shock sensors. Any blow to the Semtex, gunfire included, will set off the sensor and start a chain reaction that will detonate all the bombs. We'll be finished if that were to happen. Aim only for the control units. You can't reach Shell 2 unless the infrared sensor trap on the connecting bridge between the two shells is deactivated. You'll need a sniper rifle to take out the sensor's control units. Find yourself a sniper rifle. Use the PSG-1 to destroy the sensor's control units, then head to Shell-2 to rescue the President. It might be due to endocrine disruptors, but those seagulls are extremely vicious. If you mistakenly shoot them, they'll attack you. When you're shooting the control units, make sure you don't hit the birds. When you're being attacked by the seagulls, if you use something that they're afraid of, you should be able to drive them away. Try using different kinds of equipment. Wasn't there a design on the cardboard box that the seagulls might be afraid of? Raiden, the IR sensors on the connecting bridge between the two shells are offline. Go to the first floor of Shell 2's core and rescue the President. Don't panic even if you lose sight of the Harrier. Look at your radar. The radar has been modified to show where the Harrier is. Use the radar and locate the Harrier's position. The Harrier has a powerful 25mm machine cannon. Its firing rate weighs in at 3,800 rounds per minute. If you can't evade it, stay behind some kind of shielding object or try hanging. Harriers are equipped with advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles, commonly known as AMRAM. This is a type of active homing missile that uses a built-in radar guidance system for a fire-and-forget capability. The accuracy rate is quite high. Electronic interference is probably the only way to evade it. Use the chaff to disrupt the missile's guidance system. Raiden, incoming AMRAM, break out the chaff. Raiden, handguns and machine guns can't stand up to fighter jets. Use the Stinger missiles instead. The RGB-6 will also do the job. Dodge the Harrier's attacks and launch a counterattack between their strikes. That connecting bridge is divided into upper and lower sections. Use the structure to your advantage. The upper level offers a clear view and better targeting opportunity, but leaves you vulnerable to the Harrier's airstrike. Use the RGB-6 to your advantage. The lower level offers more cover. It makes it easier to evade the Harrier's attacks, but your own aim will suffer as well. I would recommend that you use the Stinger. That Harrier 2 is equipped with cluster bombs. Each bomb is full of bomblets, a combined munitions weapon. A cluster bomb has a huge effective range. There's no way to avoid one on the upper level of a connecting bridge. Escape by going to the lower level. Both wings are outfitted with an air-to-surface rocket pod. 
The rockets aren't guided, so moving should get you out of their way. Watch out for the blast, though. Don't start scurrying about even after the Harrier has flown away and is no longer in eyesight. When the Harrier is pointed in your direction, it should flash for a moment as it reflects the sun. Don't miss that flash. Locate it as early as possible and hit it with a stinger. If you delay, you'll be attacked. The Harrier's exhaust is extremely hot. You cannot afford to get enveloped in it. When the Harrier draws near, run down to the lower level. The Harrier is outfitted with IR flares, a countermeasure that burns in mid-air with magnesium to deceive infrared homing missiles. Shooting a flare will draw any launch stinger missiles towards the flare. When the Harrier is hovering near the connecting bridge, the RGB-6 should also be effective. Raiden, I'll back you up from the chopper. If I see you run short of an item, I'll toss it down. Make good use of those. Raiden, where do you think you're aiming? Stop messing around! You have something against us that we don't know about? Raiden, we're not doing so well up here. This would be a good time to get rid of that Harrier. Are you two all right? Sorry, Raiden, but we're just about done unless you can do something about the Harrier. The Harrier may be designed for vertical takeoff and landing, but it's a fighter after all. Agility isn't one of its strong points. There's always a slight pause between its attacks. That's your opportunity. Shoot the Harrier down with your Stinger missile, but remember that while you're aiming the missile launcher, you won't be able to move around. As soon as you see the Harrier headed your way, find cover. Hit the Weapon Menu button to do a weapon quick change. Make use of it. The Harrier II is an upgraded version of the world's first practical V-stall fighter plane. By shifting the propulsion of the engine nozzles on the sides, the plane can handle short-distance vertical takeoffs and landings. The payload capacity of the Harrier II is considerably larger than its predecessor due to improved engine output. As a result, it carries more armament, starting with a 25mm machine gun pod on the fuselage pylon. There are air-to-surface rockets on both wings and various pods for air-to-air -air missiles and cluster bombs. You won't be able to take out one of these with small arms fire. The fact is, you'll need to use Stinger missiles. Raiden, watch out for the Harrier's cluster bombs. Cluster bombs are non-guided units packed with a couple hundred bomblets for wide-range attacks. The bombs are equipped with timed fuses for detonation following release. The dispenser explodes, spreading the bomblets across a wide area. Cluster bombs cover an extensive range. If you see one being launched, head for the floor beneath the connecting bridge. The Harrier II is equipped with AMRAM mid-range air-to-air missiles. The AMRAM is an active homing missile designed to succeed the Sparrow. On the final phase of its guided approach to a target, the missile locks onto the objective with an active seeker and goes into full autonomous flight mode. In short, the AMRAM is a missile with fire and forget capability. This aspect of the missile makes it ideal for fire and run tactics, significantly improving the mission survival rate of the firing aircraft. With a high-performance active seeker, the AMRAM is extremely functional. Once fired, it pretty much zeroes in on its target with deadly accuracy. And how do you avoid one of these? I recommend chaff grenades. The AMRAM's been reinforced against ECMs. In fact, the missile's been designed to home in on the source of electronic countermeasures. But that only applies to air combat. It's highly unlikely that the missile's equipped for tracking human targets with any precision. You should be able to sufficiently throw an AMRAM off course with a chaff grenade. The minute you see one launched, break out the grenade. The Harrier II's fuselage pylons are equipped with 25mm machine gun pods. With a firing speed of 3,800 rounds per minute, rounds are launched at an initial velocity of over 1,000 meters per second. In other words, don't get shot. As soon as the Harrier's guns commence firing, take cover. Don't even think about facing off against that kind of firepower. The Harrier II comes equipped with air-to-surface rocket pods on both wings. The Harrier II rockets are not guided. You can avoid direct hits by moving away from the targeted area following a launch. But watch out for the blast! We're currently aboard a KA-60 Kasatka helicopter, a multi-purpose military aircraft of the Russian Kamov Design Bureau. This copter is capable of handling various missions, including troop and supply transport, medical evacuation, target acquisition for attack copters, and all-weather scouting. 
Equip it with the latest avionics and electronic equipment, and the Kasatka can handle communication and electronic jamming, as well as other special operations. The copter's designed for survival in combat, and the main systems are expandable. The rotors are capable of functioning if they've been punctured. In addition, the Kasatka features a polyurethane-filled fuel tank to minimize the danger of explosion. However, the Kasatka cannot hold its own against a Harrier. It's only suitable for providing you with air support. What I'm trying to say is that it's up to you to take out the Harrier. Raiden, you all right? Yeah. How about you guys? Barely managed, but we're all right. The chopper? We need some time for repairs. Oh. The President's all yours. Okay. Can I ask you something? What? Are you the snake? <sighs> they said you were dead. No, not me. There are still too many things I need to do. Snake, you're a legend, and that's why I need to ask you this. Legend? A legend is nothing but fiction. Someone tells it, someone else remembers, everybody passes it on. I'm here because I was assigned to this mission, not because I want to. If I could, I'd be out of here in a second. How could you come back to all this? Why keep fighting? There's something my best friend said to me once. What? We're not tools of the government or anyone else. Fighting was the only thing I was good at, but at least I always fought for what I believed in. What about, what about the DNA results from that body? That was Liquid's body. He and Snake are identical on the genetic level. Liquid? A deception, for our own protection. We stole his frozen body from some organization. Kind of a hassle, though. That's all there is to it. <sighs> are you two really an NGO? Insofar as we're a non-profit organization of civilians advocating a cause, yes. The cause happens to be the eradication of Metal Gear. We work on our own, but it's a cause worth fighting for. Why would you stick your neck out for something this risky? That's the way I used to look at it, four years ago. I was holed up in the middle of nowhere in Alaska, drinking too much. We have a responsibility to the coming generations, to the world. What responsibility? To keep track of the mistakes we've made as a species. We need to remember, to spread the word, to fight for change. And that's what keeps me alive. You think you can change the future? No, I'm not as arrogant as that. What you do isn't grassroots activism. It's more like terrorism. I admit that. But our group, Philanthropy, received some information. A new Metal Gear prototype was being developed here, and terrorists were planning to raid the facility. The information came from a very reliable source. So you're here to... We're here to stop all that. But I also have a personal motive. Looks like the terrorists have his sister in the big shell. We're here on our own, not under anyone's orders. We have our own battles. Otacon's here for someone. I'm not. This is a military mission. Jack, are you all right? Just barely. You almost gave me a heart attack. Sorry, it wasn't intentional. I know that, and I know I need to stay stronger. Say a prayer for me, Rose, so I can come back. You will make it back. I'm with you all the way, remember. That means a lot to me, you know. I'm going to save the data, okay, Jack? Colonel, Metal Gear's already gone active. It's not too late. You can still prevent a nuclear strike by securing the President and preventing password confirmation from taking place. Get to the President. He's in the core section of Shell 2. I'm checking the satellite images. Looks like you can get to the core from the other side of Strut L. The core hasn't gone under yet from what we can tell. Follow the railings down, then jump onto the pipes. The only viable strut in the outer perimeter is the L. That attack just now doesn't make any sense. It's like they have no more use for this place. Colonel, you were monitoring the codec calls. That man was the real snake all along. Maybe. Maybe? Don't let your guard down with him. Why do you say that? Because they were never a part of the simulation. They're an unknown factor. You can take your simulation and... We're out here, we bleed, we die. Calm down. I suggest that you do, Raiden. Even if that is Snake, that has no bearing on your mission. Colonel, you and Snake used to be on the same side. Hmm. I don't understand. I read about you and Snake in In the Darkness of Shadow Moses. I don't give a damn what that piece of trash said. Do you get me? Raiden, you're currently on the connecting bridge between Shell 1 and Shell 2. Go north to reach Strut G of Shell 2.
but the bridge is a mess from their attack. It's still a way through. Don't let the place get to you, Jack. Use the first-person view to study your surroundings. Look for sections that can still support your weight. If you use hanging and rolls, you should be able to pick your way across. Ryden, if you jump as far as you can, you could reach the other side. Try rolling to take off from the very edge. Ryden, look down and to your right. There's a pipe down there for circulating contaminated seawater. If you follow the remaining supports while hanging, you should be able to reach the spot right above the pipe. When you're hanging, get to the spot above the pipe, then jump down. Push the crawl button to go straight down. Don't forget to switch to first-person view to check whether there's a good landing spot. Colonel, the radar's not working. With Shell 2 in this shape, I wouldn't count on the radar coming back online for a while. It'll be all right. Hang in there, Jack. With the radar offline, you'll have to rely on first-person view to check for enemy presence. Proceed with extreme caution. Raiden. Be careful walking there. If you slip off the pipe, it's a long way down to the water. Slow your pace by tilting the left stick only slightly, or go into a crawl. Those bird droppings make the pipe extremely slippery and dangerous. Don't ever try to run over those spots. That door doesn't look as though it will open. You should be able to manage the fire escape on the outside of strut G, though. Go around outside strut G and head for strut L. If you're not too keen on being pecked by birds, put them out of action. Try the tranquilizer gun. Proceed carefully when you're near large flocks of birds. Disturbing them could alert the enemy to your presence. Raiden, jump down to the corridor below you. While hanging, push the crawl button to go straight down. Just don't forget to use the first-person view to check for an optimal landing point directly underneath. Raiden. Go up that ladder to get to the fire escape on the exterior of Strut L. Push the action button to start climbing the ladder. Ryden, look carefully. There's a sentry just inside the window. Make sure you aren't spotted when moving past windows. A preemptive strike is a viable option. Throw a stun grenade through the window, for example. You can't use hanging or rolling to get to the other side from there. Flatten yourself against the wall and inch your way forward. You can't get through there standing up. Stay against the wall and crouch down to get by. Ryden, look out. There are airborne gun ciphers in the area. The first warning could be their rotor noise. Keep your ears open for signs of their approach. Don't count on just a visual warning. Ah, uh, uh, Ryden, my sympathies. Sneaking missions are called wet works for a reason after all. Don't worry about it, Jack. It's okay. Rose? That is, as long as you take a shower the second you get back. Do we have a deal? Raiden, I don't see a way into Strut K, but there's no need for you to check it out in any case. Head for the core of Shell 2, where the President is. The enemy has already entered the nuclear launch code. Secure the President before they can confirm and finalize the code input. The President is on the first floor of Shell 2's core. This is the way to Shell 2's core section, where the President is. First, cross the connecting bridge between the two shells. You'll arrive on Strut G. Proceed along the catwalk circling the outside of Strut G until you get to the LG connecting bridge. Cross the LG connecting bridge to Strut L, then take the exterior catwalk to the KL connecting bridge. You can enter the core of Shell 2 midway from the KL connecting bridge. The President is being held on the first floor. Go! Follow the catwalk along the exterior of the strut where you are. It will lead on to the LG connecting bridge. Get to the outside catwalk. You're on the connecting bridge between struts L and G. Go straight down to get to strut L. You should be able to reach the KL connecting bridge if you walk along the outside of strut L. Midway through the KL connecting bridge, there's a way into the core of Shell 2 where the President is being held. Just think about getting to Strut L for now. Raiden, you're currently on Strut L. Move north along its exterior to get to the KL connecting bridge. You'll be able to get to the core of Shell 2 from the center of the KL connecting bridge. The President is being held in the core. Raiden, there should be a way to cross over from your present location on the KL connecting bridge to the core of Shell 2. Get to the core of Shell 2. Rescue the President before the enemy can use him to reconfirm the nuclear launch code. Raiden, look closely. 
There are enemies on the demolished connecting bridge. Maybe they are surveying the extent of the explosion. Looks like it. The connecting bridge was small to begin with, and now it has begun to crumble away. If we're spotted, there's no place to run. This could be extremely hairy. Probably would be best to take enemies down from a distance first. Target enemies with the PSG-1 from the Strut-G side. Colonel, Pliskin was Snake after all. According to him. What? Listen, Raiden, I'll say it again. He is not in the simulation. There you go about the simulation again. Don't put your faith in him. Don't trust him. Do you understand? Raiden, you cover the President. Make contact with him before the confirmation of the nuclear launch code. We are going to start repairs on the Kamov. That should keep our hands full for a while. I did a round of Shell 2 during bomb disposal. Let me know if you have any questions. So Iroquois Pliskin was an alias? Of course. And the rank of Lieutenant Junior Grade? Made it up. That's just great. Anyway, I get the Pliskin part, but what about Iroquois? Iroquois is a Frankified version of the Algonquin word for rattlesnakes. It's what they called their enemies. Algonquin? The Algonquin Nation, one of the many groups of Native Americans who used to call Manhattan Island their home. The majority of tribes, in what's now the state of New York, were a part of the Algonquin Nation. So this was a stronghold of snakes. By the way, Manhattan means Island of Hills in Algonquin. You know, I thought I heard of Ames somewhere before. DIA would mean we're talking about Nastasha's ex-husband. Nastasha? Nastasha Romanenko? Isn't she the one who wrote In the Darkness of Shadow Moses? Yeah, she helped me out during the Shadow Moses incident. She was also actively involved in the philanthropy organization following the incident. Where is she now? Your guess is as good as mine, but she's probably still a heavy smoker. Have you ever heard of Outer Heaven? Outer Heaven? Yeah. Know anything? No. What about it? The terrorist leader mentioned it. Something about being close to reviving Outer Heaven. Is that right? Well, do you know anything? No, but whatever their goal is, they're probably up to no good. We've got to stop them. Yeah, right. I'm in front of the room where they're keeping the president. Everything all right? No sign of flooding, but I can't get close to the door. The floor is electrified. Don't test it. You'll be bacon. Any suggestions? Remember the Shadow Moses VR training. Take out the circuit panel? Right. But there's no way into the room. Try ventilation ducts. Yeah, I think I see one. Look for a remote control missile launcher. You can guide it through the duct into the room. Then target the circuit panel. Got it. Right, but make sure you don't hit the president. The President is wired with nanomachines. If we know the frequency, I can raise him. We've tried that repeatedly, but there's no response. It looks like the walls have a built-in radio shield. So that's why Ames lost contact with him. If you need to confirm his position, you can log into the node. Understood. Locate a remote control missile launcher first. Raiden, that floor is charged with high voltage currents. I don't recommend you try crossing it. Guide a remote-controlled missile through the duct and destroy the power source inside the room. Damn, it's dark. I can't see a thing. The lights are broken. Try using the night vision or thermal goggles in the dark. Snake must know where to find those. Ask him. Raiden, that duct leads into the room where the president is being held. Guide the remote-controlled missile through that duct into the room and take out that power source. They've put a wire cover on the duct. There's no way in for either you or the missile. The only way to the President is past this electrified floor. Use the remote-controlled missile to destroy the power source. That will cut off the high-voltage current to the floor. Locate a remote-controlled missile. Snake might know where to find them. He did sweep Shell 2 for C4s earlier. Go and pick up the remote-controlled missile. It should be in the B1 level of Shell 2's core, according to that man. Get it now. Guide a remote-controlled missile through the duct and destroy the power source in the room. You have the remote-controlled missile. Good job. Now head for the first floor of the Shell 2 core. Take out the power source and make contact with the President before the launch code can be reconfirmed. Hurry! Look out for the gun cameras. Those are unmanned surveillance cameras that fire at any moving object that comes into view. Be careful.
Gun cameras can shoot down a remote-controlled missile. You may want to take the cameras out preemptively. I feel like I know this terrain. Wasn't it in the VR training? Nikita Weapon Mode, Level 4. Do you recognize it? Oh, so that was another rehearsal for this mission. No, a simulation. Not the same thing as a rehearsal. Leverage the experience from your VR training, Raiden. A perfectly real VR experience is in itself an accomplished result. Have confidence in your abilities. Raiden, make sure the remote-controlled missile doesn't injure the President. You want to take out only the power source. If you're concerned about the President moving around, try attracting his attention beforehand by knocking on the wall. Keep him away from the power source. Raiden, the President is being held somewhere in the area you're in now. His life is in your hands. Hurry! Raiden, the high-voltage current flowing to the floor in front of the room that the President's being held in has been cut off. Head for the first floor of the Shell 2 core. Hurry! Get in touch with the President before the nuclear launch code is reconfirmed. The currents are off. The President is being held somewhere ahead. Get to him as soon as possible. Snake, do you know where I can find some remote-controlled missiles? Remote-controlled missiles? I saw something on B-1 in the core of Shell 2. But be careful. Contaminated seawater's broken out of the tanks thanks to that explosion. Most of B-1 is probably flooded by now. Do you read me, sir? Uh, yes. Mr. President, it's my understanding that the terrorists have managed to input the code sequence necessary for launching a nuclear strike. That's correct. I punched the sequence in myself. You're working for them? If you asked me two hours ago, my answer would have been yes. Right now, they're keeping me alive until my vital signs are reconfirmed. They betrayed you? I wouldn't quite put it that way. I wanted power. They sought destruction. But why stoop to terrorism? I wanted absolute power. But you're the president. You have power. No, I'm just a figurehead. What? I don't have any control. The real power is in the Patriots' hands. The Patriots? The truth behind this country. I'm not surprised you've never heard of them. Very few are aware of their existence, even among those with code word clearance. Huh? Politics. The military, the economy, they control it all. They even choose who becomes president. Putting it simply, the Patriots rule this country. No. <laughs> Hard to believe, isn't it? But it's the truth. The space defense, income tax reduction, and national missile defense programs. Every policy that's been credited to me was actually done according to their instructions. Space defense was initiated by Congress. That's what the Patriots want the country to believe. It's all a show. Democracy is just a filler for textbooks. Think about it. Do you actually believe that public opinion influences the government? No. This country is shaped and controlled as the Patriots see fit. The people are shown what they want to believe. What you call government is actually a well-staged production aimed at satisfying the public. Huh? Don't look at me like that. I'm legally sane, you know. It's not your sanity that worries me. I wish to be a member of the Patriots. I wanted to wield the power of a king instead of being an expendable pawn. And that justifies acts of terrorism? Yes. I'd intended to use the new Metal Gear as a bargaining chip. Bargaining chip? But I underestimated Solidus. He actually wants to challenge the Patriots, even if it means the destruction of the world. What are you saying? Whether you believe it or not, the balance of power rests in the hands of the Patriots. They regulate the country's various interests through controlled presentation, staging a drama that is palatable to the general masses. Can you imagine what would happen if they ceased to function? Picture a massive political vacuum, a space that every power monger will try to fill for their own greedy ends. I'm talking about an unregulated power struggle. Panic, civil war, chaos. Like it or not, the Patriots is an organization that must continue to exist. So you changed your mind because you wanted to avoid global chaos. Exactly. When I told Solidus that I wished to prevent disaster, he replied that pawns can never become players. And who is this Solidus? I thought he resigned. That's the story given to the general public. 
Following his resignation, the Patriots selected me, their new pawn, for the presidency. But that would mean that the presidential race was... That was quite a show, wasn't it? It was a well-scripted drama staged by the Patriots for the benefit of the public. Even the Democrats and Republicans were dancing to the Patriots' tune. Everything went according to plan, but for one exception. Huh. Following his resignation, Solidus' health was scheduled to fail him, bringing about his untimely death. Capped? Correct. But before the Patriots could execute their plot, Solidus went underground with the help of Ocelot. As he avoided pursuit, Solidus gained control of Dead Cell, winning over Colonel Golukovich's outfit. From there, he bided his time, knowing that his opportunity would soon arrive. What opportunity? The completion of the new Metal Gear project, an opportunity that would even his odds against the Patriots. By stealing the Patriots' most valued project, he would be able to place them in a very uncomfortable position. It's the only chance he has for survival. Once he has the new Metal Gear, he'll declare war against the Patriots. Needless to say, he must be stopped. Metal Gear is already operational. No, not yet. Hmm? What you saw was Metal Gear Ray, hijacked two years ago from the Marines by Ocelot. That was not the new Metal Gear. Then where's the new Metal Gear? Right here. What? You're standing in it. To be more precise, this entire Big Shell facility is the new Metal Gear. Would you say? No, I'm quite serious. The upper structure that you've seen is camouflage, designed to represent an offshore cleanup facility. The main structure extends from the foundation all the way down to the ocean floor. The connecting elevator is located on the B2 floor of the Shell 1 core. Arsenal Gear. That's the code name for the new Metal Gear. Arsenal? It is a means to preserve the world as it is. It will establish a new form of control. The Patriots will use it to keep their place as the country's true rulers. Right now, they feel pressured and threatened. By what? They fear an overabundance of digital information. The world will drown in the coming flood of information, and they along with it. Hmm. The Arsenal plans include a system to digitally manage the flow of information, making it possible to shape the truth for their own purposes. In short, the Arsenal system is the key to their supremacy. The key? Yes. The GW system is the Patriots' trump card. Arsenal gear will be fully operational when GW is successfully integrated. Once operational, it will be a completely new form of power for the Patriots to wield. I had hoped to seize the project from them so that I would be in a strong bargaining position. Bargain for what? I'd hoped to trade my way into their ranks, but Solidus preferred rebellion. Outer Heaven, his plan to unleash a nuclear blast over the skies of Wall Street to break the Patriots' control over the business community, is also a key factor in his offensive effort. Outer Heaven? Listen. There isn't much time. The football served as the key for activating Arsenal gear. I've already input the necessary code sequence. It won't be long before GW begins to establish connections with other external systems, and Arsenal gear becomes fully operational. Stop them before that happens. That is your role. Role? You've got to find Emma Emmerich. She's the only one who can stop that thing once it's been activated. Emma Emmerich? She's the system programmer for Arsenal Gear. I believe she's somewhere on level B1 in the core of this building. I thought the levels below us were flooded. I'm sure they won't let her die just yet, as she's the only remaining programmer for this project. According to Ocelot, she was being held in a locker room located in the northwest part of level B1. Cut transmission and get moving. Colonel, the president is dead. I see. I'm sorry to hear that. Where do we go from here? Your mission was to rescue the President and eliminate the terrorist threat. However, given the recent turn of events, we will honor the President's last directive. You must put a stop to Arsenal gear once and for all. Do you actually think there's any truth to his story about this Big Shell facility being a front for Arsenal gear? I don't have the security clearance necessary to verify the facts. However, he was the President. I'm sure he knew what he was talking about. Aren't you forgetting that he was part of the terrorist plot? All the more reason why I believe his information is reliable. Huh? 
We're talking about a man who chose to die rather than risk a nuclear holocaust. Thanks to his sacrifice, the Nuclear Launch Authority has shifted to the Vice President, effectively eliminating the terrorist threat. Colonel, when you put it like that, it almost sounds like I should have assassinated the President to eliminate the threat. That was not my intention. I was trying to point out that there is certainly some credibility to the words of a man who chose death to protect the innocent. The Colonel has a point, Jack. What about the information he gave me on the Patriots? That's a new one on me. I'll see what I can find out. <sighs> Raiden, we're running out of time. Find Emma. She's supposed to be located on level B1, in the core of that building you're in, right? <sighs> You've got to find her before Arsenal becomes fully operational. Hurry, Jack. It's up to you to make sure that the President didn't sacrifice his life in vain. Understood. Raiden, out. What's your status, Raiden? Snake, the President, he's been assassinated. What? There was nothing I could do. What about the nuclear strike code sequence? He died before his vital ID could be reconfirmed. Then the enemies lost their nuclear strike capability. But that Ocelot guy obviously killed the President on purpose. Why? It doesn't make any sense. They had to know that they couldn't launch the nuke if they killed the President. Maybe there's a way to launch without reconfirming the vital ID. Or maybe they found a more effective weapon within Arsenal Gear. You knew about Arsenal Gear? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me about it? You never asked. Am I correct in assuming you also know that the Big Shell's a front for the project? You mean, did I know that the Big Shell, a fully functional environmental cleanup facility, was designed to camouflage Arsenal Gear? Yeah, I did. It's exactly what the President and Ames described, a massive cover story. The good news is that it hasn't really done much in terms of cleaning up the environment, so we won't have to worry about any toxic gas being released if we have to blow the house down. Right. And when did you find out about all of this? It took a while, but we uncovered the info around the time you took out that mad bomber. <sighs> There's no doubt that Arsenal Gear is being built here. Then it was all set up two years ago, on that day. All of it. Two years ago? What really happened here? How did you manage to get out? Otacon managed to have a small boat ready for me. That was the easy part. The tough part was not getting dragged down with a sinking tanker. Small miracle when you think about it. It turned out that the whole thing was a setup to lure us. Forget it. We're wasting time. We can figure this out later. The nuclear strike's been prevented, but Arsenal still has a massive payload of missiles to deal with. Right. If the opposition gets control of those missiles... Raiden, you've got to find Emma. Wait a second. Isn't Emma Emmerich... My sister. What's she doing here? You got me. She's a computer whiz who specializes in neural AI and ultra-variable volume data analysis using complex logic. How she got involved in weapons development is beyond me. Hmm. Whatever her reasons, we need her in order to stop Arsenal. Raiden, find her. I'm on my way. Colonel, I want some background information on Emma Emmerich. I've got it right here, direct from the National Security Agency's personnel files. Apparently, she was involved in some sort of high-level project, but there's no details on that. Her record shows that she resigned from the agency two years ago. Emma Emmerich, full name Emma Emmerich Danziger. Members of her family call her E.E. E. After divorcing Hal Emmerich's father, her mother took Emma to England and raised her there. Danziger is her mother's maiden name, but she prefers Emmerich. After returning home to England, her mother married Robinson, a businessman. The following details are from a report filed with the NSA when she joined the agency. Just before graduating from high school, Emma injured Robinson in self-defense during an alleged assault on her person. As a result of this incident, she followed in the footsteps of her stepbrother, Hal Emmerich, and left home to enroll in Oxford. It is believed that at this particular point in her life, she was extremely angered by the fact that her brother failed to protect her. Consequently, she lost all family connections and is very resentful. She seems to believe that her brother is to blame for everything. While attending Oxford, she was noted for her success in a deciphering event sponsored by British GCHQ. They may not be blood related, but she sure sounds like Otacon's sister. There's more. Raiden, do you recall a certain situation that's more or less become a legend among hackers? To refresh your memory, at the time, just about all of our nation's communications and information resources were concentrated at NSA in Fort Meade. In fact, 
NSA's basement facility operated round the clock to amass data obtained not only from public communications, but everything from satellite to wiretap operations as well. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that whoever controlled the NSA facility could move the world. On January 24th, in the year 2000, the facility suffered a total system shutdown for a 73-hour period. Did they ever figure out the cause? It's believed that a small group within the government had arranged the incident with the assistance of a notorious group of crackers. The result was a full review of NSA safety measures, which in turn led to the decision to shift the data gathering operations to an isolated location that would be safe from physical attack, as well as cyber terrorism. And where might that be? My security clearance couldn't get me that information, but I did find out that one of the key members of the hacker group was none other than Emma Emmerich. Although she started off as a specialist in artificial intelligence and complex logic, Emma is now regarded as a computer genius. That would make her a prime candidate for recruitment in the intelligence community, wouldn't it? And knowing most of the intelligence agencies, I doubt fair play was a major concern in their recruiting efforts. Your assumption's correct. The government played on her weakness, her strong hate for Hal Emmerich, the brother who left her when she was six years old. She hates him that much? When she was six years old, Emma and her father were involved in a pool accident. She survived, but her father drowned. What did the police have to say about that? The report states it was an accidental death. Isn't that about the time that Otacon left his home and family? Exactly. But I don't have any idea why he chose to do so. Does Emma blame Otacon for her father's death? I don't think so. Her hate seems to stem from the fact that she believes Otacon abandoned her. You see, although the two weren't directly related, they were said to be very close. It's rumored that sibling rivalry was what launched her career as a hacker. Four years ago, the government leaked her the details of the Shadow Moses incident. In doing so, they were able to recruit her for the NSA. I also have little doubt that they also used the NSA hacking affair as a means to convince her to cooperate. You think that her hate drove her to frame Snake and Otacon? That, I don't know. Raiden, are you reading me? This is Otacon. What's your situation? Wet and miserable. This place is flooded. The seawater that's been pumped up is pouring into the building. I see. Listen, there's something I have to tell you about E.E. E. Don't worry about her. I'll get her out. She's afraid of water. What? Yeah. When she was six years old, she almost drowned with my father in our swimming pool. She can't swim? Well, yes and no. We used to swim a lot together when we were kids. In fact, she swam like a fish until that day when she almost drowned. That pretty much coincides with what the colonel told me. When the accident happened, I was in my room. I learned later that E.E. E. was calling me for help. She didn't doubt for a minute that I'd be there. You could see the pool from my room, but I didn't realize at the time that she needed my help. What were you doing? I... I was... So Emma survived the ordeal? Yeah, but my father didn't. So you blamed yourself and left your family? No. E.E. E. seems to believe that was the case. The fact is, I betrayed her. And you think she can't swim because of the traumatic experience? I haven't seen her since that day, but yes, I think so. I got a letter from Julie, her mother, after they moved back to England. In her letter, she mentioned that E.E. E. couldn't swim anymore, that she refused to even wear a bathing suit. Damn, if she still can't swim, we're in trouble. Level B1 in the core is pretty much flooded. Look, maybe you can help her overcome the trauma. You want me to help her get over it? Well, it's still gonna take some time to repair the cam off. Sorry, kid. Emma's rescue is up to you. <sighs> Thanks. An underwater mission. Well, this is a first. Look, I'll see what I can do. I suggest that you drum the map of the building into your head, because you won't have time to look at it when you try to bring Emma out. I'm counting on you, Raiden. I covered most of the core when I had to take out the C4s. If there's anything you need to ask me, call me on the codec. I'll do that. Colonel, B1 is completely flooded from what I can see. You'll have to swim through. I'm fine with swimming. Uh, swimming isn't my strong point. It wasn't a part of the VR training, either. Raiden, watch out for the underwater mines. They'll detonate on contact. Avoid the mines and swim through the area.
Raiden, the procedure for opening watertight doors is the same as when you're on land. Push the action button in front of the door. Raiden, it doesn't look as though the watertight door will open. Find another route. You need to catch your breath somewhere before your O2 gauge runs out. Keep a lookout for the surface. There should be pockets of air somewhere, even with this level of flooding. Make sure you find one, okay? Raiden, the firewall's been lowered. Find another route. You can't get through there. Raiden, the thermal goggles will function even underwater. If you become disoriented in water, it's a death sentence. Always use your thermal goggles in the dark when you're submerged. Jack, is everything all right? Are you cold? No, no, I'm... <sighs> oh, dear. Don't stay in the water too long. You'll catch cold. Raiden, card-operated doors apparently don't work underwater. Find another route. Colonel, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Affirmative. That must be Emma Emmerich. You need to go around from the east, though. There's no way into the locker room from the present location. Jack? Jack? Uh, oh, Rose, I is that you? Uh, what's up? What's up? You were looking for a pretty long time. Something catch your eye? No, no, just, um, scouting for the enemy. <laughs> Somehow I have a hard time believing you. Enough. Hurry up and return to the mission at hand. Raiden, locate Emma Emmerich and have her put the President's disc to use. Emma is on B-1 of the Shell-2 core. The clock is ticking. Locate her before Arsenal gear goes online. Emma should be to the northwest of your present location, on B-1 of the Shell-2 core. She's in an area just on the other side of a card level 4 door. Hurry. Colonel, did you find anything about the Patriots? No, not yet. I can't find data on them anywhere. But the President is- Jack, there is no data. Colonel, you know something, don't you? No, I don't know anything. I need a little more time. Colonel, why did Ocelot murder the President? They disagreed, probably. Exactly the same. What? As the Shadow Moses incident. Don't be foolish. Are you sure about that? Ames' death, appearance of the ninja, the President's death, and now the virus. You're reading too much into things. That's right, Jack. You're tired. Oh. Right, and don't waste your time thinking unnecessary thoughts. Invest all your energy instead in carrying out your duties. Colonel, did you hear the truth about the Shadow Moses incident? Yeah. Snake wasn't a terrorist. You look thrilled. Huh? Yeah. So you just believe everything that he told you then? What did you say? Don't trust him. He isn't in the simulation. Simulation again? What exactly are you talking about? Don't put your trust in him. Just carry out your duties to the best of your abilities. Do you understand, Raiden? Some light is shining down at the spots where there is air. The light probably reaches down to the floor. Keep an eye out for that light. The places where the air is trapped have been inferred from the node's map data and should appear on your radar. There's air at the light blue locations on your radar. You should be able to come up for air there. Pay attention to the radar and move on. Raiden, the node for that area is inside a small room to the northwest. You'd better log in. It's hard to gauge the layout of the area when it's underwater. You'd better enable the radar. The node for that area is right near the elevator. Make sure you log in. Raiden, watch out for that underwater mine. It'll detonate on contact, so make sure you avoid it. Why would there be a mine here? Because someone planted one. What about that guy who was running on water? Could have been him. You'd better watch your back. He may be waiting to ambush. Okay. Emma's probably being kept in filter chamber number two, on floor B1 of Shell 2's core. It's in the northeast section of the floor you're on. Go around from the south and you should be able to reach her. Start out by swimming south. Swim as far west as you can. Then, head north and you should reach filter chamber number two. Filter chamber number two should be just north of your present location. Head northward. As the President mentioned, Metal Gear Ray was created as an anti-Metal Gear weapon. In the Shadow Moses incident, Ocelot returned with a disc containing data of the exercises that were held for Metal Gear Rex and the new nuclear warhead. What's more, he sold that data not only to the nuclear powers, but to other countries as well. Those nations that obtained the data have commenced their own Metal Gear research. Where does it go from here? What happens when the world is flooded with variations of Metal Gear? 
we'll probably be looking at an era similar to that of the nuclear arms race. That was one of the reasons we organized philanthropy. I understand that Fortune's father, Marine Commandant Scott Dolph, had the same misgivings. That's why he proceeded with the development of the anti-Metal Gear weapon, Metal Gear Ray. In fact, Ray alone can drastically redefine tactics when you consider its seafaring capacity to approach, strike, and break off from targets. I also believe that Ray was a solution for renewing interest in the Marines, whose role as a rapid response force has dwindled over the last few years. That underwater mine is believed to have built-in compound sensors for detecting acceleration speed, changes in water pressure, body temperature, and other data. A light touch will trigger one of these, so be careful. Snake, it's Stillman. Stillman's here. Yeah? He was waiting for me. Right. I did a quick inspection. Arsenal Gear's security system is similar to the antibiotic function of a living creature's immune system. Surveillance of the inner system is handled by periodic scans using a number of agents with the capacity for detecting data that doesn't belong in the system. Once the agents detect any invading data, the information is passed on to an antibody production system. From there, a program referred to as an antibody agent is autonomously produced to neutralize or eliminate the invading data. Added to that, there's a solid barrier existing between GW's optic neural net, its physical and logical base, and the other general nets. Referred to as the bit-brain barrier, this wall is a filtering system for preventing the infiltration of foreign data. This security system makes it very difficult to attack the system from the outside. I'm afraid nothing can be done without sufficient preparation. The rumors about Big Shell being a big cover-up are all true. Otacon? I had Snake check everything out. Sure, there's some facilities to clean up the pollution, but they're not running at full capacity. Don't you think it's funny that even though two years have gone by since the incident, they haven't managed to clean up all the crude oil? Of course, the media doesn't report that kind of thing. I think they're having fresh shipments of crude oil brought in to replace the stuff they've cleaned up. The story you were told about toxic chemicals being released if the plant were blown up also seems pretty fishy. I don't think it's actually true. Information is being suppressed on a huge scale. These guys seem to think that the new Metal Gear is worth all the effort and money they're spending on it. So I've been lied to all along. No, I think even your CO didn't know what was going on. And that's probably what he's been telling you. I didn't mean by the Colonel. I meant by you. Huh? We never lied to you. We just didn't tell you everything, that's all. <sighs> <laughs> you know, you're a pretty interesting guy. You're just like Snake said. What did he say? That you're a weak, simple-minded, stubborn fool. A, a weak, simple-minded... Ah, oh, don't worry. He didn't mean anything bad by it. Nothing bad? Well, what could possibly be worse than that? That lying, useless, backstabbing, mincing son of a... Raiden, I'm his friend. I know him better than anyone else. I know he's not that kind of guy. Yeah, so what? And, uh, by the way, there's one more thing you should probably know about Snake. What? He's right here. Next to you? Yep. Did he hear... Every word. I'm... I'm just gonna get back to the mission now. Vamp seems to be anticipating the trajectory of your shots from the minute movements of your muscles. There's no such thing as a perfect system, though. There must be a way to throw him off and land a shot. Raiden, don't use the target locking function. He'll be able to read your trajectory. Aim from first-person view instead, and fire off a barrage with the automatic if necessary. Raiden, he has the advantage when he's on water. Wait until he's on land before you attack. When he starts to close in, that's your chance. Aim and fire from first-person view. Raiden, bullets veer off course once they hit water. Handguns and automatics will have little effect on him when he's submerged. Use grenades instead. Remember what Vamp said. That life reaction tank is a death trap. Make sure you don't fall in there accidentally. Raiden, you won't survive inside the life reaction tank. If he tries to drag you in, hit the left analog stick and buttons repeatedly to break free. You can shoot down the knives Vamp throws. Aim at them in first-person view. It looks like he's anticipating the incoming bullet's trajectory from the movement of your muscles. Relax, though. He doesn't have you all figured out. Why not? 
You managed to land one when you fought him on Strut B. I guess I did, but the SEALs didn't even manage one hit. It's that skull suit of yours. This thing? Yeah, the skull suit compresses your musculature, so that probably makes your moves harder to read. As long as you don't make any obvious moves, you can keep him guessing. What kind of obvious moves? Like using the L1 button to lock onto the target. Good thinking, Otacon. Raiden, don't use the target locking function. Vamp will anticipate your trajectory if you do, and you'll never manage to land a shot. Be careful, Raiden. You're a dead man if you fall into the life reaction tank. That's right. The life reaction tank cleanses polluted water with microorganisms. These organisms are activated by pumping them with large volumes of oxygen. As a result, the water's specific gravity is extremely light, making it impossible to remain afloat. Once you fall in, you'll never come up. You can't move once his knife nails your shadow. Shadow binding? Are we talking about some kind of ninjutsu? I don't think so. It's probably some form of hypnotism. Hypnotism? I'm guessing it's the power of suggestion, augmented by his speech and movements, coupled with the manipulation of the light reflecting off the blade of his knife. What should I do? I can't think of any way to break his spell on such a short notice. The easiest thing to do is to make sure his knife doesn't hit your shadow. Raiden, if his knife nails your shadow, you won't be able to move for a while. If this happens, your only option is to rapidly press a button and move the left stick around to free yourself from his spell. You know, you can get rid of your shadow if there are no light sources. Maybe if you knock out some nearby lights, you won't have to worry about his shadow trick. If the guy goes underwater, slap on your thermal goggles. That should give you an idea where to throw your grenades. Colonel, they've apparently completed the final check procedure for Arsenal gear. Find Emma on the double. You've got to get her to install the virus program that the President gave you. When you find her, take her to the computer room on level B2 in the core of Shell 1. Snake, did you catch all that? I didn't make it on time. Arsenal's going active. Yeah, I heard. The hostage rescue's gonna have to wait. I'm going after Emma. We'll secure the computer room. Looks like we can't install the virus program without Emma. Can't your partner do it? I would if I could, but the security for this system is no joke. I need more time. That's why we need her. Understood. I'll make sure you have your family reunion. Uh... What's up? A lot of years have passed between E.E. E. and me. Then you should see her, right? I don't have the right to see her. We can talk about this later. Raiden, I think you'd better get moving. Emma's in the locker room to the north, right? I'm on it. Raiden, go and find Emma. She should be in the locker room to the north of your area. You could ask Snake for more details if you need them. Raiden, Emma is in the core of Shell 2, somewhere in the northwest sector of Level B1. Arsenal gear will go online soon. Rescue Emma ASAP. Colonel, I'm in the locker room, but there's no one here. Could she have gone somewhere else? I don't think so. Emma is somewhere in that room. Search more carefully. Raiden, there's a note over there. Log in, and you may be able to ascertain Emma's position. Jack, what was that sound just now from the locker? I heard it too. I wonder... Open it up. Raiden, Emma is supposedly being held somewhere in that north area. Arsenal's about to be activated, so hurry! Raiden, we don't have much time left. Emma should be to the north of filter chamber number two, where you fought with Vamp. Raiden, you have to hurry. E.E.'s -E life is in your hands. You can find the locker room where Emma is to the northwest of the flooded area. Go. Snake, I don't see Emma. E.E. -E. I can't believe Emma managed to get out of that room by herself. Take a more thorough look around. I hear something inside a locker. That must be Otacon's sister. Open the locker. Vamp mentioned a purified hydrogen bomb. Any idea what it is? A purified hydrogen bomb is a nuclear weapon that doesn't use a nuclear explosion to trigger a nuclear fusion reaction. There are two theories for triggering a purified hydrogen bomb. Of the two, our nation focused its research efforts on the laser inertial compression theory. Theoretically, it's the same as laser nuclear fusion. By solidifying deuterium and tritium at an extremely low temperature to create fuel pellets and bombarding these pellets with a high-output laser, the surface of the pellets evaporate. This creates a reaction that results in the inward compression of the pellets. 
the center portion of a pellet reaches the necessary extreme temperature and pressure conditions for confining nuclear fusion and thereby creating a fusion reaction. I understand that research in this area continued into the last century, but I'd heard they hit a wall when they couldn't come up with a miniature laser capable of the necessary ultra-high output. From what you tell me, I guess I'll have to assume they overcame that problem. Can you hear me now? Nanocommunication? That's right. I have nanomachines, too. Then you're not one of them. That's what I've been trying to tell you. And you came to rescue me? Actually, I need your help to stop Arsenal. I understand you're the only one who might be able to do it. And who told you that? The President. Really? I need you to come with me to Shell One. Your brother's waiting for you there. My brother? Come on! We have to get moving! This place will be flooded soon! Leave me! You can swim. You used to love it. How do you know? Your brother told me. He's really here? That's right. He's here to rescue you. I don't believe you. He would never come for me. And I'm telling you he's here, waiting for us at Shell One. No! He left me, my mother, when we needed him the most. When my father died, all he could think about was himself. Emma, we can go over all that later. But first, we have to get out of here. No! I hate water! It's hopeless! I can't swim! Put your ear against my chest and listen to my heartbeat. Your heartbeat? Count the beats. Don't think about anything else. When you reach 100, open your eyes. By that time, we'll be on the other side. Give me a signal if you think you're running out of breath. What will you do then? I'll swim faster. Raiden, what's your status? Colonel? I've got Emma Emmerich here. We've managed to avoid drowning. Good job. Get her over to Shell 1 as soon as you can. That's going to be hard with the connecting bridge on the upper level destroyed. Didn't Olga say something about taking the oil fence at the bottom of Strut L? Yeah, I remember that. You should be able to go down by way of Strut L. Try and get over there. What about Emma? She's been injected with something and she can't walk without any help. Take her with you. Free your hands of any equipment and hold down the action button to give her a hand. To release your grip on her, take your finger off the action button. Emma can sit and wait until you help her back up. And be careful. You won't be able to use any weapons while you're leading her. Now head for Strut L. We're on our way. Raiden, we've infiltrated the computer room. What's your situation? Emma's safe. We're heading your way. <sighs> Good job. Shell 1's deserted. Looks like everybody's aboard Arsenal. I had a look at the system, but there's nothing I can do. EE's our only hope. Right. I'll put her on then. Huh? EE? -E? How? I'll use my codec as a relay. Uh, <clears throat> Here she is. Uh, Hal? Uh, EE, -E, is that you? Hal. EE. -E. Um... Why are you involved with Metal Gear? Huh? You knew our family's dark history and still got involved? What's wrong with you? I should have known. Answer me. Why are you repeating the same mistake? I... I wanted to hurt you. I wanted to see you suffer. E.E.? -E? You abandoned me! No, that's not what happened. All right. That's enough. <sighs> Who are you? I'm a friend of Otacon's, Emma. Otacon? Enough with the sibling rivalry. That's not what this is. We haven't got time for this. Raiden, get her over here right now. I... I... Gotcha, Snake. I'll head over there with Emma. Most of the enemies aboard Arsenal, but I suggest you be careful. Make sure Emma gets here in one piece. Raiden, take care of my sister. Don't worry. I'll get her there. Raiden, take Emma to the computer room on B2 of Shell 1's core. She can launch the virus that you receive from the President. It's the only way to stop Arsenal gear. The flooding is getting worse. Go back to filter chamber number two where Vamp was, before the area is completely underwater. Move! Raiden, there's no time to visit the locker room again. Get back to filter chamber number two quickly! Are you reading me, Emma? Yes, loud and clear. The President said that Arsenal gear was the Patriot's key to supremacy. That's as good a description as any. What exactly is it? It's a massive data processing system capable of controlling information on a global scale. A data processing system? That's right. The system's a social device for maintaining the Patriot's control. You've lost me. 
Well, in this day and age, information emerges from every direction and is freely distributed. A variety of information gathered by servers employing the latest in high-speed communication networks and P2P technology is rapidly circulated to individuals. In fact, the speed of this circulation process is accelerating on an almost daily basis. The Patriots seem to be afraid of this development. Apparently, they believe that their role will shift from dominant to dominated. Huh? Uh, let me give you an example. You're aware of Solid Snake's anti-Metal Gear activities, aren't you? Yeah, I know a little about it. Well, that's just a small sample of uncontrolled information. I can guarantee you the Patriots did not want Solid Snake's name publicized. Now, look at it like this. Political scandal, corporate corruption, up until now, the Patriots have managed to keep a lid on these and other self-serving events. But with their existing data processing system, they're no longer able to effectively control the flow of information generated at the individual level. With the newly created system, they can fully regulate digital information. High-level information can be categorized in stages, given clearance levels, and deleted as necessary, never to be seen by the public. By deleting such information, the Patriots can shape the course of history as they see fit. Somebody's bound to catch on. No, the memory capacity, not to mention the lifespan of the average individual, is extremely limited. On the other hand, digital information lasts virtually forever. It doesn't deteriorate. So? The alphabet. 26 letters, right? It could have been 30 letters. What if the four deleted letters were controlled by a program? Impossible. It's not. In fact, something similar is already underway. Do you know how many genes exist in an individual? About 30 to 40,000? Right. That's what was announced at the turn of the century. But there's actually 100,000 according to the original theory advanced by the scientific community. Information regarding the remaining 60,000 was suppressed by the Patriots. No. Why? How would you know? Do you know what a gene looks like? Did you count them yourself? There are research organizations. Of course. And their reports have already been subtly altered. They're even beginning to believe the doctored reports. GW is a system that allows the Patriots to decide what will be recorded in tomorrow's history. So what we're talking about is one huge censorship system for deleting information which might be inconvenient to the Patriots. Exactly. The actual physical core for handling the task, GW, is installed in Arsenal. It's the only system in the world with an optic neural AI that has a parallel processing capacity of 980 trillion Hammonds. I suppose that being a specialist in neural AI and complex logic played a significant role in your association with the Metal Gear project. That's not the only reason. What do you mean? Huh. I guess there are plenty of other reasons. Yes, there are. I understand. Do you? So Arsenal Gear was actually designed to protect the GW system, wasn't it? Um, yes. It's armed with everything, including nuclear weapons, and is fully equipped with cyber-terrorist countermeasures. Physically and logically, it's the ultimate fortress for housing GW. But is the AI actually capable of controlling everything? No. GW is only the system's core. It's only for deciding what data is stored or deleted. The actual subsystem for executing the task exists within our social structure. What? Let me guess. The Y2K countermeasure contained a program designed by the Patriots. Yes, and everything supplied from that day onward contains the same program. Impossible. Do you know how a computer operates? Do you really know the basic principles on how data is exchanged? Uh... Nobody's aware of it, but there's a subsystem in place, and it's about to be activated. Is that why Solidus wants to burn out every electrical circuit in Manhattan with a nuclear blast? Probably, but the overall system isn't actually complete. What? It still lacks the necessary factors for judging situations. I heard they were planning a major experiment in the next few days to provide complex data for GW to study. And suddenly all this happens. Emma, it's not your fault. If it wasn't for the terrorists... Yeah, you're right. Well, I think that's about all I know. Right. Uh, thanks. I think we'd better head for the computer room. <sighs> My bird in the computer room! Is he safe? When you're underwater with Emma, her O2 gauge will be displayed below your own gauge. Be careful, her O2 gauge has lower reserve than yours. I guess we won't have any time to waste then. Keep an eye on Emma's O2 gauge. Take the shortest possible way to get through the flooded area. Raiden, the flooding has been advancing all this time. Some of the air pockets you could have used on the way in may not exist anymore. Be careful. 
Ryden, accompany Emma to strut L. Descend to the lower section of the strut and cross the oil fence to shell one. Press down and hold the action button near Emma to hold her hand. Start moving with the button pressed down and you can lead her by the hand. Push the action button again to let go. You won't be able to take her hand when you're holding a weapon. Keep that in mind. Ryden, how's Emma doing? She's pretty shaky on her feet. Whatever Ocelot drugged her with, it's still having an effect on her. Poor thing. Look after her, okay? I'll try. She can't even walk by herself because of the drugs in her system. See how she has to sit down when you let go of her hand? If you have to release her hand, make sure she's somewhere safe. Don't let her go in sight of the enemy. If Emma loses consciousness, drag her just like you drag the enemy's body around. Unconscious, huh? Jack, what's up with you? Oh, uh, nothing. Hmm. Don't leave Emma in an unsafe spot when she's unconscious. Drag her if you have to, but get her to safety. Do you see Emma's life gauge underneath your own? If Emma's life gauge were to run out, I don't need to explain that, I think. Keep her safe and get her to strut L. Emma's life gauge will recover slowly while she's sitting down resting. If her life gauge is starting to run low, you should let go of her hand so she can rest. You will not be able to hold any weapons as long as you're leading Emma by the hand. You have no choice but to let go of her when engaging the enemy. Hide Emma in a safe spot as soon as you see hostile personnel in the vicinity. After you eliminate the danger, pick her up and proceed on course. Emma's terrified of the sea lice. She won't move. I sympathize. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near those things either. But we can't exactly sit here. Arsenal gear's about to go online. Raiden, you'll have to get through there even if it means forcing her to move. I know it seems cruel. We have got to move Emma past that section. Let her sleep through it. Knock her out, or use the tranquilizer gun. Raiden, where do you think you're going? I don't believe it. Are you trying to ditch Emma? Get back to where she is right now. Raiden, go with Emma to Strut L. If you exit the Shell 2 core and head south on the KL connecting bridge, you'll get to Strut L. There's no time. Move it! Okay, Raiden. Let me talk to Emma. Sure. One condition. No arguing. No problem. Put her on. E.E., -E, is that you? Yes. What do you want? Why did you get involved in weapons development? A lot of people will get hurt. Even more will die. I'm talking about the destruction of homes and cities, radioactive contamination for years to come. You, of all people, should know the horror of nuclear weapons. You know about our family's dark history. Why, E.E., -E, why? You left me. You made my life a living hell. I didn't have a choice. Don't lie to me. The pool, you could never look me in the eye after the accident. You took the easy way out so you wouldn't have to face me. That way you could avoid responsibility every day. You ran. You ran away so you wouldn't have to face the pain. No, that's not why I left. You left me and took the easy way out. That's not true. I left the house because... You're a criminal, just like me. A criminal? I know what you did. You manipulated our account on the network. But... Look at what you're doing now. You're nothing but a cracker. No, I'm just applying my knowledge for the cause. The cause? What cause? Justice? For peace, E.E. -E. I'm not like Snake. I, I can't carry a gun and face the enemy. That's why I do what I do best. Oh, right. Nice justification, Hal. Forget about being a criminal. You'd make a great lawyer. All right already. That's enough. Look, I'd like to talk to him. Him? You mean Otacon? Yes. Can you connect me to him again? Hey. Otacon again? Yeah. What's up, Raiden? Uh... Out of my way. Let me talk. You want to talk to Otacon? Yes. I'll put him on. Yeah? What is it? Up to now, scientists have continued to be active participants in war. What's your opinion? There's no doubt that war has been an ideal event that fuels the progress of science. But therein lies the trap. We scientists must establish some form of work ethic. It's a tragedy that both the government and the military act as sponsors to modern science. What are you talking about? The atom and hydrogen bombs were born from laboratories owned and operated by universities and private enterprises. Los Alamos and the Lawrence Livermore Labs were run by universities. There's nothing strange about that. Weapons development and universities. 
This may come as a surprise, but science requires that information be exchanged freely. You're referring to the will of Professor Oppenheimer, aren't you? For me, science and weapons always existed at different levels. I never thought that my research results would bring about misfortune to others. That was until the Shadow Moses incident. I have no regrets. That's where you're wrong. We scientists know the dangers of a nuclear threat. It's up to us to protect the people. We can't allow it to be exploited by nations or their politics. Man and nuclear weapons cannot coexist. Mere mortals were never meant to handle nuclear fusion. Science defines me. My government respects me. Can you tell me what's wrong with that, can you? Okay, that's enough. Snake. Let me talk to him. Uh, oh, yeah. Otacon's busy right now. You'll have to settle for me. What? Uh, okay. Right. Now what do you want? Hal's wrong. Science doesn't exist to benefit the world. Uh, then what is it for? Science is for the individual. For me, it's a way to realize my dreams. That sounds pretty greedy. You can't realize your dreams without greed. And what's your dream? Take revenge on Hal. To beat him in his own game. Revenge? I am going to make him regret the day he left me. I am going to make him realize he was wrong. Of all the idiotic. I think that's enough. Idiotic? It's my goal, my reason for being alive. Hal is wrong. He's only being used by his country. He's pitiful. Even you guys are using him. Me? I'm using science to achieve my own dream. Real bright, lady. That's exactly the line that scientists are never meant to cross. Right. I sold my soul for revenge. I will never forgive him. I'll pretend this conversation never happened. No. You tell my brother exactly what I said. You... Emma! What? You're speaking your mind, not your heart. <sighs> Just leave it at that. Uh, okay. Emma, this is about GW, but is it really possible to automate the scale of censorship? Do we have that kind of computing capability? Of course we do. And it would be impossible to do this unless it was automated. There's too much information for human beings to handle. Let's take your specialty, military operation, as an example, shall we? The U.S. military began to aggressively adopt the digital model in both combat and daily operations at the turn of the century. That's true. Battlefield networking, the revolution in military affairs, and of course, the VR training regimen. Information is the deciding factor in the outcome of conflicts. It's because of that reality that the military's invested trillions of dollars in high-tech weapons and equipment. There's no night or day in war or information. Right. 24-7. There's nothing that we couldn't see through electronic eyes and ears. And that's what gave us the capability to collect, analyze, and understand tactical data in real time? No! Just the opposite. What we ended up with was too huge a load. We knew literally everything, from the position of every platoon on both sides to the number of clips every infantryman had left. As a result, nobody could figure out what the big picture meant. Not even the most experienced and skilled general could because we are flesh and blood. Humans can't adapt to the information age. Is that it? Basically. No human being can make an intelligent command decision in the information overload of digitized wars. So R&D into computerized systems to assist in the process was initiated. The Defense Department tested a large-scale AI-driven system for troop logistics during the Gulf War. Apparently, they got the results they were looking for. And you're saying that worldwide information censorship can be performed the same way? Yes. It's possible, given GW's capabilities. Do you get it? Raiden, take Emma and head for Strut L. Strut L is on the south end of that KL connecting bridge. Raiden, there should be a ladder down to the water somewhere near your present location on Strut L. Take Emma to the ladder. Raiden, remote control missiles cannot be used outside the big shell. Why? The signal will be scrambled. There's electronic interference surrounding the big shell. Done by the terrorists? Perhaps. Probably to prevent any UAV or other searches by us. But they use radios and ciphers too, right? Of course. They wouldn't set it up to interfere with the several channels that they are using. The only thing affected is your remote-controlled missile. Fortunately, the interference isn't too strong. While inside the big shell, you should have no problem using a remote-controlled missile. The collapsed section of the bridge has been repaired. Emma should be able to handle it. Take her over to Strut L. 
Ryden. That's the entrance to Strut K. You can't get inside, and there's no reason to go in. Go south, to Strut L instead. Ryden, that door doesn't seem to open. According to our information, the ladder down to the lower section of Strut L is to the south. Keep your eye on Emma and go south. Ryden, take Emma and go to Strut L. There's a ladder down onto the oil fence on the ocean surface from that strut. What do you think you're doing to her? Ryden, I may have to sign off for a while. Anything wrong? Just a small errand. Don't worry about it. What's it about? Here goes. I'm going offline. Snake. Hey, Ryden. How's everything? What were you doing while you were off? Nothing. I told you. Don't worry about it. I have a question for you. What is it? How do you feel about heights? I can't say I like heights. The water's higher on my phobia list. Why? Well, we have to go down a ladder. How far down? Just a little bit. Why do I feel like we've had this conversation before? How little is little? Mm, about 130 feet. Hmm. Huh. Think you can do it? Would you take no for an answer? How are your legs? Better. The numbness is gone. I can climb down on my own. OK, follow me. This is Ryden. Do you read me? Yeah, what's up? We've made it to the lower part of Strut L. We'll have to cross the water from here. Can Emma walk? Yeah, she's OK. The pontoon bridge doesn't look too sturdy. Emma's going to have to cross it alone. Right, the oil fence. There are ciphers and several guards. Ryden, you're carrying a PSG-1, aren't you? Yeah. It's time to play sniper. Not bad. This spot gives me a good view of the targets. You're going to have to cover Emma until she crosses to Strut E. I'll get there and provide some support of my own. Thanks. Think you can handle it? Yeah, I know the drill. I faced a similar situation in advanced mode level 4 VR training with the PSG-1. VR? Uh, guess it's better than nothing. Make sure you don't hit Emma. Right now, with Arsenal's boarding in progress, security should be at a minimum. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Given the situation, they've probably got claymores in place to make up for the security shortage. Make sure you use your thermal goggles. Right. Okay, I'm heading for strut E. Emma, are you reading me? Loud and clear. I'm gonna clear a path for you from here. How? Sniper fire. You're kidding. Trust me. What if I fall into the sea? I, I can't swim. You were doing pretty good a few minutes ago. Okay. Think you can do it? Would you take no for an answer? No. no. All right, get going. You'll be fine. Ryden, where do you think you're going? Your job is to safeguard Emma. Give her a safe passage with the PSG-1. Stay out and give her cover until she makes it safely across the oil fence. Use the PSG-1 to snipe out anyone who tries to interfere with her progress. Don't forget to pick up more ammunition for the PSG-1 when you run out. They should be close by. Hand tremors are unavoidable when sniping. It can, however, be kept to a minimum by taking the prone position. Go into a crawl and select the PSG-1. Emma won't survive a fall into the water. Any explosions in the proximity can rattle the oil fence and pitch Emma into the sea. Exercise caution when using the Stinger missile and other high-impact weapons. Ryden, there's a problem. They're invisible to the naked eye, but there are Claymore mines set on the oil fence. The Claymores will become visible with thermal goggles on. Snipe them out and protect Emma. Emma is still heavily drugged. She doesn't seem to have regained complete control of her body yet, and her judgment is not what it should be. She runs the risk of walking blindly into dangerous situations. Whenever you want Emma to pause, fire at the ground near her feet to signal her. That should make her stop. Take the opportunity to eliminate whatever poses a threat to her. If you don't want to kill, use a sniper rifle that can fire tranquilizer rounds. Your PSG-1T fits the bill. It works just like the regular PSG-1, so consider it an option. The PSG-1T only fires tranquilizer rounds, so remember, it won't shoot down a gun cipher. Unfortunately, you don't seem to have one of those. You'll have to eliminate the enemy instead. Pentazamine can temporarily steady the hand. It's something to consider when you need to do some precise shooting. Ryden, look out for the gun cipher. Shoot it down before it can get close to Emma. The remote-controlled missiles cannot be used in outer areas of the big shell. Remove Emma's attackers with the PSG-1. I know you've already heard this, but don't shoot Emma.
You would never do something like that on purpose, right? Mm. Are you... are you going to shoot again? No, I would never do something like that. <sighs> That's what I thought. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, listen. If you shoot this time... If I do... I won't save your data. Got it? Raiden, we're on our way to Strut L. It won't be a long wait. Snake, are you close? Keep it together. We're almost there. Just hang on until then. Snake? We're having some problems. You're gonna have to deal by yourself for a while. Take good care of Emma, all right? This is Snake. Can you hear me? Yeah, nice and clear. I've reached my sniping position on Strut E. I'll provide support fire from here. Right. Do me a favor and take out whatever I miss. Just call me when you want me to shoot. Raiden, it looks like that man's reached Strut E. Request backup from him if you feel that Emma is in trouble. He may be of some use to us. Raiden, Emma's not doing well. Shouldn't you ask Snake to give you a hand? Snake, I can't handle this alone. Okay, I'll take care of it. Damn, I don't think I can do this. Snake, take over for me. I'll take care of it then. I'm going to show you how sniping should be handled. Take a good look. I'll start sniping from strut E, but I'm not always going to hit the target, and there'll be a pause during reloads. You're going to have to keep shooting, too. My sniping field will be limited to the area you're watching through your PSG-1 scope. Keep a good lookout on Emma's surroundings, even while I'm shooting, all right? Raiden, watch where you're aiming. Raiden, what are you aiming at? Cover Emma. That's a pretty good shot, kid. Now how about aiming at the enemy? Raiden, I'm on your side. Raiden, Emma's in danger. Take out Vamp now. You'll do serious damage with a headshot. Aim for his head. Raiden, Emma's in trouble. Target Vamp only. Do not under any circumstances hit Emma. Aim as precisely as you can. Raiden, Emma's not going to last too much longer. I have a feeling Snake will be able to think of something. Contact him ASAP. Raiden, Emma's been stabbed. That bastard! How bad is it? She's conscious, but the bleeding's bad. I'm bringing her over there right now. <laughs> Raiden, get that disc over here as soon as possible. I'm afraid her time's running out. I'll be there! Snake, what's your situation over there? Emma seems to be, uh, doing something to GW's defensive capabilities. All we need now is your disc. You'd better hurry. I don't think she's gonna make it. How's the bleeding? She's... Just get over here. You'll find the coast is clear with everybody aboard Arsenal right now. Understood. Oh, damn. Yes, Emma's not doing so well. <sighs> Jack, you did your best. Raiden, Emma is waiting for you in the B2 level computer room of Shell 1's core. Get over there. Got it. Colonel, I've reached Shell 1. Good. I see you managed to make it across the oil fence. Jack, hurry. Emma should already have reached the computer room. The only way to stop Arsenal gear is to have Emma introduce the virus you're carrying into the system. There's not a second to lose. Get yourself to the computer room on the B2 level of Shell 1's core. Emma is not doing very well. Jack, hurry. Raiden, the oil fence you crossed is at the bottom of that ladder. You don't have time to go back to the bottom of Strut E. Hurry to the computer room on B2 in the Shell 1 core. Understood? Snake, how bad are Emma's injuries? It's about what you'd expect. Oh, no. Just hurry. Raiden, we're in the computing room on B2 of Shell 1's core. Emma's not doing so well. Get over here as soon as you can. Most of the enemy personnel's been moved inside Arsenal gear, including the search and destroy teams. Even if you're sighted, you won't have to worry about the backup being called. Just hurry over here. Arsenal's launch has initiated a security lockout. Otacons managed to override anything that leads to the computing room. This is no time to get sidetracked. Hurry! Raiden, where are you going? We're on B2 of Shell 1's core. Get over here, quick! Raiden, what the hell are you doing? Get yourself over to Shell 1's core, floor B2, now! Please, hurry! E, e she's okay. How's Emma doing? Not very good. I can't do a detailed examination here, but it looks like the damage to her muscle tissue is equal to the actual size of the wound. What are you trying to say? That there's the possibility of intestinal damage. Added to that, she's bleeding bad, losing blood pressure. 
She needs abdominal surgery, but this ain't the place to do it. I've plugged the wound as best I can, but it isn't going to be enough. She's running out of time. We have to hurry. Raiden, I asked EE e. about the disk you have in your possession. Basically, it's a set of computer worm programs. Each worm is structured to mimic the data units that compose GW. As a result, GW scan agents are unable to detect the program. In short, the program doesn't trigger GW's antibody production system. What's more, the program can penetrate the bit-brain barrier that surrounds GW. Once the worm program enters the neural net, it transforms the surrounding neurons. The transformed neurons become solid and can no longer function as neural nets. As time passes, the neurons transform and perish, stripping the overall system of its power to define and comprehend data. This in turn causes language disorder and memory loss, leading to the shutdown of functions as the system becomes unable to maintain itself. Jack, are you reading me? Do you want to save your mission data up to this point? Your mission data has been saved. Mr. X? Ninja? Correct. It's me. I thought you were the leader of the Russian troops. No. That was just a smokescreen. A smokescreen? I was sent to provide you support. Support? Who sent you? The Colonel? No. The Patriots. What? I... I deceived my troops. Betrayed them. But why? My child is being held hostage by the Patriots. It all started two years ago when I lost my father during the tanker incident. My men and I had nowhere to go. So we joined forces with an illegal Russian organization. The Russian Mafia? Something like that, actually. I learned much later that it was a subordinate organization of the Patriots. I was expecting at the time. When I gave birth to my child, it turned out I was in a hospital run by the Patriots. In the morning, my child was gone. My baby is being kept somewhere in this country. Have you ever met your child? No. Once a month, they send me a photo of my child via network. I've never even held the child in my own arms. I see. Given your situation, nobody can blame you for what you did. That's your opinion. What about Snake? I thought you were enemies. He wasn't responsible for my father's death. Actually, we owe him our lives. So you joined hands with him to pay back a debt? No, mutual gain. Mutual gain? My job was to assist you. If Solidus gets away with Arsenal, your mission is a failure. The Patriots would judge that as failure on my part and terminate my child. Putting it simply, my child's life depends on your success. So you did it all for your child. But why would the Patriots want to help me? Are they hoping I'll take Solidus out? No, you're just like me. We're just pawns. Pawns for what purpose? The S3 plan. Huh? You'll figure it out sooner or later, but I wonder if you'll handle the truth. What do you mean? Listen, we haven't got time for this. Solidus will commence his attack any minute. He's got to be stopped. What about the virus? No results so far. I think the Patriots have tampered with the program. Will it work? I don't know. Get me out of this thing. Not yet. I'll release your restraints after I leave this room. Where's my gear? Snake's got everything. I couldn't bring it here. And where do I find Snake? Jack, are you all right? Oh, uh, yeah. Jack, is it true? What Solidus said? Yes. It's unbelievable. Drafting small children, sending them to war? It's not allowed under international conventions. ICC rules don't mean a lot in war. Someone told me that there are over 300,000 children in combat right now. I was just one of them. So you remember. I thought your memory had been manipulated by them. It was, but I have nightmares every day. Pieces of the past I can't put together. Why didn't you tell me? You couldn't begin to understand. You wouldn't know that until you try me. I didn't want you to get hurt. <sighs> there was never a real reason for me to fight, except that someone put a gun in my hand. And that someone was him. It wasn't your fault. If I survived the day's fight, I was praised, fed, and had a bed to sleep in. I think I was only six when I held my first AK. But I'm not even sure of that. Jack. I'm not like Snake. I never questioned why we fought. 
There was no purpose, no way out. They give you a gun, you ask how many to kill. If you didn't, you were the one they shot instead. It's okay, no one is blaming you. We were shown Hollywood action films every day. The kind with macho guys and big guns. They call it image training. Ugh. They, they built us from the ground up into killing machines. We were fed once a day. I can still taste the gunpowder they mixed into the food. Gunpowder? In the food? The gunpowder had toluene in it, giving it hallucinogenic properties. It kept us drugged, controllable. Oh my god! <sighs> when the Civil War ended, those of us who survived were taken in by NGOs. They gave me a new life in the States. I can't complain. But nothing's changed. The only people who have no problem with my past have secrets and agendas of their own. Terrible nightmares. Every night. I can never forget. Jack. I'm afraid of the night. That's why I don't sleep next to you. You should have told me. Told you what? That I'm a killer? And always have been? No. No. What I hate more than anything else in the world is my own past. I didn't want you or anyone to know about it. <laughs> now I know why I was chosen for this mission. No one can take him on, take him down, except me. I've been kept alive this long for this. I knew as soon as I saw Solidus. Jack, I love you the way you are now. You have to believe me. I didn't know anything about you, I admit that. Where you were born, how you grew up. But I know that now. And I know that what I feel for you can only get better. And I'll share in your past if that's the price. It doesn't work that way. No one can share the burden of what I've done. It's not one of those warm and fuzzy things couples share. I accept the good and the bad, Jack. That's what you do for someone you love. I don't want to share my past with anyone. I just want to forget about it. Jack, I haven't told you, you know, about what I've done. <sighs> the last two years with you, it's been more than I've ever hoped for. Jack. But I can't go any farther. I know you want to get married. I... But I can't. I can't risk starting a family. There's no way to erase my childhood. <laughs> it's all right, Jack. Please, don't say any more. Raiden, those restraints aren't something you can remove yourself. Have faith in Olga and wait for her to deactivate them. Get your equipment back first or you won't be able to do much good. Rendezvous with that man and retrieve your gear. Olga said that man would be waiting up ahead, if I recall. Get out of the room and head north. Raiden, rendezvous with that man. Go through the northeastern door and head north. Raiden, do you copy? You must continue your m mission. I've lost all my gear. I need to locate Snake. He was never factored into the simulation. Leave him out of this. I can't do much naked, especially in this temperature. That's true. You won't be able to attack or enter the hanging mode either. I think Snake has my gear. Raiden, take out Solidus and his men. You must recover Arsenal intact. Colonel, are you under orders from the Patriots? Your role, that is, mission, is to infiltrate the structure and disarm the terrorists. My role? Why do you keep saying that? Why not? This is a type of role-playing game. The point is that you play out your part, and I expect you to turn in a perfect performance. Colonel, I just remembered something. What? That I've never met you in person. Not once. Hmm. Complete your mission according to the simulation. Colonel, who are you? No more questions. We have Rosemary. What do you mean by that? Over and out. Raiden, that door is not going to open. Head north instead. Rendezvous with that man and get your equipment back. Raiden, are they on pursuit? Fighting is not an option without your weapons. Find some kind of cover fast. 
Another tactic is to trick the enemy. You could pretend you're still in restraints. Raiden, get yourself logged into the node. With no weapons, you're going to need to rely heavily on the radar to stay out of sight. Proceed with extreme caution. Understood? Raiden, rendezvous with that man and get your gear back. There's a door on the northeast, second level. Get yourself over there. Raiden, you won't be able to hang, throw, or chokehold anyone in your current state. Why not? Is it really necessary to ask? It's just not a good idea to perform those maneuvers. There could be... complications. Oh, really, Jack? Do we have to spell it out for you? Really? Hmm? You currently have no weapons, Raiden. You can only do one-handed punches and no combos whatsoever. In other words, you have very few ways to fight back if the enemy sights you. Make sure you don't find yourself in that situation. <laughs> What's the matter, Raiden? Did you catch cold? No wonder, running around the place naked. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I <laughs> right. You need to do something about that cold. Someone might hear you sneezing and come over to investigate. Take some cold medication for starters. You should keep warm somehow. Try on a cardboard box for size. That's better than nothing, isn't it? Raiden, with nothing to protect your body, any attack you sustain will cause greater damage than usual. Avoid combat at all costs. Raiden, temperatures in that area appear to be real low. Yeah, just like a refrigerator. Maybe to keep GW frozen. High temperatures are forbidden for fiber optic neuro AI processors. Don't catch a cold. Raiden, be on the lookout. Those soldiers are outfitted with special gear. Roger. Armed with what? Probably arsenal gear equipment called Tengu. The suits use exoskeleton technology to augment human strength and improve mobility with artificial muscles. Not the kind of opponent you want to take on without your weapon or other equipment. You'll just have to move about without being seen. Understood? Colonel, is this... Right. The famous mass production metal gear. That entire section seems to house a maintenance line for metal gears. Jack. I'm all right. Those mass production metal gears are in adjustment phase. They're not a threat. But it's entirely possible that there's an operational metal gear somewhere ahead. Stay focused. Raiden, turn the game console off right now. What did you say? The mission is a failure. Cut the power right now. What's wrong with you? Don't worry. It's a game. It's a game just like usual. You'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. What are you talking about? Raiden, something happened to me last Thursday when I was driving home. I had a couple of miles to go. I looked up and saw a glowing orange object in the sky to the east. It was moving very irregularly. Suddenly, there was intense light all around me. And when I came to, I was home. What do you think happened to me? Huh? Fine. Forget it. Raiden, we're in trouble. Look at what's on TV. Infiltrate. The enemy fortress. Outer heaven. Destroy. The final weapon. Metal Gear. Big boss here. Enter the track on the bridge to the right. Over. I say again. Your duty is to infiltrate Zanzibar land and seize Kiel Marth, an abducted Czechoslovakian biologist. President Baker should be somewhere to the south of where you blasted through the wall. Hurry and save him before the terrorists discover his code. You got a PSG-1? You can use that against Sniper Wolf. Hurry up and save Merrill. Snake, they've input both detonation codes. The only way to stop the launch now is to use the card key to re-input the codes. Your mission is to infiltrate the Fortress Galluade, rescue the hostages, and neutralize Metal Gear before its assembly is complete. Snake, there's a fort in the conveyor belt. The machine is automatically sorting cargo according to some system. Take a good look at the device. Snake, take the power plant out. Set C4 explosives on four key points to destroy the structure. Snake, destroy the power plant's main turbine. It's located in the B1 floor of the plant. Break into the B1 floor. Variety level 13. Rescue Merrill, the return of Ginola.
Variety Level 7. Shoot down the space invaders. Training will have to be postponed if we are invaded by UFOs. Weapon Mode SOCOM Level 1. Destroy all targets to reach the goal. Number of targets, 3. Snake. Remember what de Gaulle said. The graveyards are full of indispensable men. Snake, you're all alone and surrounded by bad guys. Try to be careful and avoid getting into a fight whenever you can. Snake, like Shakespeare said, Nought's had, all spent, where our desire is got without content. Basically it means that your desire can get you into trouble if you're not careful. That goes for items too. Don't get too greedy or you might be sorry. Be careful, Snake. Kawanishi, Nosaguchi, Kino no Gibash, Takiyama, Ukusu no More, Suzumi Gatari, Tada, Yorano, Ichino Tore, Unino, Yamashika, Sasabe, Afudai, Tokodai, Miyokenguchi. I noticed this a while back, but you have far too many game overs. Sorry to be blunt. You really stink at this game. Honestly, though, you have played the game for a long time. Don't you have anything else to do with your time? You seem to get a real thrill out of slaughtering the enemy. Are you frustrated about something? Listen, you haven't reported in for a long time until now. You think you can just call only when you want something? You disappoint me. Communicator Entertainment Program, Idea Spy 2.5, Episode 1. New York, here in the city where dreams come true and desires rule, something is being bought, sold and thrown away, even as we speak. But behind the scenes of business as usual, the nefarious J.E. Corporation lines its already bloated coffers with profits from worthless products. As J.E. swindles yet another innocent into purchasing high-priced junk, the FBI mobilizes a top-secret task force to put a stop to the menace. Now, the city's best-kept secret spy is out there, briefed and ready to protect the people from J.E., the catalog of conspiracy. Just call him 2.5. I hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuffed worm in Flapjaw space with the tuning fork does a raw blink on Harry Carey Rock. I need scissors. 61. I can't believe it. That someone who has committed all those twisted acts in the woman's bathroom would make it this far. Oh, this is the end of the world. Lolly Lule Lo. Lolly Lule Lo. Lolly Lule Lo. Um, um, hmm? Ryden? Um, I'm eating right now. Get back to me later. Um. I was a North American fall webworm in my past life. Ah, oh, those were the good old days. What were you in your former life? Even my patience has its limits. I just can't leave this thing up to you any longer. I'll do the fighting. You can just go home. Actually, I'm in really bad shape financially. I pay money to my ex-wife as part of our divorce settlement, among other bills. I just had no choice but to make you pay for lunch the other day. I'm really sorry. You wouldn't be trying to give yourself a bogus score using some ingenious trick, would you? That's just about as low as anyone could possibly stoop. I can't believe you sometimes. That reminds me. I saw Gubiyama the other day in Chubonigi. He said to give you his best. <sighs> I'm not home right now. Please leave a message after the beep. Beep! Actually, there is something I have been meaning to tell you, but I just couldn't. I think you should know, though. On Saturday morning last week, I saw a guy leaving Rosemary's room. How should I put it? It was like they were... intimate. I'm sorry. Sorry to bring this up during the mission, but... An anemone or clematis plant's juice can cause a rash. When pruning them, it's a good idea to wear gloves. Mind the gap. Jack, it's me. Hi, Rose. Jack, I owe you an apology. If it's about that conversation just now, I'm the one who's sorry. No, it's something else. What is it? That day at Federal Hall two years ago, it wasn't a coincidence. I was ordered to keep an eye on you. Keep an eye on me? Yes. 
by the Patriots. You're a spy? I suppose, yes. It's an ugly word. Are you still there? Was sleeping with me a part of the job? I fell in love with you. How could anyone? I can't excuse what I did. I've reported every detail of your personal life to them these two years. What you did, said, everything. Must have been fun. But some things I didn't tell anyone. Oh. Like what I felt for you. So that's why you were involved in this mission. I should have known. Why else would they toss an analyst into the mix at the last minute? I'm sorry. I know what I did was wrong. No matter where I go, I get used. I reinvented myself to suit your tastes. Hairstyle, clothes, the way I moved, things I talked about. You say you love the color of my hair, my eyes. They're not even real. You must have gone over my psych profile with a fine-tooth comb. It was my job. Great performance. Had me completely fooled. What I really wanted was for you to see the real me. It hurt to play out this, this artificial romance. It was worse to lie to myself than to you. The more love you gave me, the more it hurt. Because I knew the person you loved was just a character. So it was artificial on my end too. It was just a game, not the real thing. Oh, Jack. I feel better knowing that. What? I was in love, or thought I was, with someone who didn't exist. I was trying to be someone I wasn't by loving what wasn't real. I don't know who you really are. The person I knew isn't real. She's not the woman I'm talking to right now. In a sense, the deception was my own, not theirs. Jack, I thought I was acting because that was my job. But I did fall in love with you. That wasn't an act. You expect me to believe that? Ugh. It's okay. You had your reasons, right? Hey, I understand, but I have nothing left to- Jack! What? I'm... I'm carrying... I'm pregnant, Jack. Rose! What's going on? Sorry about earlier. I had to use you as bait to gain access to Arsenal. It worked. Why didn't you tell me about Olga? You never asked. Ugh. Not happy about that? Get over it. Any effects of the virus yet? Still waiting on that. So, it was rigged by the Patriots? Looks like it. From what I can tell, Arsenal is headed for Manhattan. I don't know what Solidus is planning, but we'll have to deal with it one way or another. There's also a troop of production model rays ahead. How many units? Twenty-five, according to Olga. Twenty-five? Yeah. Can't say I've faced that many Metal Gears before, but I think we can deal. No way we can. We can, because we have no other choice. How? I've stocked up on Stinger missiles. Oh yeah, Olga left this for you. Teach yourself how to handle the blade. You're going to need it at some point. Move the right stick to control the blade. Move the right stick up and down to slash up or down, and left and right to slice the blade horizontally. Move the right stick in a circle to twirl the blade. Click the right stick to get a stabbing strike. It has more reach and power than normal strikes, but you're also more open to counterattacks. Weigh the pros and cons well. Push the weapon button with the blade selected to block. With the weapon button pressed, you'll be able to deflect enemy gunfire. Push the L1 button with the blade selected to block. With the L1 button pressed, you'll be able to deflect enemy gunfire. Be careful, though. Blocking works only for frontal attacks. Every time you press the L1 button, you can turn the blade from the blade side to the back. Every time you push the weapon button, you can turn the blade from the blade side to the back. Swing the blade with the L1 button pressed down to do a back strike. Using a back strike allows you to knock out the enemy without killing them. Are you comfortable with the blade? The enemy's straight ahead. As soon as you're ready, we're off. Raiden, don't you have to practice using the blade? Good. You met up with Snake. When you're done practicing with the sword, head north. I think you've had enough practice. It's time to get going. You need to catch up to Snake. Snake, have you ever enjoyed killing someone? What are you talking about? I'm not sure. 
Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between reality and a game. Diminished sense of reality, huh? VR training will do that. No. It was field training when I was a kid. I lied, Snake. I have more field experience than I can remember. It's not VR that's doing this to me. Raiden, we don't carry guns to take people down. We're not here to help some politician either. You can say that because you're a legend, a hero. I'm Jack the Ripper, a dirty reminder of a terrible mistake. Legends don't mean a whole lot. I was just a name to exploit, just like you. People will remember only the good part, the right part of what you did. There's no right part in murder, not ever. And we're not in this to make a name for ourselves. Then what are you and Otacon fighting for? A future. You can stop being part of a mistake, starting now. What am I? What am I supposed to do? Snake, Raiden. Otacon, you all right? Yeah, so are all the hostages. That's good news. How's everything on your end? All right for now, but there is something. What? The Colonel's last transmission was strange. Strange? How? Just strange. No idea. Interference? I don't know. Where is this Colonel? I don't know. I've never met the man, actually. I'll dig around. Thanks. I owe you one. If there's anything else, call me on the codec. I might be able to help. The frequency is 141.12. Ah! 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 Raiden, are you all right? Nice work. We'll just stay on this course. Use your blade. Don't let all that practice go to waste. Watch your back, Raiden. You never know where they're going to pop up. Raiden, come on! Raiden, hurry up! Don't fall behind. What's the matter? Is that the best VR kids can do? What? If you've got that kind of time to spare, worry about yourself instead. <clears throat> I'm all right. You watch your back, too. Don't worry about me. It's just a scratch. There's a door at the north end of this corridor. The enemy's on the other side. We'll rush it. They must be on the other side of the door at the north end of this corridor. Security will be tight, but we'll just have to break through it. Let's go. There's a ladder on the north side. According to Olga, the enemy is beyond that point. Let's move out. Raiden, the only way through is to take them all out. We're going to have to do it. There's a door at the north end of that corridor. Solidus should be somewhere on the other side. Stay with Snake and keep north. Snake's life gauge is right below yours. You live and die together. Do you understand? I'm sure everything will be okay, but if he gets in a tight spot, give him all the backup you can. I'm counting on you. There should be a tall ladder on the north wall. Those guys should be at the top. Start climbing. The enemy is as desperate to stop you as you are to get past them. Taking them all out is the only way through. Do it. If you don't want to kill, use the sword to hilt strike someone and knock them unconscious. Raiden, that door is locked. It looks like the only way to unlock it is to defeat all the enemy soldiers. Take them all out. Have you found out anything about the colonel yet? His behavior is getting stranger and stranger. Nope, nothing yet. Just give me a little more time. Brings back memories, doesn't it? If I had a stealth camo, I'd be tempted to join in. Raiden, watch your back. Those men have special issue equipment. These are the so-called Tengu commandos I've heard so much about. They have blades that bullets just glance off of. Fight it with your own blade. You've had time to practice, right? Even if they can bounce bullets back with their swords, they won't be able to deflect anything too low. Use the first-person view and fire at their feet. Tengu soldiers carry the P-90 personal defense weapon. It lies somewhere in between a rifle and a pistol. The designers of the P-90 and its ammunition focused on the convenience of a pistol and the penetrating power of a rifle. It fires the new 5.7 by 28 millimeter cartridge. The lightweight rounds feature a projectile weight of 2.02 grams and a muzzle velocity of 715 meters per second and low recoil. Its piercing power is also quite high. It can penetrate an ordinary bulletproof vest at a distance of 100 meters. The body is made entirely of plastic and perfectly symmetrical, so even left-handed shooters can easily use it. It carries a 50-round magazine. The magazine is mounted on top so it doesn't get in the way when firing from a prone position. 
But the biggest threats are its rapid firing rate and its accuracy. It's probably best to avoid a full frontal assault. If you use the blade to defend yourself, you should be able to deflect even the attacks of the P-90. Tengu soldiers wear a special kind of combat suit that was developed by DARPA. It seems to utilize some kind of exoskeletal technology. The suit encases the soldier in a layer of armor and is outfitted with actuators which utilize artificial muscle tissue to amplify the soldier's strength and increases chances of survival. Using the human strength amplification provided by the artificial muscle, a soldier can move faster, travel farther, and carry heavier weapons than normal. In other words, he has superior scouting and combat abilities and can basically dominate the battlefield. Any soldiers you face who are wearing this special kind of suit will be able to move with superhuman agility. Make sure you're prepared. Metal Gear Ray was originally designed by the Marines as a countermeasure against other Metal Gear variations. But the mass-produced model is only based on the Marines' design. It's been redesigned to guard Arsenal gear. Now it protects another Metal Gear. I heard all this from Emma. It seems that the mass production model Metal Gear Rays have cooperative engagement capability, with GW as the primary control system. Several Rays can connect with Arsenal Gear and mutually exchange data. Within this unified domain, all Rays can cooperatively manage threats through notification, pursuit, and interception, all in a lifelike manner. All for one and one for all. There's no weak spot. When protected by a pack of rays, Arsenal gear can move without cruisers or destroyers as escorts. Raiden, I don't think that door can be opened. Hurry up and rendezvous with Snake. Raiden, there's company coming. Find somewhere to hide. Easier said than done, I know. Hey, how about pretending you're still in captivity? Raiden, you don't need to go up to the second floor. Just keep going until you reach the door to the far north. Raiden, that door's locked behind you. There's no way to go back. Just keep heading north. Raiden, what do you think you're doing back there? We need to stop Solidus. Meet up with Snake as soon as you can. Raiden, Snake's waiting. He's outside the door on the northeast section of the second floor. Hurry up. Raiden, you better meet up with Snake and get your gear back fast. You won't be able to choke, kick, hang, or throw like that. Raiden, you can't protect yourself like this. The damage you receive is greater than usual, so you really need to watch your back. You don't have a chance in battle like this. Keep moving, but stay out of the enemy's sight. Snake should be waiting for you somewhere around there. Look around. I've heard your call sound go off a couple of times now. Try answering it for a change, okay? Raiden, that door's locked. Head north instead. Raiden, take a look. Hmm. Is this the mass production model Metal Gear Ray? Those mass production model Metal Gear Rays look like they're being serviced. I don't think they can move. Keep going. Raiden, did you catch a cold or something? Of course not. I'm... <coughs> I knew it. It serves you right for running around like that. I didn't exactly have a choice. <coughs> Bless you. You'll have to do something about that cold. If you can't stop sneezing, you're an open invitation to everyone within earshot. Take some cold medication and get something to wrap up in at least. I'm sure Snake is fine. Let him deal with fortune. You keep going. You have to stop Arsenal gear and take out Solidus. What's the matter, Raiden? Snake, where are you? Oh, that's right. You can't see me because of my stealth camouflage. Stealth camouflage? Otacon brought it for me. <sighs> Why didn't you tell me about it? Well, let me guess. I didn't ask, right? You're learning, kid. Now remember, you may not be able to see me, but I'm around, watching your back. Raiden, about this colonel of yours. I found out where he is. Where? Inside Arsenal. What? I've checked out all the possibilities, but I keep coming back to Arsenal. It isn't a relay point. It's the origin of the signal. Hmm. And the encryption protocol it uses is exactly the same as that of Arsenal's AI, the so-called GW. What the hell does this mean? I think it means you've been talking to an AI. That's impossible. The Colonel probably isn't GW per se. GW was most likely stimulating cortical activity in the dormant part of your brain through signal manipulation of your own nanomachines. 
The kernel is, in part, your own creation, cobbled together from expectations and experience. That's crazy! But it's probably the truth. The virus may be starting to affect GW, which would explain the kernel's behavior. It was all an illusion? Everything I've done so far? Raiden. Snake. What's happening around here? I don't know. What I do know is that you're standing right here in front of me. Not an illusion. Flesh and blood. Huh? It's your call. You can drop this if you want. No. I can't do that. Let's go. Raiden. They've got Rose. What? Rose is being held in the holds. It's a trap. Help! Rose! Raiden. Get a grip. But Snake! It's a trap. Since the Colonel doesn't exist, there's no way he can take Rose hostage. Yeah, you're right. I am right. Okay. Uh, does Rose exist? Don't be weird. She's your... What if I've never really met her? What? If the Colonel is something that I partly dreamt up, then everything I remember about her could be... Don't jump to conclusions. You and Otacon are the ones that say the Colonel never existed. Raiden! Is this what Olga was talking about? Raiden, aim for Ray's head section with the Stinger missiles. The mass production Metal Gear is unmanned. It's probably under the control of GW, the Arsenal Gear AI. A chaff attack should cause electronic interference and confuse Ray for a moment. Use the opportunity to fire a Stinger into it. The Stinger's targeting lock won't function while the chaff is around. You have to aim manually. Use the sword to deflect Ray's machine gun fire. You can't move while you're aiming with the Stinger. But hitting the R2 button will let you do a quick change of weapons. If you see Ray getting ready to attack, use the quick change to deselect the Stinger and get the hell out of there. Approach Ray with extreme caution. There's no way you'll survive being stepped on. Even if you managed to get out of the way, you'd probably get knocked off your feet by the impact. You'd be wide open to an attack. However, if you drop and roll at just the right time, you should be able to get away without losing your footing. Damn it! Take one down, another takes its place. How many are there? Raiden, don't give up. There's a lot of them, sure, but as long as you keep fighting, you have a chance. Fight! The RGB-6 should be capable of inflicting damage as long as you aim for the head section. But you probably won't be able to land a shot unless you get in pretty close. Ray's missile targeting system doesn't seem to be very effective against targets within close range. You could try going in really close. Press the L1 button to keep facing a particular ray unit. Push the L1 button again to switch to another ray. Keep on your toes. For a last-ditch evasion from an attacking ray, try dropping and rolling. A well-timed roll could come in handy. The rays follow certain basic formations for their group attacks. Try to figure out what these are. Ray's defensive capabilities are pretty high. Sometimes they stay still, but they're on their guard. Fire a stinger and they'll just block it. You'll have to use either a chaff or go for that small strike window during Ray's own attack. Mass production Ray models were designed to flank arsenal gear. Their system probably isn't equipped to take on human opponents, and the scale of their movement should be larger and clumsier than yours. Keep moving and you'll have your chance. Don't give up. Raiden, watch out for Ray's guided missiles. They have heat warheads, designed for anti-tank or anti-warship purposes, so it's probably not intended for anti-personnel use, but you still won't survive a direct assault. It's probably also equipped with an image-guided tracking head. The guidance system is quite advanced. But it's not designed as an anti-personnel weapon, so you should be able to jam it with some chaff. You should also be able to evade it if you keep moving. Dodge by rolling. The engine system of Metal Gear Ray appears to be outfitted with artificial muscle tissue. The artificial muscle consists of actuators that resemble human muscle tissue. It's made of a macromolecular fiber that conducts electricity. This system is different from ordinary engines based on mechanical activators and oil pressure. It's capable of many different kinds of movement using a single kind of engine. In other words, it's capable of performing a complex series of motions smoothly and effortlessly. Ray's movements are both quick and precise. Be careful! Ray's armor is made of a state-of-the-art ceramic titanium alloy. A network of simple sensor arrays stretches around the body, including conductive nanotubes that connect the surface and the interior of the armor. When the condition of the armor changes, 
Self-diagnostic systems located throughout the armor detect and respond to this change, like a network of autonomic reflex nerves. This acts as a damage control response system, performing functions such as shutting down a damaged section or rerouting signals through auxiliary circuits. At the same time, any holes and tears in the armor are repaired to some degree by a kind of nanopaste that's secreted automatically from valves near the damaged area. This nanopaste almost makes Ray seem like it's bleeding. You probably won't be able to pierce Ray's armor with the weapons you're carrying. You'll have to aim for the head where the armor is relatively thin. Aim for the head using stinger missiles. Ray shoots a jet of super-pressurized water from its mouth. Fundamentally, it's a hydro cutter, but the power is on a completely different scale. The moment Ray opens its mouth is your chance to attack. Shooting a stinger into Ray's mouth should inflict some real damage. Raiden, are you receiving? We're still here. How is that possible? The AI was destroyed! Only GWs. Who are you? To begin with, we're not what you'd call human. Over the past 200 years, a kind of consciousness formed layer by layer in the crucible of the White House. It's not unlike the way life started in the oceans four billion years ago. The White House was our primordial soup, a base of evolution. We are formless. We are the very discipline and morality that Americans invoke so often. How can anyone hope to eliminate us? As long as this nation exists, so will we. Cut the crap! If you're immortal, why would you take away individual freedoms and censor the net? <laughs> Jack, don't be silly. Don't you know that our plans have your interests, not ours, in mind? What? Jack, listen carefully, like a good boy. The mapping of the human genome was completed early this century. As a result, the evolutionary log of the human race lay open to us. We started with genetic engineering, and in the end, we succeeded in digitizing life itself. But there are things not covered by genetic information. What do you mean? Human memories, ideas, culture, history. Genes don't contain any record of human history. Is it something that should not be passed on? Should that information be left at the mercy of nature? We've always kept records of our lives, through words, pictures, symbols, from tablets to books. But not all the information was inherited by later generations. A small percentage of the whole was selected and processed, then passed on. Not unlike genes, really. That's what history is, Jack. But in the current digitized world, Trivial information is accumulating every second, preserved in all its triteness, never fading, always accessible. Rumors about petty issues, misinterpretation, slander. All this junk data, preserved in an unfiltered state, growing at an alarming rate. It will only slow down social progress, reduce the rate of evolution. Right. You seem to think that our plan is one of censorship. Are you telling me it's not? You're being silly. What we propose to do is not to control content, but to create context. Create context? The digital society furthers human flaws and selectively rewards development of convenient half-truths. Just look at the strange juxtapositions of morality around you. Billions spent on new weapons in order to humanely murder other humans. Rights of criminals are given more respect than the privacy of their victims. Although there are people suffering in poverty, huge donations are made to protect endangered species. Everyone grows up being told the same thing. Be nice to other people. But beat out the competition. You're special. Believe in yourself and you will succeed. But it's obvious from the start that only a few can succeed. You exercise your right to freedom, and this is the result. All rhetoric to avoid conflict and protect each other from hurt. The untested truths, spun by different interests, continue to churn and accumulate in the sandbox of political correctness and value systems. Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community, afraid of a larger forum. They stay inside their little ponds, leaking whatever truth suits them into the growing cesspool of society at large. The different cardinal truths neither clash nor mesh. No one is invalidated, but nobody is right. 
Not even natural selection can take place here. The world is being engulfed in truth. And this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. We're trying to stop that from happening. It's our responsibility as rulers. Just as in genetics, unnecessary information and memory must be filtered out to stimulate the evolution of the species. And you think you're qualified to decide what's necessary and not? Absolutely. Who else could wade through the sea of garbage you people produce, retrieve valuable truths, and even interpret their meaning for later generations? That's what it means to create context. I'll decide for myself what to believe and what to pass on. But is that even your own idea? Or something Snake told you? <sighs> That's the proof of your incompetence right there. You lack the qualifications to exercise free will. That's not true. I have the right. Does something like a self exist inside of you? That which you call self serves as nothing more than a mask to cover your own being. In this era of ready-made truths, self is just something used to preserve those positive emotions that you occasionally feel. Another possibility is that self is a concept you conveniently borrowed under the logic that would endow you with some sense of strength. That's crap! Is it? Would you prefer that someone else tell you? All right, then. Explain it to him. Jack. You're simply the best, and you got there all by yourself. Oh, what happened? Do you feel lost? Why not try a bit of soul-searching? Don't think you'll find anything, though. Ironic that although self is something that you yourself fashion, every time something goes wrong, you turn around and place the blame on something else. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. In denial. You simply resort to looking for another, more convenient truth in order to make yourself feel better. Leaving behind in an instant the so-called truth you once embraced. Should someone like that be able to decide what is truth? Should someone like you even have the right to decide? You've done nothing but abuse your freedom. You don't deserve to be free. We're not the ones smothering the world. You are. The individual is supposed to be weak but far from powerless. A single person has the potential to ruin the world. And the age of digitized communication has given even more power to the individual. Too much power for an immature species. Building a legacy involves figuring out what is wanted and what needs to be done for that goal. All this you used to struggle with. Now, we think for you. We are your guardians, after all. You want to control human thought? Human behavior? Of course. Anything can be quantified nowadays. That's what this exercise was designed to prove. You fell in love with me just as you were meant to, after all. Isn't that right, Jack? Ocelot was not told the whole truth, to say the least. We rule an entire nation. Of what interest would a single soldier, no matter how able, be to us? The S3 plan does not stand for solid snake simulation. What it does stand for is selection for societal sanity. What you experienced was the final test of its effectiveness. That's crazy! You heard what President Johnson said. The Arsenal's GW system is the key to their supremacy. The objective of this exercise was to establish such a method. Raiden. There are also reasons behind your selection. Solidus raised plenty of other child soldiers. Do you know why we chose you over them? Hmm. It was because you were the only one who refused to acknowledge the past. All the others remember what they were and pay for it daily. But you turn your back on everything you don't like. You do whatever you like, see only the things you like, and for yourself alone. Yes, Rose can attest to that. You refused to see me for what I was. I lied to you, but I wanted to be caught. You pretended to be understanding, to be a gentleman. You never made a conscious attempt to reach out to me. The only time you did was when I gave you no choice but to do so. I was just trying not to. What? Trying not to hurt me? Dear, the one you were trying not to hurt was yourself. Avoiding the truth under the guise of kindness is all that you did. It occurred to you to do nothing but look out for yourself. 
Even if you claim that it was for my sake, that feeling was nowhere to be seen. In the end, everything was for your sake. I was never part of the picture. <laughs> exactly right. So you see, you're a perfect representative of the masses we need to protect. This is why we chose you. You accepted the fiction we've provided, obeyed our orders, and did everything you were told to. The exercise is a resounding success. Didn't I tell you that GW was still incomplete? But not anymore, thanks to you. Your persona, experiences, triumphs, and defeats are nothing but byproducts. The real objective was ensuring that we could generate and manipulate them. It's taken a lot of time and money, but it was well worth it considering the results. I think that's enough talk. It's time for the final exercise. Raiden, take Solidus down. Think again. I'm through doing what I'm told. Oh, really? Aren't you forgetting something? If you die, my child dies. The termination of vital signals from your nanomachines means the death of Olga's child. Not to mention the death of Rose. She's wired the same way. Rose, does she actually exist? Of course I do, Jack. You have to believe me. Damn! It will be a fight to the death. Solidus at least wants you dead. We will collect the necessary data from this last fight. Then we'll consider the exercise closed. So, Jack the Ripper, will it be Solidus, the Patriot's creation, or you, Solidus's creation? Our beloved monsters, enjoy yourselves. Raiden, take Solidus down. Think about Olga's child and your Rosemary. You must win. Raiden, you have to beat Solidus. This is your last duty. We're not just pawns in some simulation game, you know. Yes, you are. You're nothing but mere weapons. No different from fighter jets or tanks. What the? The old model destroyed four years ago was Rex. The new amphibious model is Ray. Both of these are the same as the code names used by the U.S. Armed Forces to refer to Japanese warplanes during World War II. Your code name, Raiden, too, comes from the Japanese Navy's name for one of its interceptors. Stop it! I'm not a weapon! Oh, really? Do you know the code name the U.S. Armed Forces used for the Japanese fighter Raiden? It was Jack. Both of you are just weapons to be used and thrown away. Just weapons to be used on the battlefield. Just pawns in a game, exactly as you said. And a weapon has no right to think for itself. Now, it's time to fulfill your purpose. Defeat Solidus. Raiden, you don't have a lot going for you with just your bare hands. You have your own blade. Use it. Watch out for Solidus's snake arms. If they catch you, shake yourself free by pressing the left stick or the buttons again and again. The missiles from the snake arms pack a punch but they're fairly low on maneuverability. You should be able to shake them as long as you don't stop moving. If you can't get rid of them, slice them with the sword. Raiden, cut down the missiles from the snake arms with your blade. Time the stroke and let it rip. Don't attack from the front. His defenses are too good. Go around to the side or back and get him. Don't stay in Solidus's range. It's too dangerous to try and take him head on. Keep your distance. Your strategy should be to hit fast and move out. Push the right stick in to strike out at Solidus from outside his range. Make sure your aim is good, though. If you miss, you'll be wide open for Solidus's counter-strike. Solidus uses an accelerator, so make sure you don't lose him. If you catch fire, just go into a roll until the fire goes out. Solidus has an eye patch on his left eye, so he should have a blind spot to his left. Maybe slipping into that spot will give you an advantage. The power suit that Solidus is wearing is a state-of-the-art exoskeleton that makes use of artificial muscle tissue. It gives the person wearing it superhuman motor skill capabilities. It's the same technology used in Ray's engine system and the Tengu soldiers' combat suits. Your skull suit uses a little bit of it, too. A number of sensors stretch between the surface and interior of the suit like a neural network. When these sensors detect an impact, the artificial muscle in the suit reacts instantaneously by automatically contracting and diffusing the damage. So you can't just chop him in half with your sword. 
Your suit uses the same technology. You could almost say that your suit, Solidus's suit, and Metal Gear Ray are like brothers. If you roll, you should be able to barely avoid his blade or snake arms. Solidus's defenses are solid. You should aim for the unprotected parts. If he's defending high, slash upward and cut him from below. When he's defending low, slash downward and cut him from above. What's up, Jack? Jack, do you need to save? Jack, is that you? What can I do for you, Jack? Jack, you okay? Jack? Jack, tell me you're all right. Need to save? I'll get on it right away. Hey, Jack. Jack, I guess you need to save. Everything all right, Jack? Did you call Jack? <laughs> what do you want? What, need to save? Yes. Hang in there. See ya. Talk to you soon, Jack. Take it easy. Hang in there. Be careful, Jack. Don't give up. You have to come back in one piece. Take care, Jack. Don't push yourself too far. Hang in there. Come back in one piece, okay, please? Don't call me unless you need something. Goodbye. <sighs> Jack, there's no memory card PS2 in the memory card slot. You need a memory card PS2 to save with. Could you insert the memory card PS2 in the memory card slot? I'm sorry, Jack, but there isn't enough free space on the memory card PS2. I couldn't save the data. Jack, I can't save the data unless you format. Don't you want to save? Oh, no. There was an error. I'm sorry, but I couldn't save. Jack, it's me. Everything okay, Rose? Don't you need to save the mission data? Oh, yeah. Thanks for the reminder. Jack, do you remember what day tomorrow is? That again. I'm sorry, but I still don't have a clue. That's okay. What is it, Rose? Talk to me. I'd rather you figure it out. It's important. How important? Important enough, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Why not now? Tomorrow seems more appropriate. I need all the help I can get so that I won't chicken out anyway. Is that the reason you decided to be part of this mission? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna finish this thing by tomorrow no matter what. You know I'll do everything I can to help you. Rose, there's something I need you to do as an analyst. What is it? It has to do with Solid Snake. The leader of this takeover incident is claiming that he's Snake himself. The legendary mercenary? Hmm. I need as much data on him as possible. Everything they have on him after the Shadow Moses incident. He's dead now, isn't he? Yes. Should be a burial record somewhere, too. You should be able to request top-level security clearance from the Colonel. That should get us into the most classified material. I'm on it. I'll contact you as soon as I find out something. Jack, it must be so nerve-wracking to defuse a bomb. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, that was a stupid thing to say. Sorry. That's all right. It's just that I've never been trained in this stuff. You okay? Are you feeling well? I almost threw up a few times. Oh, Jack. But I'm okay. It's not like I'm in this alone. Oh, yeah, that's true. What do you think about when you're diffusing those things? I don't think so much as remember. And I know that I need to resist that and keep my mind blank. I can't let myself be overwhelmed by the fear. So... Am I a part of what you try not to remember? <laughs> I was just kidding, but I guess this isn't a good time for that. No, it is, and I do think about you. I'm trying to remember what's so special about April 30th. Any success? No, not yet. You need to stay alive so you can. Okay, that's a deal. Hey, Jack, I bet bomb disposal's a lot like starting a relationship. Huh? What are you talking about? Carefully dismantling emotional defenses, being on your toes constantly, you know. I guess. Neither of them are my strong point. It's true that you're not the most patient man in the world. <laughs> it's not that. I like to leave things as they are. Are you afraid of what might be hidden inside? Not afraid, just unwilling to deal with complications. Like me? You're... Hey, Jack? Yeah? Do you know why I took this job? Hmm. I wanted to see what you were really like. But we've been together a while. You know me already. No, you never let me in past a certain point, and I need to know what's there. <sighs> oh, are you trying to take me apart now? Hey, it's not important. Good luck, Jack. Jack, do you remember the day we met? I'm kind of busy right now, Rose. 
<laughs> You're right, sorry. I do remember. It was right after I transferred to New York. There are all these tourists around you, in front of the Federal Hall. A group of middle-aged Japanese ladies came up and asked me which building it was that King Kong was climbing in the movie. I said it was probably the Chrysler building. And then you showed up and started mouthing off. You were like, no, it's the Empire State. I said the Chrysler building was in Godzilla. <laughs> we started arguing, and I forgot all about the tourists. I was insisting that I was right, and you were doing the same. The next thing we knew, the Japanese women had gone away, and we ended up going to the Skyscraper Museum to see who had the better recall. We argued all the way to Battery Park. And for nothing. Since the museum was closed, we went our separate ways from the museum. And then I found you again by coincidence out in the base corridor. An amazing coincidence that we were actually working at the same place. That night we went up to the top of the Empire State. It was so beautiful. I could look down on the Chrysler building from 120 stories above ground. I felt overwhelmed. I didn't care anymore who was right. And that was our first date. We watched King Kong in your apartment a bunch of times that night. Didn't sleep till morning. Hmm. If it weren't for that coincidence, we wouldn't be together. I know. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm taking up your time again. What? Take care. Got a minute, Jack? Rose? I found some information on where Solid Snake is interred. Great. Shoot. I've located the grave site. And the body? Exhumed for DNA testing. Well, do you have the results? The right arm was missing, but there was no doubt that it was him. That body belongs to Solid Snake. Hmm. So the head of the terrorist group must be... An imposter. Right. You sound disappointed. I guess. I guess I was kind of hoping to meet the legend in the flesh. I get you. But it looks like he's not behind this incident. Raiden, the president needs you, I think. Disguise yourself as enemy personnel and infiltrate the core section. Your priority is to contact Agent Ames. Jack? What is it? I've always been alone. Huh? I'm so lonely. Lonely? Rose, we've always... Not always. What do you mean? You've never slept beside me. What are you talking about? I... After we've been together in my room, you stay awake all night, or you head for the door. Is this really the time to bring this up? Why, Jack? Why? Listen, Rose, I'm right in the middle of a mission, and I... Why? Why can't you relax when you're with me? Look, the mission, I... Why don't you open up to me? Rose, I, I just can't. All I ever wanted was to share your dreams, to spend a meaningful evening with you. I just wanted to find you by my side when I woke up. Is that asking too much? It's the night. I'm scared of the night. It's got nothing to do with you. Scared of the night? What's that supposed to mean? I can't relax when I'm with someone. Jack, you wouldn't even let me in your room. I need privacy. I just can't be bothered. Bothered? Wrong word. What I wanted to say was that there are certain things that I have to keep to myself. Do you remember that time I forced my way into your room? We'd known each other for almost a year, and you blew up. It was the first time you ever raised your hand against me. I was so worried about you. Look, I'm sorry. It wasn't your violent nature that scared me. It was your room, your heart. Stop it. There wasn't anything in your room. Only a bed and a small desk. It looked like a prison cell. <sighs> Rose? No television set. No family pictures. Not even a poster. Rose, I only use that room for sleeping. A lifeless room. Almost like your empty heart. That's why I tried to keep you out. I thought I was beginning to understand you until I saw that room. Would you have been happier if I had a picture of you hanging on the wall? That's not what I was trying to say. Enough, Rose. We'll talk about this later, after the mission. Right, after the mission. I understand. Well, Jack, it sounds like you and Miss Emma are getting along just fine. Rose? I've been monitoring your every move in conversation. I can't say it's been fun. Give me a break. I I'm only trying to keep her spirits up. Is that right? Absolutely. 
My mission is to get her to the computer room. That's all? Yeah. You're lying. You're attracted to her, aren't you? I'll admit she's cute. Cuter than me? Rose, you're beautiful. You know how I feel about you. Have you remembered yet? You mean April 30th? Yes. It's your birthday, isn't it? Wrong. You're not even warm. What is it then? Forget it. It's nothing. Maybe I'm just a little, a little jealous. Rose. You'd better get moving. Good luck. Jack, how far do you think the Patriots' digital control extends? I don't really know, but it probably influences a lot of what goes on in our everyday lives. Even mundane things like which movies and songs become a hit and what kind of clothes we wear? I think taste would be the easiest thing to manipulate. I mean, think about the kinds of film and bands everyone wants to go to see. It's whatever's at the top of the charts. And if the charts are made up... Exactly. But you can't really control individual taste. It's too closely tied to personality. I don't know about that. Trends have always been about following the leader. Not necessarily. The age of direct personal interaction is over. So is the idea of word-of-mouth communication. Rose, you have any friends you've met online? Huh? Yeah, I do. How many? Well, if you count only the ones I talk to a lot, I'd say about 20. How many of those have you actually met? <laughs> One or two tops. Uh-huh. That's how it is for everyone, I guess. And even if your online buddies had fake identities and were circulating false information, you'd have no way of knowing. Fake identities? Right. And there'd be no way for you to know for sure. Well, what about people who do meet face to face then? Like us. Us? Have you ever really shown me the real you? I wouldn't even know the real me myself. But you're being honest with yourself now. Well, that's how I see it. Well, how am I being honest? I've never seen you show so much feeling, fear, anger, even a kind of giddiness. It may seem a strange thing to say, but you're living out loud for the first time that I've seen. I'm just trying to get the job done. This is war, you know. I do know that. I'm just saying you're different from your usual restrained self. What about you, then? I always want to be open with you as much as I can. Rose, the colonel is acting strange. Oh? I haven't heard from him in a while. What do you mean? Isn't he there? No, I'm by myself. You're telling me you've never met the guy either? No, and they blindfolded me when they brought me here. I've never seen his face. Is everything okay? Yeah, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Rose, can you hear me? I'm right here. Actually, that's okay. Forget it. Jack, what is it? You wouldn't understand. Try me, Jack, please. I can't, not to you. Please, tell me. I can help you. No, there's no way you'd understand. You can tell Snake, but you won't tell me? He's different. Why? I'm in this war, too, with you. No, the war is out here, not on a live feed to some control room. You want me to pick up a gun and fight, is that it? Lord, no. You're the one person that I'd do anything to keep out of this place. Then what is it? I'm a... a killer. But... I see men hit, I see them die in agony, and I don't feel a thing for them. Don't think things like that, Jack. I'm a born and bred killer. Nothing like Snake. He fights for something he believes in. So do you. You're doing your duty. No, I'm not. Somewhere deep inside, I'm enjoying this. This game. Jack, are you okay? How's your murdering going? What? You want to save? Honestly, you only rely on people when it's convenient for you. Be strong. Whatever happens, don't forget that my life's at stake, too. Try to do something for me for a change. Okay, get back to your murdering. You're doing this to save me, right? Don't deny it. I've done so much for you, haven't I? See ya. What? I, I can't believe this. What are you wearing? Well, it's a disguise. A disguise? <laughs> what kind of disguise? Well, I was hoping I could use it kind of like camouflage. You know, fool the enemy into thinking I was a box. You'd have to be an absolute idiot to be fooled by that. Yeah, maybe. But there are more idiots in this world than you think. You mean like you? What? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, good luck. You'll probably need it with that stupid box on your head. You know, that really looks good on you.
You think so? Yeah. Everything looks good on you, Jack. Everything but that stupid box. What? Nothing. It'd be nice if you were this stylish all the time. It's too much of a hassle. Well, at least you could care a little bit more about how you look. You care enough for both of us. Yeah, that's true. But I want to be beautiful. You want people to compliment you? Yeah, especially you. Me? Yes. Is that strange? Not at all. Really? Well, then, next time be sure to compliment me. By the way, Jack, are you smoking? Yep. I thought you quit smoking. Why did you start again? <sighs> there are lots of reasons. Look, I'm only thinking about your health, okay? Remember the last time you quit, how hard it was? Yeah, it was pretty tough. Wasn't it? So you should just- I've got it, Rose. I've thought of a way to avoid all that pain and suffering. What are you gonna do? Keep smoking. Jack! Just kidding. I know it's bad for me. I'll quit as soon as I get back. <sighs> oh. By the way, Jack, what's that you're holding? Uh, well... Look, if it's bothering you that much, you should just say so. Yeah? And if I do? <laughs> just be patient, dear. Rose, no comment? About? I've killed someone. Jack, it's a battlefield. My opponents are living, breathing human beings. This isn't like the VR training. They have bodies. They have had lives. I took all that away from them. But you've got no choice if you want to survive. And yet, maybe because of the VR training, I can't help but try and block out that reality. It's the only way I can manage to fight. Jack. What? I don't care what it takes just as long as you come back alive. Do whatever it takes, please. Just come back in one piece. Okay. Jack, when you get home, let's have a homecoming party. Just the two of us. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm, I'll make dinner. Uh, well, what's wrong? Well, that sounds good, but how about we eat out at that one restaurant instead? You know, the place that we went to recently with the amazing lobster? I really like that place. Well, yeah, I, I guess that's okay, too. Whew. Huh? Uh, nothing. I, I just love lobster. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. Woohoo! Uh, well, then I'll make a reservation. Promise me you'll come back safely. Don't worry. Rose, are you okay? Yes, thank you. It really scared me at first, but I think I've gotten used to it. I'll be behind you all the way, so don't worry. I guess women really are strong. <laughs> not quite. It's not women that are strong. It's me. Just as long as I can count on you. Actually, that's not true. It still scares me to death. But I'll be strong. I'll try. For you. Good luck. You're looking pretty good. Yeah? I wonder how Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin is doing. Well, he's doing pretty good, too. Oh, really? I'm glad. Why are you so worried? Huh? About Pliskin. Well, I mean, he's defusing the bombs along with you. If he screws something up, you'll be... I guess so. He'll be all right, I'm sure. Don't worry about it. Okay. Hang in there. Jack, are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. But Stillman, I'm gonna have to finish this myself. What about Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin? I haven't been able to contact him. I see. I don't know. He's not the kind of guy who'd fold that easily. I'm sure he's still alive. I guess there's nothing we can do but pray for his safety. Yeah, but if we don't take care of these bombs soon, there'll be nothing left to pray for. You're right. I know you can do it, Jack. Jack, I know you're probably doing fine, but don't get discouraged. Remember, Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin is with you, too. You'll be all right. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> don't give me that. Every time you say nothing, it's always something. What's wrong? It's just that, you know, you seem to think pretty highly of him. Well... Yeah, Pliskin's the kind of guy you can really depend on, isn't he? What? What? <laughs> Yeah, Pliskin is one heck of a man, isn't he? He's so cool, so confident. Yeah, yeah. But he's nowhere near as cool as you. You'll always be my number one. Always. But that's not what I meant. <laughs> you know, you're kind of cute sometimes. Bye, Jack. So, looks like you remembered I'm still here after all. Huh? I thought you'd completely forgotten that I existed. Of course not. What's wrong with you? It's just, 
you haven't saved in a while. That doesn't mean I forgot. Is that so? And didn't you think I'd be worried? But... I was really worried. You're okay, right? Yeah. Good. So, Jack, what do you want? What do I want? Well, I'd like to save, if that's okay. Then go ahead. This is a joke, right? Rose. What now? What do you mean, what now? Save my data, please. <sighs> Fine. Don't you have something you want to say before that? Like what? Ugh. All right, I get it. I'm sorry. There. You satisfied? Close enough. You selfish. What was that? Nothing. Just talking to myself. I can't believe it. Stillman's prosthetic leg was all a big lie. Don't be too hard on him, Rose. But he's got no right to go around pretending he's got a prosthetic leg. That's an insult to people who really can't walk. Everyone's got their own reasons. Sometimes you've got no choice but to lie. You're right. I, I guess it is necessary sometimes. Rose? It's nothing. Well, see ya. Right. Save complete. Goodbye. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Nothing. What are you talking about? What am I? Aren't you being a little cold? <laughs> really? Aren't you just imagining things? Maybe I'm just not as warm as that hand you've been holding for quite some time now. Rose, you know this isn't... I know. I'm just teasing you. But I was thinking, I was wondering whether you would be as protective if it were me instead of Emma. Of course I would. Think so? Oh, that's right. You're such a kind person. Rose. Forget about it. Good luck. Now that I think about it, it feels kind of fresh. What does? Before, I could always rest assured that I'd see you again. Now it's different. Now it feels like every word we say to each other counts. <laughs> That's great. We could make this into a book and sell it. Want to improve communication in your relationship? Send your man off to fight a war. Jack. Rose, you know my life's at stake here. So is mine. Rose? I'm sorry, but I'm really worried, too. I can't help but feel like I'm fighting this battle along with you. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Jack, have you remembered what day it is tomorrow? Uh, no. I see. Uh, you said you had something you wanted to talk to me about? What was it? We'll talk about it tomorrow. <sighs> Why does it have to be tomorrow? <laughs> so I can build up enough courage first. And so you won't run away. I would never do something like that. Liar. Every time I want to talk about something, you suddenly remember that you have some work you have to do or you get a stomach ache. Hey, that's not... You know it's true. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything, and I won't try to run away. Is that so? Well, then, we'll talk tomorrow. Yeah. So you have to come back, okay? I know. Jack, how's the mission going? Fine. Fine? Is that it? Look, I really don't feel like talking about the mission, at least with you. I want to talk about something else. Okay, then. Let's talk about you. Me? Yeah, your least favorite subject. That's not... Oh, yeah? Then go ahead and say something. Like what? Anything. Tell me something about yourself. I can't think of anything interesting to say. Why do you want to talk about me so badly? Because I'm curious. But why? Is it really that strange to want to know more about someone you love? No, it's not strange, but... You know, sometimes I... Oh, look, now we're talking about me, not you. <sighs> Why won't you tell me anything about what you were like as a child? What kind of things you liked to do? What kind of people your parents were? I've never heard you talk about any of that. Why? I... Don't you think it's just a little bit unusual? That I don't know anything about my own boyfriend's past? Rose, when I get back, I'll tell you everything. Is that a promise? Yes, it's a promise. <sighs> Rose. So, have you decided to talk yet? Nope. That's too bad. Why are you so interested in me all of a sudden? Because I'm curious. More so than before, does it really bother you that much? There must be some things you don't want to say. Like what? You know, those things you don't want to say. Let's see. Things you don't want to say. Like that you've been married before, that you're 80 years old, that you used to be a woman. Rose. 
What exactly is it you won't tell me? Do you think I'd hate you if I knew? Do you really have that little faith in me? No, it's nothing like that. Then what is it? It's... <sighs> it really bothers me. The fact that there's a side of you I don't know. Sometimes I just can't help myself. You've got me right now. Isn't that enough? No, it's not. I'm sorry. I know I'm being greedy, but it's just not enough. <sighs> Jack, I've been thinking for a long time. You've got a no trespassing sign pasted on your heart. What? No entry beyond this point. You've got it written all over your heart. That's ridiculous. Don't try to deny it. You know I'm right. Stop lying to me. <sighs> Why do you do this? Don't you trust me? I don't know. I like you. I really do. It's, it's not that I'm rejecting you. It's just that... All right. I understand. Forget about it. I'm sorry. But someday, do you think you might let me in to the other side of that sign? Yeah. Someday. Okay. Someday. Promise me? Yeah. I promise. You know, Jack, there's something that bugs me sometimes. What? Why are you going out with me? Huh? Is it because I'm beautiful? Why are you asking me this all of a sudden? And where do you get off calling yourself beautiful? Well, it's the truth, plain and simple. I'm too smart not to realize it and not sarcastic enough to be modest about it. <laughs> Is that so? Well then, your schedule must be booked solid with dates. You bet. I've even hired a private secretary to deal with all of them. But she cancels all of my appointments except for yours. Ooh. <sighs> Sometimes it really does bother me. Sometimes I think all you want is a pretty face to accompany you to parties. What are you- Just to make everyone jealous when they see you with me. You're being ridiculous. Oh, really? But you never talk about yourself. I never know whether it's really me you want by your side, whether you'd ditch me if you found someone prettier. You know that's not true. Really? Then would you still go out with me even if I weren't beautiful? Uh, of course. Do you like me for me, or is it my reputation? Do you really think anyone would say your reputation? <sighs> I'm just joking. Of course I like you for you. Honest truth. Really? Thank you. Jack, tell me, am I really helping you out? Yeah, you're a huge help. I'm lucky to have you as an analyst. Hmm. But didn't you tell me just a little while ago that I should change my job or quit or something? Yeah, and you were pretty pissed off. Why did you say those things? Well, you have to work overtime and stuff. It sounded pretty tough. But you didn't mean it, did you? I was wrong about a lot of things then. I just thought that if we had more time to spend together that... You were thinking of your own danger. Uh, well... Don't you think it's selfish to expect everyone to be at your beck and call? I'm not your personal possession, you know. That's not how I think of you. Is that so? Yeah. Listen, I like you, and I like the me that likes you. But I do not like being summed up as Jack's girlfriend. The very thought of it makes me shiver. There's a lot more to me than just being your girlfriend. The fact that I'm doing the job I want to do is part of that, understand? Yeah, of course I... I want to be recognized, first of all, for who I really am, especially by you. I don't want you, of all people, thinking that I'm just your girlfriend. That's not what I think at all. Can you really say that? Absolutely. Really? I'm glad. Um, Jack, about trying to break into your room. Rose, just forget about it. No, listen to me. I said I did it because I was worried about you, but... It wasn't just that. What? I was suspicious. I thought there might be someone else. Someone else? Another woman. Rose. I really thought so, because sometimes you're so horribly cold. You know I wouldn't. I'm serious. Sometimes I feel like you're pushing me away. So I... Did you get in? Yeah. Are you satisfied now? There wasn't anyone there, was there? No. No, there was no one there. There was absolutely no one in your room. Not another woman. Not me. Not even you. Rose. I'm sorry. I just wanted to apologize, that's all. Talk to you later. Jack, it must be hard for you. Yeah. When I watch people die like this, 
No, I mean, it must be hard for you in general. What? You always seem like you're trying to deny something within yourself, but can't. <sighs> and I have no idea what's making you suffer so much. That's hard for me. If only you'd talk to me about it. There are some things I want you to understand without me having to explain. You can't possibly expect me to... Rose? <sighs> I guess you're right. Maybe if I were a better match for you, I could understand without being told. But I guess I'm not. I guess I'm just too different. Rose, that's... N not true? Yeah. You're perfect for me. The ideal woman, so to speak. Ideal? Yeah. If... Huh? If... If I was... What are you trying to say? Nothing. Never mind. Sorry, I was about to say something stupid. Get back to the mission. Jack, I was serious when I said I wanted you to propose to me. Rose? I was really worried. There are times when it seems like you're not really looking at me and that if I looked away for a moment, you'll disappear. I wanted to make sure you couldn't get away. I thought that if we lived together, maybe things would change. That maybe we could change things ourselves. <sighs> but that wasn't the problem. There was something deeper. I'm sorry. I guess it's impossible for me. What are you saying? I'm sorry, Jack. I love you. I really do. Please believe me. Whatever happens. Rose? Bye, Jack. Colonel, what do you know about that female soldier, Olga? Olga Gerlukovich. Just like that guy said, she commands a Russian private army. Do you know anything else? Anything else? Yeah, anything else. Why are you concerned about her anyway? You know. Jack! No, 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 it's not like that. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll look into her for you. Good luck. Ryden, Rosemary did a bit of research on that female soldier. Jack, I found some information on Olga Gerlukovich. Olga Gerlukovich. She's the daughter of former GRU colonel Sergei Gerlukovich. After the Federation collapsed, the colonel apparently commanded a group of mercenaries that drifted between area conflicts and civil wars. After he died, it looks like she took over control of the group. She has more notches on her gun than you do. Underestimating her prowess will get you hurt. Be careful. Ryden, Stillman is a top-notch explosives technician. Follow his orders and disarm the explosives. Okay, but exactly who is Peter Stillman? Gotcha. I'll look him up. Hold on a moment. Ryden, Rosemary has some information to report. I looked into Mr. Peter Stillman's file. Full name is Peter Stillman, known as Peg Leg Peter. He is a legendary bomb disposal technician. He is also a longtime instructor at the Naval School Explosive Ordnance Disposal and a consultant for the NYPD bomb squad. But five years ago, he lost his leg in an accident. And since then, he hung up his gloves to focus on being a lecturer. He was called back into service because, as he said, he is the only explosive specialist who can stop Fat Man. Although no longer an active consultant, he is still without a doubt the number one guy when it comes to disarming explosives. He should be very helpful to you. Colonel, I just saw this guy go running by wearing a cardboard box. A cardboard box? Who do you think he was? A dead cell? The dead cells are a bunch of weirdos, that's for sure. But they don't wear cardboard boxes. I'll look into it. I'm counting on you. Ryden, Rosemary has something to report. Jack, I looked into that guy a few minutes ago wearing a cardboard box, but... Did you find anything? No, there is no corresponding data in the files for neither Dead Cell nor Colonel Gerlukovich's private army. How about as a surviving member of SEAL Team 10? Of course I looked into that possibility too, but... You didn't find anything? No, I'm sorry I couldn't be of any help. Wonder who the heck he was? Ryden, be on the lookout. Maybe Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin knows something. Why don't you ask him? How about Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin? Did you ask him? Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin's radio frequency is 141.80, right? Colonel, do you know anything about Mr. X? He is not a member of the Foxhound unit. He called himself Deep Throat, almost like he was the Shadow Moses. Ryden, I know what you're trying to say, but that possibility is nil. <sighs> Jack, I'll look into it for you. Hold on a moment. Rosemary has dug up some information on Mr. X. Jack, I looked into Mr. X. I mean, Deep Throat. 
During the Shadow Moses incident, Solid Snake did receive help from a guy who called himself Deep Throat. His true identity appears to be that of former Foxhound unit member Gray Fox. Gray Fox, huh? Correct. His real name is Frank Yeager, the only member of Foxhound allowed to use the title of Fox. He was its best member. In Outer Heaven, he holed up in the stronghold ahead of Snake. He helped him and brought an end to the standoff. But in Zanzibar, he joined forces with Big Boss and became the leader of the upheaval. That's where he fought and lost to Snake. Fox was mortally injured and was picked up by the military. After that, it looks like he was used as the guinea pig in power exoskeleton and gene therapy experiments. Power exoskeleton? Cyborg ninjas, as some people called them. Detailed records were lost in the research center fire, though. After that, he ended up in Shadow Moses? Yes. But why he showed up there is not in the records. Some people believe that it was to get revenge against Snake, but there is nothing definite to go by. So now he's... No, he died in Shadow Moses. That is for sure. So then who is Mr. X? I don't know, but be careful. Colonel, who exactly is that woman? Her name is Fortune. She leads Dead Cell. Hang on a moment. I'll look her up for you. Rosemary researched Fortune for you. Jack, here's the data I found on Fortune. She goes by Fortune. She leads Dead Cell. Her real name is Helena Dolph Jackson. Two years ago, her father, Commandant of the Marine Corps Scott Dolph, was killed in a training accident. Her husband was the former Dead Cell leader, Colonel Jackson. Died in captivity, my data says. After her husband's death, she joined the military. She didn't have any combat experience, but was soon singled out for a particular trait and was reassigned to Dead Cell. What trait? Luck. She was real lucky, like miraculously lucky. Wherever she went, bullets curved away, and missions always ended in success. Is that some kind of joke? I thought so too, but there is not a single record of her ever being wounded, not even a scratch. Jack, be careful, please. Tell me what you know about Fat Man. Okay, hold on a minute. I'll look him up. Rosemary has completed her data search. I looked up information on Fat Man. Fat Man, the Emperor of Explosives. You've already heard how he manufactured an atomic bomb at the age of 10. He appears to have been known throughout the world of explosives since he was a child. He entered the Naval School Explosive Ordnance Disposal at Indian Head and graduated at the top of his class. That's around the time that he met Stillman. He was assigned to the Nuclear Emergency Search Team. He quit soon after, though. After that, he joined Dead Cell as an explosive specialist. He's been there ever since. Why didn't you ask Mr. Stillman? I'm sure he knows lots of other details about him. Someone mentioned the name Vamp. Do you have any info on him? Wait a moment, I'll look. Raiden, looks like Rosemary has something for you. Jack, I found some information on Vamp. He's been a member of Dead Cell since it was first founded, and like Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin said, he's a master with knives. He's originally from Romania. He's apparently no ordinary knife specialist. What do you mean? He can parry bullets. Yeah, I saw him do it. How the heck? I don't know. Also, it looks like he secluded himself from other humans on several different occasions. There is no detailed information on him, though. Be careful. Colonel, who's that person, Ames? I checked the roster of Secret Service members serving the president. There was definitely a person on the list named Ames. So what that ninja said then was not a lie after all? As far as the roster goes, no. Rose, do you have any other information? All right, I'll look into it for you. I'm counting on you. Raiden, Rosemary has a report for you, on Ames. Jack, it's about Ames. Did you find anything? Yeah, only that there's nothing to find. What? There is not a single record, let alone his social security number, address, or background. I couldn't even find Ames' gender, age, or full name. What does that mean? All I found out was Ames, just that one word. Hmm. Even still, Ames is our way to the president. We'll have to make contact. Head for floor B1 in the core of Shell 1. Do you think Ames was telling the truth about the football? Rosemary? Roger that. Jack, I'll look into it for you. Raiden, Rosemary has completed her search. Jack, I found data on the briefcase used to unlock the nuclear launch codes. It appears to be a fail-safe system using the president's DNA base order and input of his physiological data as its key. The lock is said to be impenetrable. In other words, the president himself is the only one who can enter the password. 
Right. On top of that, as Ames mentioned before, the password becomes invalid when the president's brainwaves, heartbeat, etc. are not within normal limits. So the president entered that code by his own free will after all. But why would the U.S. president lend a hand to terrorists? How should I? I don't have information like that. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't. Also, it seems that the need to reconfirm the code after a set amount of time is true. Meaning that the president is safe, right? How about the story of the black case also serving as the launch key to a new model of Metal Gear? That wasn't in the records. Hmm. Stories of a new Metal Gear model aside, it is certain that they have finished inputting the code and are trying to launch the nuclear warhead. Meet with the president and ascertain the truth. Hurry, you must meet with him while he's still alive. Jack, I did a search on the big shell. The tanker accident two years ago spilled a catastrophic amount of crude oil into the bay. The Big Shell is an offshore decontamination facility built to restore the Manhattan Bay environment by trapping and disposing the spilt oil. Around the perimeter of the Big Shell, oil fences were erected in order to protect against any further dispersal of the oil. You see those steeples erected here and there in the fence? Those are piles to draw up the polluted seawater. Gathered seawater is carried to the pump room in strut A first, and all of the larger garbage is collected in sediment pool number one of strut D. This is followed by a two-step purification process in the Shell 2 core water reserve in which oil is removed by microbes. Then it is sent to strut L and sterilized, and finally once again carried to the surface piles and flushed back into the bay. Did the military database include information on the marine filtration facility structure as well? No, I didn't use the database. Huh? I used a brochure. Strut A is a pump facility that supplies the energy to circulate the polluted water drawn from the sea throughout each of the Big Shell sections. The south side is the actual pump facility itself, while the north side is the control room. Strut B is a generator facility that generates electricity for the Big Shell. The first floor is its substation. Strut C is the residential area. It supports life at sea for all of the workers on the Big Shell. That being said, almost all systems are completely automated, so there aren't many workers to be found. Strut D is sediment pool number one. It's a facility where extracted polluted water is stored without being disturbed, so that its large pollutants settle and are purged from it. The Strut E roof functions as a heliport, while inside it serves as an aerial transport hub for materials to each of the other struts. Because its sea entrances are cut off by oil fences, there is hardly any transportation of goods into the big shell by seafaring vessels. Almost all of the materials brought in are via the roof heliport. Inside strut E is an automated system to sort materials. It recognizes cardboard boxes and separates them appropriately. By automatically delivering packages to each strut, efforts have been made to streamline manpower. Strut F is the storage center. I think a variety of materials for maintenance of the big shell are stored there. There might be something that would come in handy. Why don't you look around? The Shell 1 core is what its name implies, the center of the big shell. The first basement floor is a capacious meeting hall. I'm sure that's where they held the welcome reception for the president and the environmental protection inspection team. But its core function is concentrated in the second basement floor computer room. This computer room is where the flow of polluted water and the status of filtration is observed, in addition to being where all tasks for other facilities are carried out. I can understand why security is so tight. The Shell 2 core is where the actual filtration system resides, or at least it used to. Now it's just a shadow of its former self. Here, water mixed with crude oil was filtered using antagonist bacteria in the microbial decomposition of hydrocarbons. Below the first floor basement is a gigantic vat for this purpose. What happened was that this vat broke and flooded the floor. The first floor, which is not flooded, houses the air purification facility that eliminates the stench from the polluted water. Manhattan is right in our backyard here, you know. There's plenty of reason to be cautious. Strut L used to be the effluent processing facility. It appears to be where seawater expunged of oil was treated with chlorine and other chemicals to sterilize and disinfect the water so that it could be made suitable for flushing back into the ocean. Got your feet wet? These are the basic controls for swimming. When you're on the surface, you can swim in corresponding directions using the up, down, left, and right movement of the left stick. 
Push the punch or crawl button to dive down from the surface. Push the punch button to dive down from the surface. Stroke the water and move forward by pushing the punch button. Push it in rapid succession to swim faster. Change your heading with the left stick. Up will take you up, down takes you lower, left and right to face those directions. Change your heading with the left stick. Up will take you down, down takes you up, left and right to face those directions. The O2 gauge will appear under your life gauge while you're underwater. The gauge corresponds to the amount of air you can hold from a single deep breath. Once the O2 gauge falls to zero, the life gauge will start to drop. You need to be aware of that. You never covered underwater training in your VR missions. There may, however, arise the need for you to engage in underwater activity during this mission. You may as well get the basics down right now. Use the right stick to make high-speed turns. Push left or right to make 90-degree turns in those directions, and down to make a 180-degree spin. Use the weapon button to start a rapid ascent. It comes in useful when you're running low on air. A word of warning, weapons become useless when you're in water, though I doubt you'll be encountering any enemies underwater. When you start to feel the lack of air, hit the action button repeatedly. This will let you ration your air supply better and slow the decline of your O2 gauge. Raiden, do you see the ladder? Walk up to the ladder and push the action button to start climbing. Raiden, there's a locker over there. It's a good place to conceal yourself from enemy patrols. Face the locker and press the action button to open the door. Walk into the open locker and close the door to hide. Push the action button again to get out of the locker. You can see what's going on outside through the slit. Go into first-person view and make sure the coast is clear before you walk out. Raiden, you can climb onto anything up to about waist-high with the action button. It should come in useful. If you see an approximately waist-high railing, push the action button near it. You will be able to climb over the railing and hang down from the other side. This is referred to as hanging. Not only does it allow you to stay out of the enemy's sight, you will be able to reach locations that are otherwise inaccessible. You will be able to move left and right while hanging. You can use the capability move undetected. Press the action button again to climb up from hanging. A grip gauge is displayed under the life gauge while hanging. The grip gauge indicates how firm a grip you have. It will decrease over time as long as you're hanging. When the grip gauge runs out, you will fall. Climb up before that happens. Push the crawl button while hanging to jump straight down. But a jump from too high a location will take a toll on your life gauge. Check the ground below in first-person view before jumping down. To operate the elevator, walk in and push the action button in front of the panel located to the left of the door. When the panel appears, choose a floor and press the enter button and the elevator will start moving. You can use the right stick to look around during this time. Keep an eye out for approaching enemies. You haven't acquired any weapons yet. If it comes down to combat situations, you will have to rely on your bare hands. The punch is the basis of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Push the punch button. Hit it repeatedly to do a combo and take out the enemy. Unlike in VR training, you can fight in first-person view also. Use that to your advantage. Move in close to the enemy when you have no weapon selected. You can throw him with the weapon button. The throw inflicts greater damage than the punch. Keep that in mind. Move in behind the enemy and push the weapon button without touching the left stick. You can put him in a chokehold. If you keep applying the choke, you can take him out altogether. The level of lethality is strictly your choice. Raiden, push the R2 or L2 button while in first-person view to strafe right and left, respectively. You can use the strafe to quickly slide out of cover and scan the area. Of course, you'll be spotted more easily when you're visible. If you spot a terrorist coming your way, let go of the button and duck back into cover. Once you see the codec screen, set the frequency by moving the left stick left and right. Push the left stick up or hit the enter button to start a call on that frequency. The codec is also capable of retaining the frequencies that you contacted in its memory. Lean the left stick down in the codec screen to activate the memory window. The memory window displays a list of frequencies used to date. Select a frequency and push the enter button to start a call on that frequency.
Raiden, when you're flattened against a corner, you have the ability to survey the scene behind you while staying concealed. This is called the corner view. Use it to find an opening in their surveillance and move ahead undiscovered. Strafing is allowed, unlike in VR training. Peek by using the L2 and R2 buttons and make jump out shots with the weapon button. Take advantage of the different options. Flatten yourself against the wall and push the punch button to knock and create a diversion. You can trick the enemy into coming over to investigate. Deception should be one of your strong points. Or is that only if the other party is a beautiful woman? Select a weapon and switch to first-person view with the R1 button. You can now execute a first-person view attack with the weapon button. In first-person view, you'll specifically be able to target the head, feet, and other strategic areas. You can also aim your strike in directions not available from the regular point of view, overhead, straight down, and so on. You can strafe left and right even during a first-person view attack by pushing the L2 or R2 buttons. Also, the crawl button will let you go into a crouch. Push the L2 and R2 buttons at the same time to stretch up on your toes. This is a useful move when engaging the enemy from behind cover. Explore it. Handguns are aimed by pushing down the weapon button, but if you release the button gently, you can lower the gun without firing. I guess that means you can hold up someone without shooting them. To select a weapon, push and hold the Weapon Menu button and open the Weapons window. You will see an array of weapon icons. Select the desired weapon by moving the left stick up and down. The chosen icon will appear in the lower right. You may notice a slight difference from the VR training mode. Any weapons you have from the same class are displayed on the same row. You can select a weapon out of the row by moving the left stick left and right. The selected weapon should appear to the far right. Let go of the weapon menu button and the selected weapon will be in your hand. Follow the window instructions on how to use each weapon. Equipment such as rations is selected the same way. Just use the L2 button instead. Raiden, if we need to contact you, we'll initiate a call. If you see the call sign, push the select button to open your channel. Press the L1 button when holding your gun to activate the lock-on function. It is very helpful when you want to fix your aim quickly. Lock-on can only be used to fix your aim on an enemy's torso, however. Go to first-person view when you want to aim for an enemy's weak point. When using an automatic rifle, press the weapon button lightly to aim and hold the weapon button down firmly to fire. You can lower your gun after aiming by releasing the weapon button instead of holding it down. You could probably get in down there if you crawl. If you hide well, you can probably escape when being pursued by the enemy. Whenever you crawl into a narrow space, the camera will automatically switch to intrusion view. Push the left stick up to move forward, down to move back. Push left and right to turn in those directions. Keep an eye on the enemy and proceed undercover at all times. You absolutely cannot afford to be spotted. Unlike in VR training, you can use your gun from intrusion view in the field. Keep that in mind. Intrusion view does not guarantee your safety. If you're spotted, you will be attacked. Make sure you're not spotted sliding into intrusion position. A patrol could also start checking the spot where you're likely to be hiding in intrusion view. In that case, remain in intrusion and keep moving to stay out of the enemy's sight. The intrusion view is no free lunch. Got that? You can also knock out and drag enemy personnel over to an open locker and hide their bodies inside. Open a locker, and in an exchange of gunfire, the door can serve as a shield. This can be helpful when there's no other cover in sight. You can also destroy locker doors. If you absolutely need to open a locked one, just break in. Raiden, it looks as though that locker is secured. If you need to use a locker, find an unlocked one. The risk of leaving an enemy's body lying around is too great. If his comrades discover it, they'll be on the lookout for you. Whenever you take an enemy out, conceal the body to the best of your abilities. You can drag an enemy personnel's body. This is how to do it. First, walk up to the body, and with all weapons deselected, press the weapon button to pick it up. As long as you have the weapon button held down, you can move around with the body in your grasp. Release the weapon button to let go of the body. Raiden, if you do plan to hide someone's body, you'll need to be quick about it. For enemies you've knocked out, 
You need to move before they regain consciousness. The ones you've had to terminate will start to undergo rigor mortis fairly quickly as well. They'll be too stiff to move. Raiden, stay still. The enemy is engaged in clearing. What's clearing? A systematic sweep of high-risk zones where intruder presence is either suspected or confirmed. It makes use of a variety of CQB techniques, but can be divided roughly into two types. One is the so-called dynamic entry method, which relies on speed and the element of surprise to storm the area and take control of the enemy. The other is stealth entry, which involves infiltrating the area, covertly acquiring the targets and seizing control. In either case, he'll be discovered unless he stays out of sight. Am I correct? Absolutely. They're trained professionals. Keep that in mind when you look for a good hiding place, Raiden. Raiden, your life gauge is about to run out. Locate some ration. You'll be able to recover some life with it, and there should be some in the eastern section of the south area. Use your ration. You've acquired some ration. Good. This is a portable field food source that can be consumed to recover life. Select the ration in your window and push the Enter button. You can use it on the spot and regain some life. If you have it selected, you can automatically consume the ration the moment your life runs out and avoid death. Rations not only provide nutrition, they also stimulate the immune system and lessen psychological stress. Not exactly gourmet, though, is it? Stop complaining, Raiden. Hang in there, Jack. When the mission is over, I'll make you my specialty. Yeah, right. Mm hmm? No, nothing. <laughs> Can't wait. Raiden. The computer terminal you see over there is what's called a node. This? Right. Log into it right now. Stand in front of the node and push the action button. You won't be permitted to log into a node during the alert mode. Make sure you're not under pursuit when you need to log in. You can only access the node in normal mode. To access the node, you must approach it without being seen by the enemy. Logging into a node will permit you to use the radar and the overview map of the area. You will also be able to access other functions, such as option changes. Customize the settings according to your needs. Raiden, radar utilization is key. The ability to check the enemy's movements and field of vision through the radar will be indispensable in a sneaking mission. But don't be so reliant on the radar that you miss the obvious. Always check your surroundings in first-person view as well. Raiden, exercise extreme caution. The only place where enemy communication is disrupted is the deep sea dock. If they spot you, they will call for a backup team, and that's a tough bunch. Direct confrontation would be high risk. Enemy backup teams are equipped with full body armor. The only viable target is the head, so you'll have to use first person view. Enemy backup teams are equipped with full body armor. Targeting any part of the body except the head will bring very little success. Aim for the head from first-person view. Even if you are spotted, there are ways to prevent the enemy from calling in reinforcements. You can take the man down before he has a chance to call in. Get him before he picks up the radio, and you won't have to worry about the backup. You can also set up electronic interference using the chaff grenade. The enemy's radio will be useless, and no contact will be established with other patrols. Taking out the enemy's radio is, of course, an effective means of preventing communication. No backup can be called. Enemy patrols carry the radio behind their right hip. Aim from first-person view, and you should be able to put a bullet through it. If you take an enemy out without being spotted, an item box can sometimes appear. Don't forget to retrieve it. Approach the enemy undetected and train your gun on him before he can react. This is how you can hold someone up. Once the enemy raises both his hands, he won't put up any resistance. How you proceed after that is up to you. Raiden, stay out of sight at all costs. The bridge is too narrow to offer any way out. If you're spotted, you won't last too long. The sentries aren't checking over the railings. Hanging will let you travel right in their blind spot. Try hanging. Raiden, it looks as though that door is locked down during alert mode. It'll stay closed as long as the alert mode lasts. Shake off pursuit first. That floor will make a racket if you run on it. Noise tends to bring enemy soldiers to the scene. Tilt the left stick lightly to walk quietly. Crawling also lets you move noiselessly. Consider both of these options. If you fall from that height, you would never make it. Climb up before your grip gauge runs out. Don't even think about letting go, okay? Raiden, watch out for that board. You'll probably fall off. Make a run for it and you should be all right. 
The cipher is a type of unmanned surveillance craft. It will alert the patrols upon discovering an intruder. If you're spotted by one, the reinforcements will come running. Use the chaff grenade to set up electronic interference. The cipher will be offline for as long as the chaff is active. The cipher can be taken out by destroying its camera. However, enemy personnel may come and investigate the signal termination. Destruction is not the soundest method to use. Raiden, you need to stay out of the cipher's field of vision. You can't afford to be apprehended. But Colonel, there's nowhere to hide. Jack, snap out of it. Hang from the railings and let the cipher pass you by. Try hanging and keep an eye on the grip gauge. Raiden, look. There's a pile of cardboard boxes over there. If you blend into the background, you should be able to trick the enemy. Um, Jack, you seem to kind of stand out. There's a surveillance camera. Don't stray into its sight. Stay out of the camera's field of vision. There's a blind spot right underneath the unit. Flatten yourself against the wall and move forward. You can also run for it while the camera is pointed the other way. Time it carefully. Use the chaff to create electronic interference. The camera will be blind during that time. Surveillance cameras can be shot out. However, someone will show up sooner or later to investigate if the camera stops functioning. If you do choose to do it, you should be prepared to leave the scene quickly. If the life gauge drops to the red zone, you won't be able to stop the bleeding by yourself. Bloodstains can give your presence away to the enemy. Be careful. To stop the flow, select the bandage from among your items. You can also go into a crouch or crawl and stay completely still for a while. All you have to do is stop moving for a duration of time and your nanomachines will arrange for platelets to be produced in large numbers. The bleeding will stop as a result. Raiden, are you being pursued? They won't mount an aquatic search. Jump into the water. If you find an item box, walk up to it and take a look in first-person view. You should be able to see what's inside the box. An item box can sometimes fall out while moving an enemy's body. Pick it up quickly. Once you put a chokehold on an enemy from behind, you can drag him around with you. As long as you don't let go, he can serve as a human shield. Keep in mind, Raiden, that this is a covert mission. There's a lot of them and only one of you. You'll be surrounded in no time if they discover your presence. Raiden, the tranquilizer rounds vary significantly in effectiveness depending on the part of the body they hit. Hits to the extremities such as hands and feet take a long time to show effect. On the other hand, a direct hit to the head or the heart will instantly knock out the target. Use the first-person view to aim carefully. Handguns and automatic rifles inflict varying degrees and types of damage depending on where a shot lands. A shot to the right hand will disable that hand, and a target will no longer be able to run following a foot shot. Shoot a vital spot like the head or the heart to take someone down with a single shot. Direct your shots as the circumstance requires. Use the first-person view to aim. If you shoot out the radio behind the enemy's right hip, you can prevent him from calling in reinforcements. Use the first-person view for precise shooting. Push the crawl button while running to go into a roll. You can use it to jump over a short distance or knock out enemy personnel in your path. Use it to maximum advantage. Lean the left stick only very slightly to slow your walk. You should be able to move quietly over surfaces that would otherwise clatter underfoot. Push the L2 or the R2 button while in corner view. You will be able to peek out from behind cover and scan that direction. This will give you a better view of what lies ahead, but make sure that the enemy doesn't catch you exposed. Move the right stick while in corner view to study that direction. You should be able to gather more information this way than from the regular corner view. Unlike peeking out with the left step and right step button, this method doesn't involve leaning out. Safety is an important consideration, so be sure to use the technique. If you have a handgun or an automatic rifle selected while in corner view, you have the option to make a jump out shot with the weapon button. You can take cover behind an object, wait for an opportunity, then strike rapidly. If you have the grenade selected during a peek, you can throw it over by pushing the weapon button with your back still against a shielding object. This should come in useful in situations such as discovering multiple opponents around the corner. Work with it. Keep an eye on how long a shadow you're casting. 
Depending on the lighting situation, the enemy could discover your presence because of that one small detail. Raiden, covertness is the keystone of sneaking missions. It's unwise to leave any trace of your presence, so I suggest you leave those things intact. Once you're spotted, Raiden, you cannot afford to relax even after throwing off the pursuit. The enemy will ramp up its security precautions to hunt out the intruder, you. Patrols may be increased as well. Exercise extreme caution. Even the enemies will have a harder time spotting you in the dark. The chance of being unnoticed is higher if you stay in darker areas. Do you have any spent handgun or rifle magazines? You can throw those with the weapon button after you've exhausted all the rounds in them. They have no effectiveness as weapons, but the sound of it hitting the ground may serve as a diversion. It could be used as a ploy to lure the enemy in. Raiden, if you walk around with your feet wet, there will naturally be tracks everywhere. There's very little hope that the enemy will fail to spot those. To avoid leaving footprints, crawl instead. Raiden, be careful. There are infrared sensors in the area. If you interrupt an IR beam, an alarm will go off. Avoid making contact with a beam. There are relatively few infrared beams in place. You should be able to make it past without coming into contact with the beams. Those IR sensors do not seem to be equipped with control units. It won't be as simple as taking out the control unit and knocking the sensor offline. You'll have to weave your way past the IR beams. Raiden, be careful of burning fires. If you accidentally touch an open flame, you might catch on fire yourself. If you've caught on fire, repeatedly roll on the ground quickly to put out the flames. Raiden, your grip has gotten stronger. Guess your hard work has paid off. Raiden, your grip went up again. Jack, you're great. Raiden, your grip improved once again. Jack, you're truly amazing. Raiden, how long are you going to keep doing that? Forget about doing pull-ups. It's about time you return to your duties. Jack, don't get too carried away. There are limits to everything, you know. The sensor aid that I gave you is set so that the position of bombs will appear on the radar. Didn't I say that if you don't first initialize the radar, you won't get anywhere? Now search for the node. If you're not sure where the node is, ask your superior officer. He should know. Equipping yourself with sensor A will bring up a visual representation of the odor of C4s on your radar. It will appear as a mist-like image. C4 is sure to be planted anywhere where there is a response. Search carefully. Sensor A can't specify the exact location of bombs. It's unfortunate but only the area can be localized. Once you've got the area, you'll have to continue your search using your own two eyes. The sensor has a high dependability factor. Consider it error-proof. Even if a glance reveals nothing, you can be sure there is C4 in the vicinity if the sensor responds. Try thinking from Fat Man's perspective and you're sure to find something. Look carefully. The coolant spray will never run out no matter how much you use it. Go ahead and utilize it freely. Note, however, that the spray has a range of only several meters. Be sure to factor in the distance between you and the bombs when you use it. When you equip yourself with the coolant spray, you will enter the first-person view screen. Now be careful, as this means that you can't move while spraying. Even in places that you can't reach, or narrow areas that you can't enter, the spray should reach provided you stretch out your arm. When the lamp on the detonator stops pulsating, it indicates that the bomb has been frozen, meaning that the bomb has been successfully diffused. Apply the spray until the lamp stops blinking. About this bomb, it's been placed in a somewhat strange location. Agreed. It doesn't make sense. Not for him, anyway. You sound like you've got everything figured out. That's because I do. I know exactly how his mind works. Stillman, are you all right over there? Yeah, no problem. You must be bored. Hardly. Between dealing with you guys and calibrating this, I've got my hands full. What did you say? Uh, nothing. Look, it's just that it would be best if we didn't have to use this. Anyway, get to those bombs. No one's going to leave a bomb in a place that easy to reach. It would be more worthwhile to search convoluted areas that can't be reached simply by walking. Right, a bomb's been detected in that vicinity. I know, but I don't see it anywhere. That man takes pride in bluffing his opponents. Try putting everything back to how it should be. Raiden, there's still C4 in the strut where you are. Where? All right, let me give you a hint. Look for a place that guys have never entered up to this point, 
a special place that guys have wanted to enter but simply couldn't, a place that you couldn't enter if the situation wasn't as such. Oh, looks like you were in there already. My, my. Ryden, there is no doubt that C4 is planted in that vicinity. Up, down, left, right, be sure to thoroughly examine your surroundings through the first-person view as you change location. Strut D, in which you're currently located, has a solid makeup. Thoroughly search the lower as well as the upper level. Looks like there's an area you won't be able to reach unless you swim through the water tank. Why don't you take a quick dip? Right, it's not always the case that C4 is set in visible areas such as the floor and walls. Thoroughly search the vicinity, as there's a possibility that bombs may have been placed in unseen areas. See the maintenance hatch on the floor? Check the hatch by positioning yourself nearby it and pressing the action button. Try checking inside the locker. Right, it would appear that some C4 has been planted on a moving object. Search carefully. Ryden, there's still a bomb remaining. There must be something other than the baggage that's in motion. Use the first-person view and check carefully. You won't be able to see the bombs with a quick glance. Search carefully with the first-person view. Try to look under things. Look everywhere. He certainly favors unusual locations. I didn't anticipate he put one there, though. Right on their own equipment. Try searching the Harrier. Ryden. The roof of that strut is accessible. Check there as well. Ryden, there's a possibility that C4 was planted indoors as well as on the roof. Go inside and confirm this. There is a limit, of course, to the range of the coolant spray. Should C4 be positioned in a place that the spray can't reach, you must get close enough so that it does somehow. Strut F has a solid makeup, with areas that can't be accessed simply by walking. If you jump off from the top, there should be an area that you can access. It appears that Fat Man placed bombs within each of the struts. It's likely there are no bombs planted on the connecting bridges. Head for the struts for which you have not yet finished disposing of the C4. Stillman, where are you? I haven't arrived at strut H yet. Are you all right on your own? Believe it or not, I used to be a cop. As far as the enemy, Pliskin has already taken care of that for me. But it's hard to just run after not having done so in five years. My legs just don't work like they used to. I should arrive at Strut H by the time you finish disposing of the C4 in Shell 1. Be sure to take care of it. It's the thing you acquired from the safe in Strut C a little while back. Ryden, I've readied a sensor that's capable of detecting odorless C4. It's stashed in a safe I was hiding in, in the Strut C pantry. Fetch it. If odorless C4 is planted in Shell 1, it's going to be at the bottom of Strut A. Head over there, Ryden. Stillman, how are you doing over there? I'm checking it now. It just can't simply be a bomb that doesn't respond to an odor. There must be something else planted there. Exactly what is it? I'm not certain. Give me a little more time. The countdown has been initiated. Listen up. Time is absolutely critical. Hurry to the bottom of strut A by the shortest possible route. Should I apply coolant to the bomb in the same way as before? Wait, I'm still not sure yet. I'll try testing it out here first. For now, get yourself to the bottom of strut A ASAP. Put simply, bomb disposal is a one-on-one -on -one with fear itself. Don't try to run away from it. Instead, acknowledge the fear and take it straight on. Discretion is a key when taking on a bomb. A degree of caution that taxes your sense of meticulousness. Don't confuse this with cowardice, as it is the extreme opposite. Carefully conduct yourself with the courage that ensures you get the job done right. Listen up, Ryden. No matter what, don't be impatient. Impatience is questionably the one state of mind absolutely guaranteed to seal your fate when defusing a bomb. No matter how the situation presents itself, you must never lose your composure. Understood? Bomb disposal is also a race against time. The slightest hesitation can lead to a loss of time and inevitably lives. Don't do anything rash. Focus yourself on being fast and efficient. When dealing with the bomb directly, the only one you can depend on is yourself. Don't count on anyone else. Foolishly doing so will bring death upon you. Believe in yourself, and you'll be all right. By the way, Wrighton, did you happen to see the technician that came down along with me? No, I didn't. I see. Wait, Stillman, is that guy really... Wrighton! What? Disposing of the C4 is our first priority. There's no time. Get back to the task at hand. Right. Gotcha. 
Looks like Pliskin shouldn't be having any problems. You'd better look sharp as well. Stillman, do you really believe that Pliskin is not a member of SEAL Team 10? He's probably not. Then exactly what is he? I'm not sure. <sighs> but there are other things that I am sure of. Like what? Like that I can believe in him, that's what. There's something about him. A certain something that's found only in men of strength, trustworthiness, and reliability. I see. Anyway, I'm getting back to the mission. Stillman, I heard you made quite a name for yourself in the bomb disposal field. <laughs> Nothing of the sort. It's only that you never hear people badmouth retirees. Why did you retire? I forgot. At any rate, rather than dwelling on past occurrences, shouldn't we focus on taking care of the pressing issue currently at hand? True enough. I'll get back to work. Is that you, Raiden? I haven't reached Strut H yet. Stillman, do you really think there are bombs that the sensor's not picking up? Right. Sealing the entire casing of the bomb prevents the odor from leaking outside. It's a technique that I, for one, didn't teach. But wasn't leaving a signature of sorts Fat Man's aesthetic touch? Perhaps this Fat Man is not the one I knew. What? Fat Man right now is fragile and weak. What's more, he's dangerous. Watch yourself, okay? Stillman, how you feeling? <sighs> All right. It's been a while since I've run, though. <sighs> Guess that means it's also been a while since you've run out of breath, huh? Are you accusing me of something writing? No, I didn't mean anything by it. No, no, I, I should be condemned. W wait, everybody makes mistakes. But it's the reasons behind those mistakes that become the real issue. What do you mean? The reason that bomb exploded, and the reason that I was saved, is because I was confronted by fear and I, I couldn't handle it. Halfway through disposing of the bomb, I succumbed to that fear. And when I realized what was going on, I had turned around and was running away from the bomb. The one who paid the price, however, wasn't me. After I regained consciousness from the shock of the blast, the first thing that my eyes met were the corpses of children crushed under a pile of rubble. Still men. Yet what do you think I felt at that time? A sense of relief. Relieved that it wasn't me. Wow. Oh. That's not all. At the time, I was known as the top bomb disposal technician in the United States. Now, to someone like me, who had neither a wife nor children, that reputation was everything. I didn't want to lose it. That's why I lied about losing my leg. Ran away from the responsibility that was mine. Closed my eyes to the victims. Stirred up the sympathy of the public. All right, Stillman, that's enough. For now, let's just worry about what we're going to do about Fat Man's bombs. Yeah. What are you doing? Someone with such an appetite for destruction is probably not cut out for bomb disposal. Are you sure you're up to it? You're taking too much time. You should work a little faster. There's no time, Raiden. I've got my hands full here, so it doesn't look like I can help you. It's in your hands. You're faster than I expected, and more capable than you look. You're pretty fast. Well, not bad for a beginner, anyway. Hmm. Looks like VR training does come in handy. Damn, you're fast. Even if I was still young, I couldn't operate like that. What is this, a time attack mode or something? You're being spotted by the enemy a bit too much. Proceed with more caution. <laughs> Looks like you like to fight. Still, it would be wiser to proceed more stealthily. Aren't you eating a bit too much? Hey, you. Has anyone ever told you you have some issues? Still, there's something strange. It's not like him. There are still bombs in that area that haven't been disposed of. Search carefully. Well done. It looks like there are no more bombs in that strut. Now, head for the other struts. Never mind about me. Get on with disposing of those bombs. What are you doing there? Hurry up and dispose of those bombs. <sighs> I'm not going to open the door. Stillman, tell me something about Fat Man. Well, to start, he was born the son of a clockmaker. Neglected by his parents and without friends, it seems that he spent a lot of time by himself in his father's workshop. Maybe that was the reason, I'm not sure, but apparently he has had a tremendous fascination with clock mechanics since he was a child. It was at the age of 10 that a guidebook that he found on the internet changed his life forever. That guidebook served as a basis of his eventually piecing together an atomic bomb. It was from there that he came to be known as Fat Man. 
And soon enough, there was no one associated with bombs that didn't know his name. In a sense, Fat Man was a hero. Although what he did was recognized only by those in the trade, I'm sure that it served to greatly stir the ego of the teenaged boy at the center of it all. But he leaves his mark nowhere else. Apparently, he was hated and shunned by everyone in school. So he went on to focus all his energy on explosives. He scorned the reality that surrounded him and instead chose to embrace a world that would easily grant him recognition. Well, to be sure, it never amounted to anything more than, say, occasionally bringing a gun into school. Eventually, Fat Man came to Indian Head, the exercise training facilities of the Naval School Explosive Ordnance Disposal at which I was a lecturer. He absorbed all kinds of knowledge, as if he hungered for bombs. Close to 20% of the students at Indian Head flunk out of what is truly a hellish curriculum. Despite this environment, he achieved extraordinarily high marks that were without precedent. After leaving Indian Head, he joined up with Nest, said to be the most accomplished bomb disposal unit. It was there that he apparently got into some trouble. What exactly? You got me, but Fat Man was definitely not cut out for group operations from the very start. Having been ousted from Nest, he was picked up by Dead Cell, which was already becoming notorious for being a motley crew of sorts. It seems that it was through surprise attack maneuvers later conducted by Dead Cell that Fat Man completely subdued his former companions from Nest. While being the most peculiar individual among my students, he was also the most talented. Be sure not to underestimate him. Are we clear? Emma, you okay? Yeah, sort of. Are we there yet? I'm scared. I don't want to do this. Emma. I can't breathe. <sighs> oh, I can't. Please, air. <coughs> oh, God. That was tough. Do we have to keep going? Just a little bit more. Hang in there. Okay. We're not there yet? Just a little bit more. Hang in there. How much farther do we have to swim? Just a little bit more. Hang in there. That again. Can't you say anything else? I can't stand this. I hate water. <sighs> Hell. Oh, Venus and Cancer. <sighs> ah! Ow! Ugh! No! What do you think you're doing? That hurt. I don't think I like you. Oh, you suck! <sighs> Emma, you okay? I can't go on. Uh... <sighs> Emma. Hang on. I know. Hell. I can't walk anymore. I can't walk too well. I, I think it might be those drugs they injected me with. Let me rest, just for a second. I am so tired. Where are you? You have to come and get me. I thought you were going to protect me. Damn it! Where did you go? Don't leave me alone. You perv! Unbelievable! What do you think you're doing at a time like this? Keep your hands to yourself. Excuse me, can I make an observation? Sure. You are worthless. Bugs! I hate bugs! Oh no, bugs! I can't handle bugs. I hate them! But Emma, we have to go through here. No! Never! I, I can't! Emma. I can't stand bugs! I, I am not moving! Didn't you hear me? I said no! Emma, looks like you've recovered some of your life. Yeah, I got the munchies, so I had a little snack. Hmm. What? What do you have against snacking? Treats are psychologically healthy. Even my therapist says they're an effective stress relief measure. Besides, I have a high metabolism. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. I did gain a little weight lately, but, you know, I'm comfortable with that. Completely. 
And why is weight gain even considered a bad thing by society at large anyway? I mean, does it make life harder for everyone? I don't think so. Does it kill dolphins or, or make your favorite baseball team suck? But what's really, really troubling is this willingness to judge a woman's worth solely on how well she meets unrealistic standards of physical beauty. Look, Emma, I didn't even say anything. Oh. Well. <clears throat> how are you, Emma? Okay, I think. Everything's okay here. Emma? I'm okay, thanks to you. You're better than I thought. Emma, you okay? Yeah, it's kind of like having a guardian angel. I could get used to this. Oh, I'm almost gone. Do something. Hey, are you taking this seriously? <sighs> I'm sorry. I need to rest a bit. Just a few more seconds. I need a break. Just a little more, please. Leave me alone. I told you I needed to rest, now back off. Hey, are you trying to kill me? Did you have to shoot me of all things? Do you really hate me that much? What is wrong with you? You suck, you know that? I am sick of this. Emma, about what you said behind that column there. Huh, what are you talking about? Can I just say something? Um. Sure. This is my real hair, okay? <laughs> of course. As if I said anything about that. Emma, did something happen behind that column? No. Not really. But I heard someone talking. Were you eavesdropping? What kind of accusation is that? I was worried about you. So you were eavesdropping? Fine. Put it that way if you like. You suck. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna tell me what happened? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, please, don't help. Raiden, don't get yourself worked up. It's safer to take out the enemy first, then look for the bomb. Don't even think about searching for the bomb while looking over your shoulder for the enemy. Knock them unconscious or take them out altogether first. Looks like the enemy sentries have the defensive perimeters of each strut covered. You'll be safe as long as they don't radio for more men, but if you're spotted, run for it. Find a good concealment and wait until the backup leaves. You won't be able to defuse the bombs while you're being chased down, believe me. Raiden, I've frozen the first bomb. How are you doing? Nothing yet. Pliskin, what was the exact location of the explosive? The heliport. It was behind some cargo. Thought I was gonna have some trouble with the patrols, but it was an easy job. I see. What's the matter? Nothing really, Pliskin. Just don't let your guard down. Don't relax even after you think you've defused it. I know that. Raiden, Shell One's all yours. Sure. Raiden, another C4 down. Raiden, I'm done with one more C4. Everything's going smoothly over here. I just finished defusing another C4. One more bomb defused. There was one planted pretty high up on the ceiling. The coolant spray couldn't reach that far, so I had to get up on a stand to do it. For some reason, there was one planted on an enemy soldier's back. This one was in a spot so narrow, I had to crawl in to get at it. There was one I managed to find only because I took a good look in first-person view. You should try it, too. Raiden, like I said before, there's a huge load of C4s at the bottom of Strut H that won't show up on the radar. The old man's right. There's got to be the same thing in Shell 1. Watch your back. I just got a call from Pete. He made it to Shell 2. I guess he really can run. Pliskin. I'll take good care of Pete. Don't worry. Raiden, go pick up that sensor for odorless C4s. It should be in that room in Strut C where you found Pete. Raiden, the odorless c 4 should be at the bottom of Strut A. Head to Strut A's bottom level now. Shoot a fire extinguisher and the contents will spew out. It's probably a good way to distract the enemy. If you ever find yourself under pursuit, give it a try. Necessity is the mother of invention. If you shoot those pipes along the ceiling or the floor, jets of steam will escape. Use it to distract or burn the enemy. Remember, always use the surroundings to your advantage. To throw something, such as a grenade or a magazine, press the weapon button to cock your arm and release the weapon button to throw the object. Remember, the distance thrown varies depending on how hard you press the weapon button. Make sure you target the throw at the most effective spot. 
Put your thermal goggles on and look at the enemy's neck area. You should be able to see if he has dog tags on. Raiden, look at the enemy you knocked out. See the stars revolving over his head? When the stars disappear, the enemy will regain consciousness. Keep an eye on the spot above their heads. You can use the holes left behind from collapsing floors to your advantage. Tip the bodies of enemies you've taken out into the ocean to hide them. Infrared sensor, huh? The first thing you have to do is locate where the beam is. I always use the tried and true method. Remember that little present I gave you? Try using that. Select the cigarettes and walk up to the IR sensor. The smoke should make the IR beam visible. You can also use the coolant spray to freeze the sensor's control unit. If you're out of bullets, it's a good backup plan. There's a loader over there for moving cargo onto conveyor belts. Maybe you can fool the thing. It's a piece of cake. I speak from experience. Raiden, a full life gauge will slow down the consumption of the grip gauge. Be smart about using your ration. The consumption of the O2 gauge will also be slower with a full life gauge. Make good use of those rations. When you swing up from hanging, use the momentum to knock someone out. Try it when there's an enemy near the railings. If you see a likely handhold while you're jumping down from hanging, try pressing the action button. If you hit it well, you should be able to grab on. It'll work even if the direction is a little off, so play around with it. Jump down right onto the enemy's head from hanging to knock him out. Look down in first-person view to aim well. Think about what the ideal spot to aim for is, depending on time and circumstances. Go for the central nervous system if you absolutely have to take someone out. If all you want to do is immobilize them, temporarily incapacitate their mobility. If you want to make them bleed, go after their circulatory system. And if radio silence is your only objective, destroy their radios. Inflict only the damage that is the most effective for a given situation. Be smart. That's the key to survival. After you take someone out, shake them by pushing the weapon button. An item box may appear. Try it if you have time. After you hold an enemy soldier up, you could manage to seize an item if you're lucky. There are some items you can only get from a holdup. Give it a try. Punching is a basic move in hand-to-hand. -to, -hand. to deliver a punch, press the punch button. Go ahead, try it. While running, you can execute a roll by pressing the crawl button. For short distances, you can jump, and if you bump into an enemy just right, you can send the enemy flying. You can also jump over any floorboards that creak every time you take a step. Enemy soldiers will hesitate to attack if you're holding one of their own men hostage in a stranglehold. This move is ideal for escaping tense situations. You can move with your gun in the ready position by holding down either the L1 or crawl button and using the left analog stick to direct your movement. If you hold down the L1 button, you can move while holding your gun. Should be an effective move when you need to break through some enemies. Don't forget it, kid. Bulletproof equipment will not protect your enemies from a grenade's blast or shrapnel. A well-placed grenade could turn the tide of battle to your advantage. You can hide behind certain objects by crouching low. It's a move that provides cover from enemy fire and also allows you to see in corner view or to do a jump out shot. Your survival depends on how you use the objects around you. Running out of ammunition in the middle of a firefight can be embarrassing. That's why you want to use the tactical reload feature. Once you remove a weapon from its equip status, it will be fully reloaded automatically. You can easily do this by using the weapon menu button to change equipment quickly. Raiden, where are you? I, um, I... What are you embarrassed about? You're on a mission. Anything goes. Pliskin. I've snuck into similar places in the past myself. Huh? What you see flying before you is a cipher. It's a saucer-type UAV for surveillance and communication support of land and marine operations. It may look strange, but it's very stable. The cipher is capable of vertical takeoffs and landings in tight areas measuring as small as 3.5 meters. Also, it features a fully autonomous system that allows for tracking and analysis of man-sized targets. You can confuse the cipher's sensors with chaff. This not only blocks its movement, but also prevents data transmission to its controller. The cipher transmits its status and mission data to its controller via data link. 
Discovery by a cipher unit means you've been discovered by your enemy. The important thing is to stay out of its visual range. Pliskin, what do you know about Stillman? He's a bomb disposal expert. Probably the best in the world. What else? What do you mean? Like why he retired. Are you here to gossip? No. Then get back to work defusing those C4s. If there's something you need to know about Stillman, go ask him yourself. Fat Man. Supposedly, he's nicknamed after an atomic bomb, but to me, he's just a fat man. Something straight out of a sideshow. If he even has a bit of spare time, he spends it disassembling and assembling his Glock over and over again. He can't stand to have his hands still. He's extremely vain about his hands, keeps his fingers as slender and soft as a woman's. They say he's always looking at his hands, giving himself manicures. Pliskin, I saw someone wearing a cardboard box just now. A box? I don't know anything about that. You sure you weren't imagining things? Of course I'm sure. Do you think it's one of the members of Dead Cell? How should I know? I don't want to fight someone like that. Why not? Because it looks so dumb. Anyone who's willing to be seen like that must be completely insane. I mean, he's a psycho. There's no question about it. Uh, uh, yeah. Vamp is a member of Dead Cell. Born in Romania, his specialty is knives. But I guess you know that by now. When he was just a kid, he lost his family to a terrorist bomb that went off in a church they were attending. His body pierced by a crucifix, Vamp was buried under the rubble for two days before he was finally rescued. During those two days, he survived by feeding on the blood of his family to quench his thirst. That was how he acquired a taste for blood. So that's why they call him Vamp. No, Vamp isn't for vampire, it's because he's bisexual. Rumor has it, Vamp was the lover of Scott Dolph, the Marine Commandant who accidentally died two years ago. Scott Dolph was also the father of Fortune, the Dead Cell leader. Fortune's old man? But Fortune and Vamp? Uh, you noticed, eh? Not bad for a rookie. All right. As you say, Vamp and Fortune are very close. Not lovers, but very close. Friends? No, there's more to their relationship than that. But Vamp was her father's lover. Would it have been better if it was with her mother? Well... I don't really think they care what you think. Focus on the mission. By the way, have you ever met the guy before? No. But he seemed to know you. Right. Well, I... No. It can't be. What? Nothing. I told you the Dead Cell is a group of madmen. I wouldn't take anything they say very seriously. Tell me a little more about Dead Cell. Dead Cell was a shadow unit within the SEALs organization. Right. They handled surprise raids on vital government facilities, didn't they? Yes. They were originally put together to check the nation's military security system. The unit was the brainchild of ex-president George Sears. Dead Cell was a secret unit positioned at the opposite end of anti-terrorist outfits such as Delta Force and SEALs. Were they always a... Group of madmen? Yeah. No, they got weird when Colonel Jackson, Fortune's husband, was sent to jail. Sent to jail? For what? Corruption. He misappropriated government funds. Sounds like he deserved it. That's what everybody else thought, except for the members of Dead Cell. They felt the colonel was falsely accused. Fact is, they took the case to the powers that be, but they never managed to reopen the case. Was there any truth to their claim? Who knows? Whatever the situation is. Dead Cell's name was tainted. And Colonel Jackson? He was being held at Leavenworth. Was? Meaning he's been released? Well, in a manner of speaking, the Colonel's dead. Oh. Apparently, he lost the will to live and died in prison. The members of Dead Cell snapped with the loss of their leader. They underwent a radical change and became uncontrollable. And that's why they undertook this terrorist operation. Seems as good a reason as any. What do you know about that strange woman? You mean Fortune? She's the Dead Cell leader. Her real name is Helena Dolph Jackson, known to her friends as Lady Luck. Lady Luck? Yeah, she got the name because bullets seemed to veer away from her in battle. Oh. People have heard her say that her fortune in battle was payback for the lousy luck she's had in life. Lousy luck? The death of her father, the Marine Commander, the conviction of husband and Dead Cell leader Colonel Jackson. These events were followed by her mother's suicide, the loss of a husband, and the idea of a convict in the family apparently took her over the edge. Fortune was three months pregnant at the time, 
and the shock of her mother's death led to the loss of her child. Add to this her husband's death in prison a few months later, and to sum it up, in the six months after her father's death, she lost her family and everything that mattered in her life. Jeez, she's had it rough. Yeah, the thing is, she didn't grieve long. Instead, she joined the military. Now why is that? Do I look psychic? My best guess is revenge. I heard that she firmly believed that her husband was framed. Anyway, by the time she came out of basic training, she'd proven many times over that she was gifted with an unusual streak of luck. In fact, some say she sold her soul for it. Her soul? Her uncanny luck earned her a reputation that led to her appointment as the head of her husband's unit, Dead Cell. She's the widow of Dead Cell's former beloved leader. I'd heard that she was welcomed with open arms by Vamp, who was the temporary leader at the time. For Vamp, it also meant welcoming the daughter of his former lover. Vamp and Fortune's mother? No, Vamp and Fortune's father. Vamp's bisexual. Oh, wait a sec. I thought Vamp and Fortune... You noticed, eh? Uh, yeah. Why won't that woman die? She yearns for death. She would welcome it with open arms if it came to set her free. People who have no fear of death end up eluding it, and the more terrified you are of dying, the closer you find yourself to it. The reinforcements that rush up whenever you're discovered by the enemy are the President's Special Security Unit. They are the cream of the Secret Service and have previously served as members of CAT, the counter-assault team, which is part of the Presidential Security Force. These guys have seen more action than you'll ever see in a lifetime. Their equipment is based on the Land Warrior System, which has been an army development project over the last century. You've been with Force 21, so you should know what I'm talking about. It's the latest infantry equipment enhanced with advanced data communication and processing features. The system is designed to treat each infantry soldier as a single terminal in a network. The helmet has a mounted display that provides everything from sensor and map updates to directives and commands from a command outpost. Through a data link, the soldier is also provided with video and graphic information such as current location, including the placement of friendly units and rendezvous points. Also included with the package are various targeting systems, biosensors, GPS receiving units, and the latest data processing equipment. If I remember right, didn't the Army have a problem finding a battery with enough longevity to power the equipment? That's right. But the development of a sealed membrane battery capable of withstanding the wear and tear of combat situations solved that problem, making the system practical. On top of that, the weight of all this equipment is no longer a problem, thanks to the DARPA-developed exoskeleton technology with human strength amplification capabilities. A soldier may look slow and clumsy in all this equipment, but don't let that fool you. Former members of the President's Special Security Unit are equipped with ceramic-plated armor. Attacking any spot other than the head is pretty much a waste of time. For results, go for the head. Actually, the best course for survival is to avoid any direct confrontation with these guys. Raiden, don't ever turn your back on that Olga woman. Olga Gerlukovich, daughter of Colonel Sergei Gerlukovich, ex-Gru and former Spetsnaz commander. She's the leader of Colonel Gerlukovich's private army that's been wandering around the big shell. Those men were gathered by Colonel Gerlukovich. Following his death, she inherited his command and now exercises full control. Her father's name was widely respected throughout the old Soviet regime, and he was the goal of just about every military man. Why would a respected soldier become a leader of those cutthroats? The collapse of the Republic resulted in a lot of unemployed soldiers. Most found themselves suddenly cast out into the civilian world, hopelessly lost. The colonel took these men in. He organized a mercenary army and led his men from battle to battle in various disputed regions around the world, hoping that one day he would rebuild his homeland. Rumor has it that during the Shadow Moses incident, he planned a rendezvous with Liquid Snake's men and assist in their uprising. I assume that the revolt figured into his reconstruction plans for the Soviet regime. I also heard that Ocelot, Liquid's right-hand man, was an old friend of the colonel's back in the old days of the Soviet Union. In any case, Olga inherited her father's military genius and has become a force to be reckoned with. She was born and raised on the battlefield, and she's as tough as she looks. Not my ideal choice for a date. You sound like you've met her. No, I haven't had the pleasure. Just remember what I said. 
Don't turn your back on her. That's a tranquilizer gun with a sound suppressor. Hit an enemy with that and it's good night, sleep tight. The time in which the tranquilizer takes effect depends on where you hit your target. If you want to knock somebody out with a single shot, aim carefully for vital spots like the head or heart. I think I've seen this modified gun before. Yeah, it looks like the same gun used by Solid Snake two years ago. Following that terrorist incident, similar models were made and sold among the fans of his exploits. I think that's one of them. That's an American military M9 modified for tranquilizer bullets. When the tranquilizer bullets hit a target, the round uses the force of the impact to mix the drug, also producing a gas in the process. The pressure of the gas drives a built-in piston that injects the target with a powerful anesthetic. It's like firing a small hypodermic syringe. This M9 is a tranquilizer gun that knocks out the enemy. It doesn't kill them. That pistol you have is a SOCOM. It's a 45 caliber offensive handgun designed for the American Special Ops Command. With 12 rounds of 45 ACPs, it has outstanding stopping power. The SOCOM has a minimum service life, averaging over 6,000 rounds, and has a five round group capacity that extends within a 1.4 inch radius. It's a bit large, but the SOCOM is a gun you can trust. It also comes equipped with a laser aiming module. A suppressor can be attached to the SOCOM to silence gunshots. You should try to find one. You've got a suppressor, too. Your SOCOM's got a suppressor. The suppressor uses multiple partitions to reduce gas discharge and keep sound and muzzle fire to a minimum. By keeping the internal baffles moist, sound can be reduced by approximately 38 decibels. That suppressor can be screwed and secured to 10 different positions. This function allows you to adjust the gun's impact point, but that doesn't really matter. That's because the suppressor's already been adjusted. You should be able to get the same results you got when you didn't have a suppressor attached. This'll reduce your chances of discovery, as long as you don't leave too many bodies around. Your ammo is also limited, so don't go shooting everything in sight. The SOCOM I gave you has a double action trigger mechanism. For tactical reasons, the gun's been engineered to cock and lock a feature allowing the safety to be locked with the trigger cocked. Hostage rescue operations require precision shooting and response in millisecond terms. Rescue team members did not think highly of the first round double action with a switch over to single action in the following rounds. Their solution was to cock and lock. With the trigger cocked and the safety locked, the first round could be fired relatively faster. Aside from the time-saving nature of this feature, it is also of vital importance when combat shooting is the foremost consideration. By making the first round a single-action shot, subsequent pulls of the trigger can be conducted in the same manner. In short, cock and lock allows for smoother and more rapid firing. So, you've got an AKS-74U. Looks like you've got an AK. If you wear an enemy's field outfit and carry an AK, you can pass for one of them. The AK is an outstanding rifle in terms of precision and reliability, as evidenced by widespread license manufacturing, not to mention large quantities of illegal reproductions. The AK is in high demand around the world. It is often used as reference for the design of new rifle models. Designs for Israel's Galil, Finland's Valmet, and other rifles are based on the basic structure of the AK. You have a smaller model of the AKS-74 that was designed for use by Special Forces personnel. The stock will only extend to a maximum length of 726 millimeters, a feature that makes the rifle easier to handle in small spaces. The AK can be fitted with a suppressor. With a suppressor, you won't have to worry about your gunshots being heard. So, you're using the suppressor. Now you won't have to worry about the enemy hearing your gunshots. Listen up, kid, and don't forget this. Only the guards in Shell 1's core are armed with AK rifles. The others are armed with the AN-94, the official rifle of the Russian army. If you hope to disguise yourself as the enemy, you don't want to be carrying an AK outside of Shell 1's core. Looks like you've got an M4. The M4 is an assault carbine favored by the US SOCOM. It's a descendant of the M1 carbine used in World War II. The 4 refers to the fact that it's the fourth carbine to be officially adopted by the American military. Basically, it was developed for the Special Forces using the M16A as a base. The M4 carries 30 rounds of 5.56mm by 45SS109s. 
By the way, carbines are short-barreled rifles originally developed for cavalry use, but as far as you're concerned, you won't need to remember that. The PSG-1 is an anti-terrorist automated sniper rifle. It features roller-locked action which allows a full, free-floating barrel. The end result is an automatic rifle with precision equal to that of a bolt-action sniper rifle. The rifle has a five-round group capacity of 50 millimeters at a range of approximately 270 meters. In my opinion, the PSG-1 is one of the finest sniper rifles in the world. Although you've probably fired a few rounds in VR training, there are a few differences in handling the rifle you should be aware of. First, that the PSG-1 is equipped with a special magnification adjustable scope. For precision shooting, it allows you to zoom in on your target. And for wide range viewing, all you have to do is zoom out. Another difference is that you aren't limited to firing from the prone position. In short, you can fire from a crouching or standing position. However, the less stable your position, the tougher it is to hold your aim steady. For accuracy, the best thing to do is crawl up to your target and fire from a prone position. The PSG-1T that you have there is a PSG-1 with a modified barrel for firing tranquilizer rounds. It handles like a PSG-1. The only difference is that it spares lives. It's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Raiden, you've got those stingers I gave you earlier, right? Portable anti-aircraft missiles? I had complete VR training in those too. Oh gee, I feel so much better knowing that. Hopefully you'll know how to use them in actual battle conditions too. The Stinger is a portable surface-to-air missile launcher. Once you lock onto a target and fire, the missile will automatically pursue the target using its infrared seeker. However, the Stinger you have hasn't been updated to deal with countermeasures. The missile's seeker might be thrown off course by flares. Don't forget that. You've got an RGB-6, and that should come in useful. The firing trajectory tends to spread out, so be careful. Aim well with first-person view. You've got an RGB-6, a Croatian-manufactured 40mm six-round grenade launcher. It's a weapon that was unavailable in VR training. The RGB-6 has a spring-driven revolver-type cylinder for handling six grenades. It delivers grenades with greater accuracy than throwing the things, and it's effective for taking out enemies with body armor, not to mention those hiding behind objects. Since a launched grenade travels on a parabolic trajectory, Hitting a target depends on your angle of fire. Instead of waiting for RGB-6 grenades to impact, you can intentionally deselect the launcher after they're airborne. It'll detonate at that point. This is called the air burst mode. You can detonate grenades in any spot you choose mid-air. You've got yourself a remote-controlled missile. Referred to as Nikita, it's a wireless guided projectile. It's a surveillance missile based on micro-air vehicle technology. You control it by watching the image transmitted from the CCD camera mounted on the missile. Although it's primarily designed for scouting missions, it carries a small explosive charge that allows a long-distance attack. You can also trigger the charge by removing it from equip status following the missile's launch. You won't be able to move while controlling the missile. Also, you'll have to be careful that you don't run out of fuel while it's in flight. Unlike VR training, you won't have a bird's eye view to help you control the missile. The less you manipulate a remote controlled missile, the faster it'll travel. Use this and you'll be able to deliver your remote controlled missile over a greater distance. Remember that the missile's range is limited by its fuel capacity. Always remember that unnecessary maneuvers can cost you fuel. The coolant spray can be a weapon as well. Spray it into an enemy's face and you won't be able to see for a while. Necessity is the mother of invention. Keep improvising if you want to stay alive. The coolant spray that you have is great for freezing the C4 set by Fat Man. After you equip the spray, you can discharge the coolant by pressing the weapon button. When the coolant is exposed to the open air, it changes into a gel and adheres to the C4 and stays at a low temperature. Spray a lot of coolant to cover the C4 and make sure that it won't melt away. This means that once you coat the C4 with this stuff, you can assume it won't explode. You've got enough there so you don't have to worry about running out. It's important to remember that once you equip yourself with the spray, you won't be able to move. If an enemy approaches while you're spraying the coolant, the best thing to do is put it away and hide. On top of dealing with the C4, you can use the spray against an enemy. Don't forget that. 
The hand grenade is an anti-personnel weapon that is manually delivered to a target. Put simply, you throw it. The blast itself and the resulting shrapnel takes out enemy targets. The grenade is charged with Composite B, an explosive composed of 40% TNT and 60% RDX. You press the weapon button to pull the pin and release the button to throw the grenade. Throwing distance varies with how hard you press the weapon button. After pulling the pin, you have about five seconds before the grenade explodes. Those five seconds combined with the throwing distance gives you a certain amount of tactical flexibility. A stun grenade, huh? It's a non-lethal weapon designed to daze enemies with a blinding flash of light and an ear-splitting bang. When it goes off, it emits a flash equivalent to 2.5 million candelas and an explosive sound of over 160 decibels. In simpler terms, that's over 120 times the brightness of a police flashlight and the sound of a jet during takeoff. At the same time, it releases about 2,700 degrees Celsius of heat, but that's only at the millisecond level, so don't expect it to ignite anything. The sound emission is also at the millisecond level, so there's no permanent damage to the victim's hearing. Used properly, your enemies will lose consciousness. It's not a lethal weapon. You're holding a chaff grenade, an electronic warfare weapon designed to disrupt electronic equipment and jam transmissions. Detonated with a small charge, the grenade releases chaff and a miniature active jammer. The grenade should render electronic equipment useless for a brief period of time. It's important to note that radar and other equipment which you might have on hand will also be affected. So be careful with the thing if you're using electronic devices. What you've got there is an empty magazine for handguns and automatic weapons. Press the weapon button for the wind-up and release the button to throw it. Hitting an enemy with it won't do much damage, but if used properly, it will provide a distraction. Throwing distance depends on how strong you press the weapon button. It might be even more useful if you can accurately throw the magazine to a desired spot while in first-person view. I see you've managed to get a hold of some C4 plastic explosive. Composed of 91% RDX and 9% inert plasticizers, it's a white clay-like material. It's a very stable explosive with over 1.3 times the power of TNT. Immune to heat or shock, C4 will only explode when triggered by a detonator. Since your wireless detonator is equipped with both a scrambler and encryption, you don't have to worry about the C4 being accidentally triggered by other wavelengths such as those emitted by jamming devices. You set the C4 with the weapon button and detonate it with the punch button. One other thing, don't get caught in its blast. By setting C4 explosives within close proximity of each other, you can set off a chain of explosions with a single blast. Do it right, and you can set up some very effective traps. That's a claymore mine. The claymore is a directional mine that can be set up on the ground. It's mainly used for ambush or defense. It can also be used against light vehicles and other soft-skinned targets. That claymore mine has a built-in stealth function. It becomes invisible to the eye once it's set. To find this type of mine once it's been set requires you'll need either a mine detector or thermal goggles. When the stealth function kicks in, the mine's anti-personnel sensor goes immediately into action. This mine goes off when it detects someone approaching from the front. The explosion fans out shrapnel and metal balls to create a fan-shaped destructive zone. An important thing to remember is that the sensor is not selective. The mine will attack friend or foe. What I'm trying to say is, don't trigger your own trap. You can recover a set claymore by crawling up to it carefully. That means you can collect enemy claymores for your own use if necessary. Raiden, what have you got there? Uh, nothing. Ah, come on. Don't play dumb. That kind of thinking might even be helpful on the battlefield. Yeah, but... Look, aside from its educational value, you can probably use it to distract an enemy. The directional microphone is a very sensitive piece of equipment that picks up the slightest sound. It's a high-precision mic that's been designed to pick up sounds in front of it. In short, it will pick up sounds in the direction you point it. The microphone comes equipped with a miniature amplifier that will pick up a heartbeat if it's pointed properly at a living target. You've got rations. Rations are military food provisions capable of life recovery. Select a ration in the menu display and press the confirmation button for life recovery. If you equip yourself with rations, you can automatically recover life the moment it hits zero. 
Field rations are not just emergency food. For a soldier, it's a vital factor in maintaining combat efficiency. Rations are the result of concentrated research and development efforts on the part of the U.S. military's cooking laboratory. Together with calories, meticulous attention is focused on balanced nutrition. Freeze-dried, the rations are easy to carry and keep well. It ain't home cooking, but it'll satisfy your nutritional needs. Hmm. What's on your mind? Well, just between you and me. Sure. What is it? I prefer rations over Rose's home cooking. Hmm. That bad, huh? I see you have the bandage equipped. Whenever you're bleeding, select the bandage in the menu display and press the confirmation button to stop the bleeding. The bandage is an absorption pad made from alginate fiber. As you probably know, when alginate fibers come into contact with blood or liquids, the colloid gels to produce a moist condition for speeding up the healing process. With outstanding absorption properties in terms of speed and capacity, bandages effectively stop bleeding. You have the pentazamine equipped, huh? To steady your hands when aiming with a sniper rifle, select pentazamine in the menu display and press the confirmation button. Pentazamine is a benzodiazepine antidepressant used in the treatment of disorders such as depression and autonomic imbalance. In addition to its calming effect, it also relaxes muscular tension and combats convulsions. The result is a steady set of hands. One more thing, pentazamine does not prevent seasickness. Seasickness? What are you talking about? I mean, sometimes faith can overcome medical science. What? Never mind. I see you're wearing body armor. That's a great way to minimize damage. Your body armor is interwoven with a special fiber made from high-performance polymer materials. The special fiber tangles around a bullet to cushion and spread out the impact to keep damage at a minimum. Bear in mind that the armor just reduces damage. It doesn't eliminate it. I see you've still got those cigarettes I gave you. I quit a long time ago. Maybe now's the time to start again. <laughs> Just joking, kid. Those things will stunt your growth and ruin your health. But in the battlefield, you'll find there's other uses for those cigarettes besides smoking. I'm sure you'll figure out how to use them when the time comes. I see you're wearing the enemy field uniform. Looks pretty good on you. Cut it out. It's bad enough that I'm dripping with sweat wondering when somebody's gonna see through my disguise. Don't worry. And quit being so sensitive. At least your walk won't give you away. My walk? What do you mean, my walk? <laughs> Nothing. Forget I said it. I'd worry more about the fact that the uniform's a little small for your size. It just might come off when you bump into an enemy. Normally, a proper fitting uniform is issued to a soldier. You're just going to have to fit your movement to the uniform. Without the balaclava, you won't be able to disguise yourself as an enemy soldier anymore. But aside from the balaclava, you've got the exact same gear as they have, including those boots. Select the enemy field uniform in spots where you have to leave footprints. It'll keep them from spotting your presence. The cardboard box that you have is ideal for fooling your enemies. It's a very important tool for infiltration missions. Really? Of course. I can't begin to count the number of agents whose lives were saved by a cardboard box. You mean everyone's using them? Look. I'm not exaggerating when I say the success of your mission hinges on how you use that cardboard box. Huh. But in the end, a cardboard box is only made of paper. Handle it with care or it won't be of much use to you. You know, I've lost a couple thanks to you. What? Nothing. Forget it. Treat your cardboard box with care. Take care of the box and it'll take care of you. Don't think of it as just another box. Treat it with love. Don't be rough, okay? You're using your anti-personnel sensor. It vibrates whenever an enemy is approaching your position. The sensor responds to the electromagnetic field and heartbeat of life forms. The closer an enemy, the bigger the vibration. It's a useful device, but remember that if you're equipped with the sensor, you won't be able to feel any other vibrations around you. It's like life. You gain something only to lose something else. It's up to you to decide where and when you want to use it. That mine detector that you're equipped with displays the location of Claymore mines that aren't visible to the naked eye. It's not your run-of-the-mill mine detector. It's the latest model to use the technology developed in a private Mu chem lab. It isn't a metal detector. It's based more on the various systems used in chemical detectors. In short, it doesn't respond to a mine's metallic casing. It actually detects the elements used in explosives. 
Basically, it's similar to the sensor that the old man gave you, the one that responds to the smell of C4. That's why you can accurately detect the location of mines, despite the fact that you're in a metal-based structure. There's no point using the detector without employing the radar. I see the old man set you up with a sensor A unit. Aside from C4, explosives continually release their own specific particles. Based on ion mobility spectrometry technology, sensor A is capable of detecting particle clusters. Simply put, the detector can sniff out C4. The detected C4 appears on radar as a cloud-like shape. The cloud indicates the rough location of the explosive. This sensor looks like it's been specially tuned. It's been specially modified to sniff out the signature odor of C4 combined with Fat Man's special perfume that he uses to identify his work. That's why it won't respond to any of the C4 that we've set up. We got a lot of use out of this thing. We probably won't need it anymore. You're using Sensor B. It's designed to pick out the odorless C4 set up by Fat Man. Unlike Sensor A, which detects explosive particles, this unit detects the explosive inside an object sealed by neutron emission. The sensor should be able to detect C4, despite the fact that it's been securely sealed to prevent odor, or more specifically, the diffusion of explosive particles. When neutrons pass through an object, the hydrogen material it contains interacts to produce a rear diffusion. By measuring this rear diffusion with the detector, the resulting value is analyzed to determine the existence of an explosive. Simply equipping yourself with this unit and the sensor will automatically scan the area around you and will sound a warning if there's an explosive nearby. Always remember that the shorter the intervals between the warning sound, the closer the location of the bomb. This sensor is adjusted to respond only to the C4 used by Fat Man. The composition of our C4 and that of Fat Man's seems to be slightly different. I think it may be the wax materials that he uses in his explosives. The old man probably concentrated the bulk of his time on making this modification. However, since we've taken care of all the C4, and given the fact that Fat Man is no longer with us, I don't think we'll need this sensor anymore. That pair of binoculars is a high-end military model with autofocus and zoom features. The binoculars will be particularly useful when used outside the big shell. If you can spot an enemy in the distance at an early stage, it'll give you plenty of time to do something. Scouting out the location of your enemy is vital to the success of an infiltration mission. Planning to take some pictures? Well, you've got the right camera for the task. With autofocus and zoom features, this camera guarantees clear pictures. It won't wear with use, so take all the shots you want. Those night vision goggles will let you see in the dark. The goggles are equipped with an image intensifier that amplifies even the lowest levels of light to produce clear images. Night vision devices were introduced in the 1940s. Since then, they've undergone several modifications to improve both sensitivity and resolution. Incidentally, the set you're using is a fourth generation model. Those thermal goggles provide night vision by creating images from heat distribution. The goggles have a resolution of over 400,000 pixels, and their equivalent noise thermal differential is under 0 0.05 degrees Celsius. This performance is largely attributed to the use of a two-dimensional solid projection system with outstanding electric charge transfer capability. With these goggles, you can probably see Claymore mines that are rendered invisible with stealth camouflage. If you look around the necks of enemy soldiers, you can probably make out their dog tags. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm, yeah. I see. Probably, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. I agree. Definitely. I got it. That's exactly it. Exactly. All right. No doubt. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, hmm. No. I don't know. Huh? Not sure how I feel about that. That's wrong. That's not it. What? I don't feel like it. Definitely not. Get real. Whatever. Not a chance. How do you know that? Why don't you do it? Who the heck do you think you are? You're not making any sense. What long-winded babble. You're despicable. How shameful. You're about as low as it gets. Cute, huh? How cute. That's so cute I can't bear it. You're really selfish, you know. How self-centered. You're a real egotistical woman. 
You're beginning to get on my nerves. Give it up already. Here you go again. Don't ignore me. You make no sense. What the heck are you talking about? Listen when someone is talking to you. Hey, come on. What's that supposed to mean? That's not fair. That hurts. That's going a bit too far. Get real. Did you see that? Yeah, you too. Don't even say it. You look lost. What's up with this guy? What a weirdo. Strange. What a dimwit. What are you talking about? I like you. I love you. I want to hold you in my arms. I want you. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. I see. Probably, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. I agree. Definitely. I got it. That's exactly it. Exactly. All right. No doubt. Yeah. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. No. I don't know. Huh? Not sure how I feel about that. That's wrong. That's not it. What? I don't feel like it. Definitely not. Get real. Whatever. Not a chance. How do you know that? Why don't you do it? Who the heck do you think you are? You're not making any sense. What long-winded babble. You're despicable. How shameful. You're about as low as it gets. Cute, huh? How cute. That's so cute I can't bear it. You're really selfish, you know. How self-centered. You're a real egotistical woman. You're beginning to get on my nerves. Give it up already. Here you go again. Don't ignore me. You make no sense. What the heck are you talking about? Listen when someone is talking to you. Hey, come on. What's that supposed to mean? That's not fair. That hurts. That's going a bit too far. Get real. Did you see that? Yeah, you too. Don't even say it. You look lost. What's up with this guy? What a weirdo. Strange. What a dimwit. What are you talking about? I like you. I love you. I want to hold you in my arms. I want you. Raiden, that skull suit of yours is designed to minimize drag when you're underwater. Try feeling the suit's skin. Sort of sandpapery. What you're feeling is a series of microscopic grooves. This water-repelling scale structure cancels out the force of the currents. The suit cuts drag by a full 10%. You'll be swimming like a fish. The technology is extrapolated from the structure of shark skin. The concavity of the skin surface is designed to cut down on air drag on dry land as well. Same idea as the surface of golf balls, but improved upon. Sounds good. I think I'm ready for the Olympics. Yeah, I know how to open it. We covered it in VR training. True. Proceed with caution. Raiden, you won't be able to use any of the enemy's equipment. Why not? You should know that all active weapons are equipped with a personal identification system. The owner enters their required user ID information during the weapon registration or at the start of a mission. If anyone other than the registered user tries to fire the weapon, the ID system will not authorize the action. But these are black market Russian weapons. How can they be equipped with identification functionality? They must have been customized by the terrorists themselves. These are professionals we're dealing with, and they certainly won't let their own equipment be used against them. I'm guessing it's the same for the Navy SEALs gear? Right. How am I supposed to procure weapons then? Find the ones that haven't yet been individualized. Everything you find in the item box is clean. You should know this from your VR training. Okay, I know those. Colonel, I remember this place. Of course you do. This is level one from the VR missions. You're right. I see it now. You may not have field experience, but you've been trained in the hyper-reality of simulated combat. Don't give in to fear. Just do as you were trained and everything will be all right. Select the ration in your window and push the Enter button. You can use it on the spot and regain some life. If you have it selected, you can automatically consume the ration the moment your life runs out and avoid death. Rations not only provide nutrition, they also stimulate the immune system and lessen psychological stress. Not exactly gourmet, though, is it? Stop complaining, Raiden. Hang in there, Jack. When the mission is over, I'll make you my specialty. Yeah, right. Hmm? No, nothing. <laughs> Can't wait. Raiden, the computer terminal you see over there is what's called a node. This? Right. Log into it right now. 
Stand in front of the node and push the action button. Waiting isn't my strong point. I know. You always left that job for me, didn't you? Raiden, is remembering priorities also not your strong point? Just go into hiding until the elevator arrives. Colonel, that figure just now. I don't know. Who do you think it was? It wasn't a seal, that's for certain. Keep your eyes open. You're currently using artificial blood primed with nanomachines. What did you do with my own blood? It's being kept in cold storage. It will be circulated back into your body when you return. Look at all these bugs. The seawater is polluted with crude oil, and yet they can still survive. It's an altered bug that can resolve crude oil. Altered? Yes, through genetic engineering. It was created in the lab to combat frequent oil spills. It doesn't exist naturally. The bug is genetically altered with DNA from a bacteria called Pseudomonas, which can decompose crude oil. It has an enzyme in its body that can break up oil and was modified so it instinctively consumes any crude oil that it absorbs. One of the reasons the big shell has little oil pollution is because of this bug. It also helps in reducing costs and the number of spill maintenance workers. It's a form of bioremediation. It's for the most part innocuous, so no need to be worried. Colonel, there's a gym suit. Hmm, looks like a high barometric pressure diving suit. By maintaining barometric pressure within the suit, it should allow its wearer to carry out work at sea depths of as much as 300 meters. But it doesn't look even remotely usable. It's a very old model. Yeah, and it's rusted all over. It doesn't even look like it's been used. 